Hell of a job. Hell of a job. Fuck. The one and only Goose. Goose. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. Yeah. 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 Let's go. Pimp Hydra. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Oh. All right. Wow. Oh, Profits. Yeah. Profits. Welcome yeah. to the 69 hour for profit telethon presented by Pit Viper. I'm your host, Jonathan Wayne Freeman, and boy, are you in for a treat. Let me tell you something. We have a telethon. Do you know what that is? Do you? It's a combination of television and marathon. For the next 69 hours, 69. we're going to be here selling sunglasses, pit vipers. The sunglasses that sunglasses would wear if sunglasses could wear sunglasses. We have calls set up. That's what a telethon is. You call in, we're looking for pledges. We're looking for supporters. You need to talk to your mommy and daddy. Get your credit card. I got these stuck on. There we go. On my foot. We're going to be here. We have entertainment for you. We have clowns. We have animals. We have goots. We have shows in the morning. We have shows in the evening. We have entertainment. We have the F Golf World Championship. All day long, we're going to be taking pledges. You might be asking yourself, how can I participate? Well, you could buy a pair of Pit Vipers. Yep. And do we have discounts? You're damn right we do. The entire site will be 31% off. And every single hour on the hour, we're going to give 69% off a different pair of Pit Vipers. So is there a pair that you've been looking for, been desiring for your heart? Do you want to go full turbo? Do you? Well, guess what? You're going to have to stay for the entire time. And I know you're not doing anything. You're at home from school, you're at work, you're on the internet right now watching. So here is how you can participate. You can go to that little box that you probably see right here on pitviper.com and tell all your friends, tell your mother, tell your father, and you can sign up. What are you signing up for? Well, you're signing up to win a free tote bag. Isn't that incredible? And a bumper sticker, but we do have prizes. An ATC, do you know what that is? It's a dangerous all-terrain vehicle. Yeah, it's incredible. You could win it. So, does this make sense? We're getting started here. We're gonna take calls for the next 69 hours, getting pledges and donations. And remember, this is for profit. So we're gonna start out today by walking around 
meeting the staff. I know as a fan of Pit Viper, I've always wanted to see where they make the sunglasses, the people that make it all happen. I got a little treat for you. We may even meet the creators of Pit Vipers, Chris and Chuck. Hmm? You might meet them yourself. So let's go ahead and start with this man right here. What's your name, sir? I'm Ken Goose. Okay, all right. And right where, were you, where were you born, sir? I was born right here in Salt Lake City, rocking the Pit Vipers right out of my mother's womb. All right, and are you a business type fella? Do you have a day job? My day job is PA announcing for a wrestling group. It's my night job. I like to pack boxes and ship them. That's incredible. Is that where you got that awesome cardio that brought you in here? How far did you actually run? Oh, I'd say about 69 miles. <laughs> Speaking of 69, you're going to hear that again and again. Did I mention every single hour, 69% off? A Absolutely. different pair of Pit Vipers. 31% off the entire site. Put them together, that's 100%. That's almost that 420%. Is. Well, Goots, do you have a show at all during this telephone? I think we might have some special antics coming up in a day or two that we're going to tear the house down, but we'll see. That sounds amazing. And how has Pit Viper changed your life? Ah, it's turned me into a king. You are royalty. What a treat. What a treat. Do you have anything to say to all your fans out there on the interwebs? Ah, uh, just... Call in, spend your money, get some awesome shades on your face. That's it. Spend those dollar dollar bills, y'all. Let's head on over here. Can we move the camera over here? Let's see. We got a couple of hardworking employees. And what's your name? Rachel. Rachel, I've heard so much about you. It's finally happened that I get to meet you in person. And what do you do at Pit Viper? I am the marketing coordinator here at Pit Viper. Marketing coordinator? That sounds like a tough job. It, you know, it's tough, but it's got to be one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. And what's your background? Where did you come from? Where were you born? I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona? How'd you make it to Salt Lake City, Utah, the party capital of the world? You know, my parents really wanted me to party, so uh, when they when they bought a place here, I, I just felt that I needed to come and do it in their house, and that's how I ended up here. That's amazing. You have much cooler parents than I was born into. My parents are squares. You sound like rad dudes. Do they buy pit vipers? Of course, always, oh for every occasion. Goodness. Do you have any nieces or nephews that might want to get involved in the telethon? No nieces or nephews, but younger cousins. So Ava and Gray, if you're watching this, call in. Avon Gray, call in, call in, get some pit vipers, and who's this handsome young man next to you? I'm Pat. Pat, Pat, you look amazing today. Do you dress like this every day? What are you wearing? Go ahead and tell the people. This is the Turbo Fleece from Pit Viper, very fashionable. The Turbo Fleece, and, and is it 31% off the entire website? Could somebody get some Turbo Fleece for 31% off? They sure can. Holy moly. So you two are going to be taking calls this entire time. Are you excited to talk to the fans of the brand? Very excited. Oh my goodness. I am tickled pink. All right. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you. And I forgot to ask you, where are you from? Originally Florida. Originally Florida. You look like an athlete. He squeezed my hand. It still hurts. What sports do you play? Uh, just a lot of skiing. A lot of skiing. Yeah. yeah. There's a big, rich, deep history with skiing. Did you know that in Pit Viper? I've heard that before. You have heard that. And did you read the manual when you got hired about all the rules and regulations working here? You know, glazed it. You know. Yeah, because they forced me to read it, and I learned a lot about the brand. It's an incredible, incredible thing. Speaking of the brand, did you know they're about to celebrate their 10-year anniversary? And we, we might even have a birthday party here. I could not be more excited for that. You know, day two is going to be phenomenal. Really? You two are doing a hell of a job. Do we have a mobile camera? I'd like to venture out throughout the headquarters and go ahead. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid. Come with me. Don't be shy. Back here, we have a hardworking team. Hardworking team. We're just going to go right down the entire row and see what's going on. This is the brains behind the operation. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jake. And Jake, what exactly is it that you do here? I run the Instagram account. That's a hell of an Instagram account. People are talking. I hear whispers out there that it might be one of the best in the universe. Congratulations. Oh, maybe not lately, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, you're an impressive human being. What kind of bolo are you wearing today? Uh, I think this is a jackrabbit. Um, Found in uh, Southern Salt Lake City. Yeah, well, guess what? I don't care because it's not available on pitviper.com. You're out. Who's this gentleman right here? 
Hi. 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 My name. My name is also Jake. 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 You are just. I want to wrap you up and take you home with me. I wish you were my brother. Do it. We can go home right now. And what's your uh, title here at Pit Viper? I'm the digital marketing director here at Pit Viper. Holy moly! Bunch of geniuses, gurus. I tell you what, I don't know what the kids are into these days, but I hear Pit Viper on the streets a lot. It's up my cool factor at least 95%. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Holy moly, you look great. Thank you so much. What kind of style are you wearing today? Oh, these are our flip ups. Flip up Pit Vipers right there. <laughs> what the hell? So yeah, check these out. You can flip them down and. Flip people off if you want to. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Did you play left field for the 1993 Atlanta Braves? This son of a bitch, huh? I didn't, but uh, I would love yeah. to. You That's play it. this kind of game. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's keep going. And what's your name, sir? Oh, hello. Oh, I almost tripped. I still got Hi. this balloon. It's, there's a string on. Does anybody, string anybody on. got a blade on him? Because it's cut off <laughs> circulation to my right calf. Ah, God. Okay, all right, all right. That's a Gerber. Cut away. Thank you, cameraman. I'm sorry about that. This is live. It's a live telethon. Did I mention it's going on for the next three days? The amount of entertainment that's going to be involved is mind-blowing. There's only one company on the planet that's wild enough to do this, and that is... Pit, Pit Viper? Fuck yeah, it's Pit Viper. <laughs> What's your name, brother? Uh, my name is Chris Garson. You are Chris Garson. I'm Chris Garson. This is Chris Garson. Hi. Do you, Chris Garson. Do you know who Chris is? Uh, Chris, say, explain who you are because I, I take the mic. I, I can't. I just work here. So uh, guys, yeah, no. I, I, thank you, John Wayne Freeman, for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name's Chris Garson. I work here. Chris does yeah. work here. He's I, in, are you? Uh, uh, don't be nervous. Is this okay, long? I'm gonna go ahead and say it for you, Chris. Chris. Uh, Chris is uh, one of the brains behind uh, the beautiful, magical, mystical, amazing, triumphant brand that is Pit Viper. He's an incredible human. This is literally the first time I've met him. I'm a big really? fan. Yeah. I am, and I'm so excited. You're going to be a part of this the next couple days, right? Absolutely. I'm going to be here at least for an hour until you know I go to talking to attorneys and insurance agents and uh, accountants. And Chris is one of the co-founders of Pit Viper. Yes. Him and Chuck, I'm, one day. I'm sorry for this idea, too. I, I'm sorry for wasting your time, but you're going to have to be here for the next 69 hours because we need you. We need your support. Uh, we need all of you out there to get your mothers and fathers on the internet and uh, to live stream YouTube for the first time. You can teach them. You can sit them down and show them this is what the internet is. This is what YouTube is. No, don't click that link. Please don't click that one. Okay. Yeah. Follow it to pitviper.com. Then like hit the button that says go live. Yeah. Maybe it's a play button, something like that. I don't even know where am I going with this. It's the internet. It's a deep hole of like disgusting and scary things. And we're just like here for 69 hours live streaming and I'm not even sure why. Why are we doing this? Is there a business reason? No, but we've really spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to do it. So we're gonna just like try to go for it. I'm not sure it was a good idea and I'm sorry. I'll tell you what, Chris, I'm going to say it for you. That Mercedes Spinner Van Pit Viper, it doesn't pay for itself. Gas is expensive. This is for profit. Sell sunglasses, make money, pay employees, continue awesome lifestyle. You're an absolute legend. I truly am tickled pink. I did not think this was going to happen right out the gate. I thought I was going to find him somewhere up in his ivory tower. He has one that's connected up top. He comes down every now and then. I'm just joking. He's as humble as pie. This is the OG right here, Chris. We can't wait to talk to you more throughout the day. Thank you. Thank oh, God, you, thank you. wow. What a freaking treat. Could Chuck be around too? This is, you're not Chuck, are you? Not Chuck. And what's your name? I'm Sean. Sean, you got those those beautiful shades on too. Tell the folks what they're called again. Flip up. Flip up. And are they one of the new models? I think so. Hell yeah, they are. Does Pit Viper always put out new models and it's on the cutting edge of technology? Oh, they put out. Yeah. Are you feeling this, what I'm feeling right now? I just got lost in your gaze. <sighs> Holy moly. I don't know if it's the flip ups or just you. Where are you from? From New Hampshire. 
New Hampshire, I've never met a single person from New Hampshire. Go ahead and hold this and tell us exactly what it is your state does. Live for your die and granite. A lot of granite. We used to have an old man on the mountain, but it fell down recently, a couple years ago. But uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of living free, some might say. Well, <laughs> I learned a lot. It's like a history lesson. And I know it's not appropriate, but uh, what are you, about 24? Just about. 24 years old. Look at this kid. He's got his whole life ahead of him. Freaking winner. You know, sometimes you meet somebody and you know they're a champion. And what's your job? What are you going to be doing during this telephone? We've got some graphics that uh, show you how many deals you get. Over here, we've got some audio. We've got some lights. We've got, some, we've got a, a lot of content on these documents here. Wow. Like this is just so many things wow. are gonna come. You are really in some exciting work. You're in the extreme side. You're almost like one of those athletes, one of those key players that does big jumps. This is adrenaline filled looking at papers. Yeah. Punching numbers. I agree. New Hampshire, it's been a pleasure meeting you. I got a feeling we're gonna meet again. You know what I'm saying? All right, hey, how you doing, sir? And what exactly it is that you do? The utility. Utility. Enough said. I'm going to leave that man alone. I feel his energy. It's powerful. He's busy. He's focused. He's doing his damn job. How are you, sir? Doing good. You know, I was watching you earlier. You seem like a decision man. Everybody was coming to you, and you were, you've been here before. This isn't your first rodeo. True. True. See that? Uh, what's your job title? Technical director. Technical director. And what other events have you done? Uh, oh, a trick question. Nobody cares because this is the most exciting event that you have ever been a part of, is it not? Correct. Hell yeah, brother. Well, we're going to see each other. I want you to keep my skin looking crispy and get all my good angles. You know what I'm saying? All right. I like this. This is nice. That's not cheap right there. This guy's doing a good job. That is fine, fine stuff. Is it on pitviper.com? Trick question. No, it's not. Nobody cares. Look at this big hunk of man right here. This guy's been my VIP protection. Salt Lake City is a dark, dark town. You gotta keep your head on a swivel. I've had a few close calls, but thanks to this man, I've made it out free and clear. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Take the mic. Name is Travis Richards, and that's right. I'm Jonathan Wayne Freeman's personal protective services. I'm also the web boy at Pit Viper. I'm here, you know, just doing what I can, being the whipping boy, trying to get things done. You know, I'm here, I'm here for games, I'm here for jokes, I'm here for beating the living hell out of anyone who tries and even comes close to touching our host. And, um, you know, if, if I can shed blood on the streets of Salt Lake in the name of Pit Viper, that's what I'm going to do. So, I think we've got a great show lined up, and I think there's no better man in the world to handle it than California's own Jonathan Wave Freeman. I'll give it back to him. Look, let's just cut the BS. I'm a huge fan of the brand, have been. This is the little company that could. They're just beginning, folks. And I'm telling you what, this telephone's going to take it to the next level if you buy sunglasses not one pair not two pair not three pair not four pair 500 pairs get them for your whole family everybody loves them so this is the studio space real quick let's take a look they have a collection of clothing if you follow pit viper closely on social media over the years and you're a big fan you can see little things from the past would you look at this all sorts of stuff. We're gonna talk about these later. Don't worry about that. So exciting. And did I mention after this tour, we are gonna take a few phone calls. Our first phone calls. This is a big, big deal. As you can see, skiers. It's not a joke. Hardcore, wild and wooly free skiers. Free spirits created the brilliantness that is Pit Viper. Would you look, would you look? Now, let's just, let's just give the man his due real quick. Sir, could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hi, I'm Balloon Man Chan. I'm here to bring out the balloons, twist them up, do some designs, have some fun, have some antics going on. Later, we'll be doing some juggling, some other silly stuff. Maybe the, pull out the bongo board, do a little balancing, some five ball bounce, something crazy cool and a few magic tricks. Unreal, magic, balloons. I want to say something. You came in, you didn't have a lot of time, this gentleman, Balloon Man Chan, he put those balloons up, got them ready to go, and I was scared for you. I broke into him myself. I'm not a young man, but you got up there, you got it done. That's the way we roll here at Pitt. Amen. We'll see you later. Thank you, bro. All right. Oh, by the way, this guy right here, 
He doesn't work here. Don't worry about him. We'll get back to him later. Now, as you can see, oh, don't fight. He gets enough publicity. Don't. Yes, he's vascular. So am I. I've been working out. I've been working hard. So here we are. This is, a, again, a really exciting treat. If you look over here, you can see the Pit Viper employees hard at work. It appears that they're taking some frames that have been designed. There's not elves. A lot of people think there's magic, there's mystery. There's real hard working human beings. Let's go over and take a peek and see what they're doing. If you look over there, shh, this is such a treat. Chuck and Chris are talking over there. Are they thinking about their next major set of Pit Viper sunglasses, their next venture? Who knows? Come on. What a treat. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. And you started your work this morning with a cup of coffee. Are you a caffeine guy? I'm a huge caffeine guy. Huge caffeine guy. All right. How'd the morning bowel movement go? Excellent. Excellent. He looks like just right through you. Right on schedule. Excellent. And what's your job title here at Pit Viper? I'm the partnership coordinator. That sounds amazing. And it's great. Also, helper of Chuck. Helper of Chuck. That is amazing. And what are you doing here with the Pit Vipers? We're setting them up for a paint station. One of uh, Chuck's go-tos. So, setting them up for paint. Paint them out, get them going. Little bit of Pit Viper history here is Chuck bought the first pair of Pit Vipers from an army surplus store, is that correct? He painted them, thus started the idea. All his friends wanted a pair, he was making them. So we are gonna have a beautiful demonstration from the one and only Chuck Mumford later, showing us how to make some Pit Vipers. Chuck. Just, just incredible, just an amazing pleasure. Please take the mic. This is Chuck Mumford, one of the co-founders of Pit Viper, genius. Brilliant. Good morning. Welcome to the Telethon for Profit. We're here backstage, trying to get things ready to, for you to watch later. And really, really, really exciting, exciting programming. There's a uh, hours and hours of entertainment for you. Actually, 69 total hours for you to watch us provide you with entertainment, including uh, men in green suits. Um, uh, <laughs> what else do we have? Followed. Oh, other stuff too is gonna be incredible. I uh, bet you'll see another balloon. I also bet you'll meet lots of interesting people today. So many exceptional people. Look at our callers over here. Oh, we got a call center. Welcome. Caller one, what's your name? Pat Bean. Caller two, state your name. Rachel Bay. Call three. Whitney Warren. These three will answer your phone calls now. Call in, pledge, pitviper.com by buying our products. Thank you for the Pit Viper for profit, 69 hours. Oh, I... thank you. Need to go back to, um, some manual labor. Ooh. Guys, come on. I, I hear a call coming in. Call coming in? We have an audio track for that? Ring. Answer. Who is it? Yeah, I heard who is this. Nice. <laughs> really? We did? We won? Guys. We won. We won the entire lottery, all the power balls at once. Oh my god. Yeah. Fascinating. All right. Um, can you email, please? This works so much better for us. Thank you. Okay, next call ring. <laughs> Tip Piper. What do you want? Who is it? Oh, uh, who is it? Yeah, who is it? It's my mom. Oh. Uh -huh. So nice. <laughs> I'm glad our families are getting involved. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Hello, who's calling? Oh, okay. There's someone towing a car in the parking lot right now. Oh, shit. What color is it? It's a purple Nissan Cube. Anyone with a Anyone purple, with Nissan, a purple Cube. Nissan Cube license plate for 2069. Anyone? Anyone? Cube. Anyone? Oh, the cube. cube guy. There he is. Thanks, callers. Um, make sure you're answering the phones. I can hear them all ringing. You should probably be talking on these calls, getting in all our orders on our website. 
See? Excellent. Well, thank you. Hey, John. Chuck, thank you so much. Please stay tuned. Listen, it's a rare treat. I don't know if anyone's ever got to see him actually do what he does. Spray painting, making some wipers. Oh, God. This reminds me of Malaria. No, this is not good. All right, flashbacks. I'm okay, though. I'm still in the pocket. We are going to take some real calls here coming up right now. I am going to get on. I want to talk with the people. I, I Camera one, camera two, camera three. As you can see, I am a pro. I am a professional. Okay, I'm going to get ready to take some phone calls. Kids, are you ready? So ready. Are you ready? So ready? All right, let's do this. Hey, I, I just want to say one thing. One thing, if I haven't said it already. This is a 69-hour telethon. It is live. Anything could happen. When I was a young man, I used to watch telethons for days at a time. My parents were gone most days, so I was home alone, sitting in front of the television. And I learned so much. Think of all the things you can learn watching the Pit Viper telethon. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. A little bit about myself. I, uh, I come from a bit of a rough upbringing. It's true. And I didn't experience much joy in my life. Till I was gifted a pair of pit vipers at the age of 39 years old. I thought my life was over. I was in the middle of a midlife crisis. My wife, she was ready to leave me. I got the pit vipers and all of a sudden, everywhere I went, people would say, hey, pit vipers, yeah. There were young people who were high-fiving me in the streets, complete strangers, and it made me feel alive again. All because of a pair of pit viper sunglasses. What the heck other product does that? I've had all the products. I tried to buy a Porsche. I didn't actually buy it. I leased it. It didn't work out well. But the Pit Vipers changed my life, damn it. And they can change yours. And they're never, ever, ever 31% off all day, all week. But 69% off? 69% off. The summer is 69. Brian Adams, I grew up listening to him. One an hour, you could get a 69% off pair of pit vipers. I paid full price for my first pair, which I bought all of them. I have an entire collection at home that I wear all the time because it makes me feel youthful. It says I like to party. It says I'm a good time. It says I'm a lover of humanity. And yes, this is for profit, this entire thing, but it's a rad company that loves human beings and is about celebrating the awesomeness and the inner dorkness inside each and every one of us. And what is not beautiful about that? Yeah, capitalism exists. It does. We all need to eat. We all need to make a paycheck. And we all need a pair of pit vipers. That's why I put these in full turbo this morning. Because I'm an American. We're also worldwide. So if you're overseas, you can also pledge or contribute. Let's take some calls now. I'm going to shut this down real quick. Okay. Oh, God! God! I failed to mention I had to sign a disclosure. I do have several heart conditions because I partied pretty hard with some substances when I was a younger man. But uh, yeah, it'd be good if the, if the balloons didn't keep going off because I might drop dead. Hey, which one of you is going to take over if I fall down? Not you. You? Can I count on you? Yeah. All right. Let's put these on. All right. We're going to see if we can take some phone calls here. Okay. Oh, that, that was tough. My heart rate's working at about 170 right now. I normally have a Fitbit on. That's what older people do. Keep track of their rest, their sleep, their nutrition. I'm sorry I got emotional talking about the first pair of Pit Vipers I had. It's just totally changed everything for me. I mean, people really hated me until I got those. And then all of a sudden, I'm the toast of the town. Kids in my neighborhood are driving by on their BMX bikes. Whoa, can we see the Pit Vipers? Could I have the Pit Vipers? And I'd say, scram. No, go talk to your parents. Go to pitviper.com. Get on the telethon and spend some cashola. That's what this is about. Let's be honest, let's be frank. I'm gonna give you a real no shitter. This Friday is a celebration of buying things, but guess what? No other company is giving you this. Nobody's giving you this. They're just taking your dollar dollar bills, y'all. 
We're giving you entertainment. You're getting me. You're getting the fine people at Pit Viper who care, who care, okay? And a lot of these people have animals and animals need food. And if you don't buy Pit Viper sunglasses at a discount, you're not paying full price. Good day. It's a sale for profit. It's a telethon. Their animals don't eat. If you don't buy Pit Viper sunglasses, Dogs don't get the kibble that they need. Kitty cats don't get whatever it is they eat. Parakeets don't get whatever it is they got. Think about that for a second. Have a heart. Have a friggin' heart. Are you, are, you, are, are you even alive right now? You're sitting in front of your computer. You're watching this. You're thinking to yourself, you know, who am I? Am I lost? I'm telling you right now, I was lost and now I'm found because of piss viper sunglasses. Not piss viper, piss viper's a thing, but I, I meant pit viper. There's a lot going on. Pit viper gives an F. I'm not gonna say the full word. Not for those little ears that are out there in interweb land. Okay, let's see if we can take a call. I'm sorry, I'm excitable. I'm excitable. This is, this is the greatest company on earth, hands down. Everyone knows that. Everybody knows that. Nobody's giving you a telethon for profit. Let's take a phone call. Okay. Hello? Hello. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Is anyone there? Hello? Hello. 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 Get low. Get low. Get low. Get low. Hello? Get low. Hi. Hi. You know, back when I was uh, watching telethons, there Hello? were something called 1 900 numbers. I don't think they exist anymore. But one time I got caught by my mother, and we had a phone bill of $500 because I had Hello? met a woman that I paid nine ninety five a minute to talk to. And uh, yeah, she, uh, she didn't really care about me. And it cost my parents a lot of money. But you know it's not going to cost your parents a lot of money unless you want to make it cost them a lot of money? Pit Viper sunglasses. Let me see. We're having a little trouble with the connection. Let's see. Hello? Is anybody there? Oh, look what we got on the screen this hour only. The exact fade single wide, 69% off. Can you believe that? 69% off. <sighs> it's fun, isn't it? I got my first real six string. Bought it at the five and dime. Played it till my fingers bleed. Was the summer of 69. Hey! Me and some guys from school. You didn't think you were gonna get this this morning, Hello? did you? Hasn't been in my try real hard. Jimmy quit. Hello? Jody got married. Should've Hello? known we never get Hello? far. But when I look Hello? back now, this summer seemed to last forever. Only if I had a show. You know what it will always be there. Yeah. Pit yeah, Viper Summer. That was the best summer of my life. It was the summer of 69. Pit Viper Sunglasses, 69% off. For this hour only. Once the hour is up, it's gone forever. If you buy these right now, 69% off. Do you know how psycho that is? Let me tell you something, I know a lot of people and sometimes they give you a discount code. It is not for 69%. If you're lucky, it's for 31%, which is our entire site. You could get the exact fade single wides right now for 69% off. I do wanna mention something. If you're new to the Pit Viper family, make sure you get the right size. Hmm? Hmm? We're all born different. We're all born unique. We're all born beautiful. But some of us have very thin faces. Some of us have wide faces. Hello. Oh, hello, hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Hello? I, yes, who's this? Hi, this is Olivia. Olivia, you're the first caller on the 69 hour. The first caller, congratulations, you win nothing. No way. Yeah, are you interested? Go ahead and tell us about yourself. Are you interested in uh, giving a pledge or contributing today? I can't hear you very well. Who is this? This is John. I am the host of the 69 Hour Hi, John. Pip. I have a brother named John. You have a brother named John. He sounds pretty cool. Yeah, what's your last name? My last name is Free Man. Are you home alone? Are you babysitting? Oh, what's... you're not my brother. 
No, I'm not your brother. I'm oh, not. Okay. So what, what, why are you calling in today? Are you interested in buying some pit vipers? What do you say? You got to speak up, Don. Are you interested in buying some pit vipers? I just bought some, actually. I bought some with the 69% off, the exact fade single wides. Is this your first pair? Uh, no, this is my 69th pair. It's very fitting. Are you a fan of the brand? Big fan. I was lying, though. This is only my sixth pair. That's incredible. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> How have Pit Vipers changed your life, dear? Um, well, I used to be a big dork. Um, nobody talked to me. Uh, and then I got a pair of Pit Vipers. And everywhere I go, you know, the coffee shop, the gas station, um, the orthodontist, I get stopped and everyone says, hey, neat pit vipers. Let that is, let's give her a clap offering. That's the kind of story we want to hear. Hells to the yeah. You know what? You're an incredible first caller and I can just feel your spirit coming through the line. You're not a dork. You're beautiful, you're complete, and you're gonna do great things with your life. And the pit vipers you're ordering right now are gonna take you to the next level. Wow, thank you for saying that, John. How this are you is, gonna take me to the next level? I'm gonna explain to you, okay? You're not just purchasing pit vipers. You're purchasing an attitude. You're purchasing a life. A life, a new life, something different. I'm telling you as a person whose entire existence changed from these sunglasses, that's why I'm here. It's not because I'm great on the mic. It's not because I'm stunningly handsome. It's not any of those things. It's because my life was changed because of Pit Vipers and your life is gonna be changed too. I'm an older gentleman. I've got arthritis, but the kids like me, the old people like me. I shouldn't even say old people because there's one people and that's us, the Pit Viper family. And if you wanna join us, you can today for profit. Please buy our Pit Vipers. God bless you. What a touching story. Let's give her another hand. All right, let's get a new caller. Let's get a new caller. I'm gonna sit down over here. Oh boy, this is tremendous. Oh my gosh. I just wanna let everybody know, it goes on and on. You are in for a treat. We have so much for you. Let's see if we got a new caller, hello? It sounds like someone's farting. Like someone farting into the... Oh, there we go. Have you noticed our employees over here? Look how hard they work. Hello? Hello, how are you? I'm great, John Wayne. Oh my gosh, who are you and where are you from? You're delightful. My name is Zach. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. I've heard nothing but good things about Charleston. Can I call you Zachary? That depends, John. Am I in trouble? You're not. <laughs> this guy, you got the spirit, friend. I can tell you've owned some pit vipers before. You got a little bit of moxie in your socksies. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I know what you're saying. I'm a uh, you know, long-time listener, first-time caller. But uh, I've been rocking the pit vipers now for, oh, whew. Around about a decade there, John. That's incredible. Around about a decade? We're about to... S when did you get your first pair? Where did you get your pair? I found my first pair on the side of the road in Boulder, Colorado in about, uh, yeah, 2012. And I put them on and I never looked back. You lucky son of a bitch. Whoever lost those pit vipers, shame on them. I'm guessing they're not still with us, but you're thriving. Thank God you picked those things up. So are you going to buy anything today or what? Let's get to the brass taxes, kid. Am I buying anything, John? Yeah. Are you buying anything? This is a for-profit telethon. A lot of telethons are to help people or to make a difference. This is sort of like that, but different. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, John, I want to grab a pair of those smoke fade lenses before they uh, disappear off the face of the earth. Do you uh, or maybe, you know, go Zach up and smoke if you know what I mean. <laughs> Zach Zachary, you are a fan of the brand. The smoke lenses, like when I just say smoke lenses, it sounds sexy. It sounds exciting. Look, everyone over here is nodding. Everyone's getting excited in the studio. You buy those now or they're gone forever. Get it? Get it? It's not a joke. It comes and it goes. If you do not collect them, you may never find them. And guess what, Zachary? Have you ever met any of those people on the Ebays who try to sell their pit vipers for exorbitant amounts of money? 
Oh, did Zach hang up on us? <laughs> Maybe Zach. No, Zach was wonderful. Zach was wonderful. But that does happen, you guys. I've seen pit vipers resold. There's there, dude. It gets dirty. There's all sort of stuffs going on. There's a black market of just baloney, baloney. I don't even want to go into it to justify these hawks who try. I, I, well, okay. you're, it's too soon. Hello, you're right, you there? John. You're right, John. You know, I saw someone wearing a pair of fake pit vipers yesterday, and I really uh, I had to give him a piece of my mind. I'm going to be honest. Nothing upsets me more. What What is life about? It's about being authentic. We are not fake. When I see a broken-hearted little child that I have to tell on the street, those are fakes. You should see how it crushes them. They always go, yeah, well, they're kind of sort of like the real thing. And then I got to take mine off, gift them to the child because that's just the kind of person I am. And I make them, I force them to jump on those fakies, break them in front of me, and I say, go forth and prosper. That is garbage. I, I oh God, I'm upset now, but I'm a, I'm a pro. I'm going to reel it in. Zach, you're a good human. Even if you have a trouble holding a basic conversation, you're still a good human. I really went off on a tangent, you know? Do not buy fakes. Now's your time to get the real deal. No, no, John. I mean, I, you know, if I, I, I saw the fakes in Mexico City, which is where I am currently, and I'll tell you what, if I wasn't in a foreign country, they would have caught these hands, buddy. I got it, buddy. Listen, I spent a lot of time down south with our neighbors to the south. I got Bart Simpson ashtrays. I remember all sorts of novelty things that I could buy. And I would just stay away from that market. It's not the real thing. Hello? If, yes. We got another caller? Oh. Hello? Oh. Who is this? Oh. Are you okay? Oh. Are you, do we have an emergency line? This person sounds injured. Are you injured, sir? No, no, no. Sorry. I just don't, I almost fell down. It's still Zach, John Wayne. Oh, Zach. It's still Zach. We're rocking. We're rocking in the free world, buddy. I had a, I had a, I had a moment, and I'm, and I'm past it. Okay? We're good. Let's level it out. I'm good. Zach, are you are you a bit of a party boy? Because I'm sensing you, you. We were in the middle of a conversation. You drifted off. Where did you go? What are you? You doing? ugly son of a bitch! I, are you calling? God damn you, ugly son of a bitch! Get out of here! I'm not going to tolerate that kind of talk. All right. You I'm... ugly son. Of... No. Oh, yeah. sorry. Am I sorry? I was talking to my wife. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't realize I was on the phone. Well, you shouldn't talk to your lady friend that way. That's completely disrespectful. And I read the HR Pit Viper handbook, and we don't talk that way to sorry, each other. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't realize I was on the phone with you. How you doing today? Yeah, you're on the live 69-hour telethon for profit. It was clearly you went online and called. What do you mean you didn't realize? Oh, sorry, sorry, I just I started hitting numbers, and here I ended up, hey, I'm watching your telethon right now. You got that? Uh, can, can you put me on with the, with the, with the boy with the, with the girl's hair, the long hair over there sitting on the, on the, on the bench? I'm not sure I want to do that to him, sir. I'm not, I'm not about ageism because I'm an older gentleman myself, and I say this with utter and due respect. Uh, how old are you? Can you put me on with the boy with the long hair? Sure, day over there? no problem, sir. Can you take this? We have a special request. Someone wants to speak with you. He's one of the favorites around here. I got my favorites. Hello. Hello. Oh, I <laughs> son of a gun. Let's get these Stephen, on. It's Let's me, come your here, chat. Come I've been back. waiting to tell you this for a long time. Whoever that guy back. Back home says he's a dad. He ain't your real dad. This is your real dad. Call it. Oh, good. I've been looking for my real dad for a while now, so thank you. I didn't want to spring this on air for you like this, but I didn't know any other way. How you been doing, Sonny? I, I've been doing all right. I was wondering when you are coming back with, with cigarettes all those years ago, but it's nice to finally hear from you. Listen, I went up to pick up the cigarettes, and one thing turned into another. Next thing you knew, I was across the border, and then another border after that. And then I never looked back. I never thought I'd see you again, Sonny. But when I turned on the pit by a telecast on the day, I saw your face, and I just knew I needed to call. Well, I appreciate How you doing, that. boy? Are we ever going to have that game of catch? <laughs> You're special, boy. You're special, boy. Don't listen to what they tell you. You don't need to sit there on the phones all day. You can do whatever you want. You, you, you're like your dad here. You're special. Well, yeah, if my dad says it, then I don't have to listen to my boss. I can just do what I want all day. You're my dad. Listen, listen, boy, I got a surprise. 
you. I'm outside the building right now. You you walk out right now and you meet me and you give your old man a hug like you've never hugged a man before. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I'm coming out now, Dad. I'll see you soon. I don't even know. I mean, there's a few times in life like that was so personal. I'm gonna go meet my dad for the first time. God, that's Pit Viper right there. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I'm, did you see that? That was beautiful. Can you two just talk about what just happened right here? Like the relationship between a father and a son is one of the most important things. And I feel like it could be the most important thing and their daughters too. But we just witnessed a reunion. Yeah, I, you know, to, to have this... Oh. To, to have seen that experience of a father and son being united for profit is really what I think the telethon is, has all been about. It's bringing families together. It's reconnecting people. It's, it's all about the ties that bind. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Namaste. Namaste. That was... God. I, it, what a roller coaster of emotions. What are we? 40 minutes in? I... I don't know if I have the endurance to do this. Maybe putting these things on full turbo was a little too much coming out the gates. You know, I went to rehab, I got clean, I'm on the straight and narrow. We're not gonna fall back into those bad habits. So I gotta pace myself. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it's, a long, it's gonna be a long, long couple of days. God, that was incredible. Today is not like any day. Today is a special day. You are a part of the most magical thing that has ever happened in the history of telethons. The 69 hour for profit telethon presented by Pit Viper worldwide. We're just getting started. Hey, champ, how did it feel meeting your real dad? Really great. We had a nice catch up then. Pit Viper is about humanity, love, kindness, joy. Won't you stay with us? We got a lot coming up. First of all, we'll be having the Pit Viper Morning Show. I'll be there, will you? And remember, once the sunglasses are gone every single hour at 69% off, they're not coming back again, like your dad. <laughs> but seriously, I'm happy for you. He sounds like a real piece of shit, so good luck with that. All right, thank you for watching and please stay tuned because we're not going anywhere. We're locked in. Come along for the ride. And remember, 30, what the, what is, what is that? Who's my security? Did anybody? Something was just right here next to me. All right, that, we'll, we'll, we'll be going further, deeper into the bowels later, meeting more people. But that is the intro for the greatest thing that's ever existed. Get on there right now. Please stay tuned for the Pit Viper Morning Show. Day one, there's three days. God bless you. God love you for watching.
Day one. This is exciting. This is the Good Morning Pit Viper Show for the 69-hour telethon for profit. We have some very, very exciting things today that we're going to do on this morning edition, day one. First off, we have a special guest in the house. Let me just say, this is one of the most talented, incredible, amazing human, key players, athletes. Is she a goddess among men? Perhaps. Not quite a god, not quite a human. Is she powerful on skis? Oh, you betcha. And we're going to have a segment called Never Meet Your Heroes, where a beautiful little girl named Penelope is going to meet her favorite skier, Miss Rachel Burks. Yes, this is incredible. There she is. There she is. There she is. Look at her. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you. Rachel, it's a pleasure to have you in the building. I got a few more things I need to talk about here. Why don't you have a seat? You just stay right here with me. First off, how was the drive in? Gosh, it was a great drive. Lovely weather. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. My goodness. I just want to say something and call me Captain Obvious, but do you have the best bangs in the world? Oh, dang. Thanks. Powerful. Powerful. I wish I still had hair that I could grow on my head. Those are gorgeous. So have you met a lot of people that are big fans of yours over the years? Uh, not, not really. <laughs> what? That is stunning because there is a young lady who absolutely can't stop talking about you. Really? She thinks you're the cat's meow. Oh my goodness. I'm excited to meet her. <laughs> and what year did you become a professional? Uh, about 69 years ago, actually. That's amazing. Is it water skiing behind the boat? I thought they were done with that. Totally water skiing, but with the frozen version of that. So. Snow. Snow, yes. Snow. Snow and how did you come into the pit viper fold? Oh, man, I think I was born with pit vipers on, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you are, you're a riot. You're a damn character. You know that? If you're not following her on Instagram, what are you doing? She's a wildcat. I see you and your friends out at the river having a hell of a time. <laughs> Dang. Did you have to send in a VHS tape to get sponsored by Pit Viper? I did, actually. It was a big camcorder, so yeah, I really did. Excellent. But luckily at Pit Viper, they have lots of VHS players, so it Excellent. worked perfectly. So. Amazing. Yeah. And what's your favorite pair of Pit Viper sunglasses? The ones that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> they are outstanding. Well, there's a little girl that's about to have all of her dreams come true a little bit later on Never Meet Your Heroes. We're also going to have a segment called Shitty Hats, and I'm going to explain what that is in a moment. And we're also finally going to have a little bit of weather today because the weather report is very important in the morning, and it's also something that you can use to talk to just about anybody. Example, let's pretend she's a stranger. Hey, how about the weather? Oh, gosh, it's pretty nice out. The sun is shining. The weather is sweet. It sure is. I'm going to eat a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'll meet you over there. Rachel, you are something else. Good God. You're busted with personality. It makes sense that Penelope would want to meet you. That'll be in a few moments. We're also going to have perhaps one of the most incredible segments called How Pit Viper Changed My Life. We're going to have somebody later that's going to talk about that. So I'm going to go ahead and have you exit stage left? God. I'm a married man. I am. But she is electric. She is a firecracker. Let's be honest. An athlete. Intense. She'd kill you, too. If you turn your back to her, you're dead. 
you're dead. Your good is dead. You're hucking yourself off cliffs. You're saying to hell with life or death. She's living in the danger zone 24 seven. Good God. What do we have this hour? We have the peacekeeper intimidator, 69% off. My father was a police officer. He was a very intense man. I grew up a very, very, very well-disciplined child. Some would say authoritarian rule. Once again, my father had a big influence on me, which is why it was incredible to see the, you two come together. I got emotional. But he used to wear these. Peacekeeper. That's what he was. Roaming the streets, patrolling. I prayed for him every night. Dear Daddy, please come home. And then he would come home and enforce his strict rules on me. And it wasn't until I bought a pair of pit vipers that my life changed. But that's neither here nor there. Shittyhats.com. What are they? I'm going to tell you. Pit Viper is not a normal company. Ask yourself this. If you were employed somewhere and they said to every employee in the building, please design a shitty hat. And whoever wins the shitty hat and what would winning be? Whoever sells the most shitty hats of whatever design is presented will get a parking spot in front of the Pit Viper building. Each employee here, they've done this several times, but here's the exciting news. This is the only time this year this is happening. Each person in this building has created a shitty hat. They had $7 to make their design. If they win, which means they sell the most of their shitty hat, they get a parking spot and $420 cold hard cash. So let's go ahead and take a look. You can head over to shittyhats.com, but be sure to come back to pitviper.com because once these are sold, they are sold. Let's see what we got here. Bushes and back doors, all natural landscaping. <laughs> I walked in on my mom when I was young. She'd love this hat. Let's see what else we got here. Live, laugh, leave the kids in the car. Come on, come on. As a papa, you don't leave kids in the car or a mama. Maybe if you're running in real quick and you got a visual on them, you know, and you're just getting something real quick. But like I said, keep your head on a swivel, especially in Salt Lake City, most dangerous city in the universe. That's a good one. Get it? Live, laugh, leave the kids in the car. That is so good. Shitty hats. What else do we got here? Top come. <laughs> You gotta be. Come on, guys. Thought we were keeping it clean. Huh? Top Gun? I saw it in the theaters. All right, I know the history of Top Gun, all the innuendo back and forth. If you get this shitty hat, it's plain as day. You can show everybody. Party with your friends. Have a good time. Man, this, I don't know what to say about this one. It seems a little inappropriate to me. I, 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 I <laughs> that's a shitty hat. God damn, that's a shitty hat. What else do we got? NFT, nice fucking tits. Huh? We got, is that what we're doing? Pit Vipers talking about titties? Is that the kind of talk we use here? Clearly you didn't read the HR handbook, because this guy did, and I'm taking it serious. This is some malarkey. NFT stands for non fungible token, and I actually have one, and it's the biggest business opportunity outside of what's happening right now. Son of a bitch. Nice fucking tits. Real mature. Bunch of bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm, you hang out in the sewer. You tend, to, you tend to talk like you're in the sewer. My father, the cop, he used to tell me, bad company corrupts good character. And I'll be damned if you're going to change who I am. I have principles and morals. All right, what do we got? Control. Alt delete. That's a beer. Get it? He smashes beers. That's a good one. Huh? You're beer drinkers, a lot of beer drinkers out there. Wild and wooly. Shitty hat. And it keeps going. I'm going to be honest. Top cum really came out of left field and startled me. But it is a shitty hat. Just say N2O. Is that nitrous oxide? Is that what N2O is? You should just say no to huffing and a puffing. I got a friend named Dwayne who huffed and puffed. Wish he had had this freaking hat or saw this freaking hat. Because Dwayne is in a bad place right now. That's a shitty hat. 
Here we go. We got pee pee poo poo point. Pee pee poo poo. Whoop pee poo poo. We be pee pee poo poo jokes. Do we do pee pee poo poo jokes? Oh, this is like a golf hat. I play golf. It's a gentleman's game. You try wearing this pee pee poo poo hat out on the course and see how that goes over with the fellas and the ladies. Gentle, be a gentleman or a lady. Apparently, you folks didn't get the memo. That's a shitty hat. Now, this one, I love the... Good God. Can we get sued for this at the whole depot? I get it. Ha, 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 ha. There's a hole, and there's stuff you can put in there. I'm in the seventh grade. I'm a 43-year-old man, damn it. I do like the color, though. This is a second in my heart to top come. Shitty hat. You do, let's be honest. There's some talented, creative people here, you know? Some of the people that work here might celebrate the dark arts. I don't know. It's not what I signed up for, but you don't get this kind of voodoo magic into a hat by just playing normal games. Here we go. Poker in the front, liquor in the rear. <laughs> I get it. Ha <laughs> ha. Sexy sex sex times. Ha. <laughs> Got it. Like that one. Shitty hat. Remember, you can go to shittyhats.com and purchase any of these. And there is somebody who's going to be very, very happy when their hat sells out first. Oh, we got another cum cum hat. Mr. Cub. He's a little froggy. We got a little confident frog because he's Mr. Cub. Is he throwing ropes? Is that what he's doing? Is that what the froggy's doing? Is he in the adult industry? Yeah. Can make this real uncomfortable. You did this, employees. You made these hats. Beer, bacon, butt stuff. Okay, that's fun. That's clever. This is my new favorite right here. Beer, bacon, and butt stuff. It's not butt with a B-U-T, it's two T's. That's your rear end, that's your hiney we're talking about. Everyone's got a butt, everybody poops. I read that book to my children. Everybody poops. That's number one in my book right there. That's good, clean fun. You know, we don't have to go dirty. We don't have to go dark. All right. Booty bandit, booty, 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 bandit. Get it? Butt stuff. More butt stuff. That's the booty bandit. Yep, nickname in high school. That's what they called me. That's number one now. Here we go. Sig's inside. <laughs> I have a problem with nicotine, but I quit Sig's, so this one's partial to me. Don't start smoking, kids. It's not good for your health. In fact, it's stated right on the box. It will kill you. So SIG's inside. That's a fun one. That's going to really piss off the adults, huh? Oh, I'm a rebel. I smoke cigarettes. I don't care. Shitty hat. And we have one more. That's a lot of hats. There is a plethora of employees at this place involved. Cliffs and spliffs. Actually, this one's pretty sick. See, do the kids still say sick? That's sick. Cliffs and spliffs. Get it? Skiing. There's a rad dude who's jumping down, and it's like looks like under moonlight. I'm calling it moonlight. Oh, that's nice. That could be Chuck right there. That's Chuck. That's Chuck. It's Chuck and Chris before they got on the Pit Viper train. Huh? Before that genius brain started melding together, creating the world's perfect sunglass. Demand respect and authority. Cliffs and spliffs. Those are our shitty hats. Once they're gone, they're gone. What do you guys think? Which hat's going to win? Anyone in the studio? Mr. Cum. Mr. Cum. I think he's... Poop Jeez, jeez, that is wild. Those were some amazing hats. So get on over to shittyhats.com. This is the only time this year the shitty hats will be available. Once they're gone, well, they're gone forever. Do we have do we have weather going today? Is there a weather? Or did our weatherman get caught in some weather? You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go ahead and move on to a little segment I like to call. Never meet your heroes. We've already met the hero. Let's bring her back out again. She's incredible. You can tell she's a little bit nervous. Did you create any of these shitty hats? I did not. You did not. Well, 
we're gonna bring out an amazing young lady. She was flown all the way in here from somewhere very, very far away. Do you wanna know where she came from? Where did where'd she come from? We don't really know, but it's far, far, far away. Her name's Penelope, and I just wanna prep you a little bit. Okay. She's an excitable little chatterbox. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> and she really is a super fan, okay? So I need you to just give her what she wants. It's about her, not you. Okay, okay, roger that. I know you're a big star. I know you've been on top of the world, but this is her moment, so just kind of give her okay. what she needs. Okay. We're gonna have you come over to the couch, okay? okay? Come on over, right here. Without further ado, this is Never Meet Your Heroes. Dreams come possible on the 69 hour telethon. Penelope, will you please come to the stage? Can we give her a clap offering? Round of applause, <laughs> Penelope. <laughs> it's her, it's really her. Hi. <laughs> Just breathe, breathe, breathe. Did you bring your inhaler? Are you okay? Uh, no, I left it, but uh, yeah, okay. I'm okay. I'm gonna, Hi. you brought your bag with you. God. Okay. okay, all right, I'm all right. Sorry, sorry. We gotta respect gotta each other's seat. boundaries. Right, 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 right. Okay, go ahead and have a seat. Hi. Now listen, Penelope, yeah. this is your day. This is your special time, okay? Mm -hmm. And I just wanna tell you something. I know you flew a long way, yeah. and we're here to make your dreams come true, okay? okay. All right, and if you wanna purchase some sunglasses while you're here, you still have to pay full price, okay? okay. All right, just letting you know. Okay. okay, I'm gonna give you this microphone, and you go ahead and do whatever you want with it, okay? okay. Look, she's there. That's her. Legend. Legend. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Rachel, it's so nice to meet you. Um, I'm Penelope Bathwater. You can call me P Bath. That's what my friends do. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, hold on. Will you hold this? Sure. I have some notes here. Oh. Yes. Oh. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, Rachel means purity. I looked that up, and I think that's true. <laughs> and and um, some people say that you're the number one underrated skier, but you are the top female skier, top skier in the world, in the world. And I ski because of you. Oh. <laughs> um, Okay, so I have some questions. Um, well, some things we have in common that's cool is we have brown hair. Um, some would say we're both daredevils. Me too. You? Tell me about something different um, that you've done, Penelope. Um, um, well, I um, asked a boy out the other day and to go skiing with me. And um, oh no, he said no. Um, so anyways. Um, okay, you um, are Gemini rising, me too. Oh. <laughs> and um, okay, back to skiing. Um, have you ever pooped your pants before you've gone down a big line? Um, I actually have, it made, a, it made it, the shot actually made it into a TGR movie. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you wear diapers now? I probably should. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, and and uh, what's your favorite shred snack on the hill? I have low blood sugar, so I always have a snack. What's yours? Um, I usually have steak. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so badass. Can I say that? Sorry. Say Sorry. <laughs> Woo, fuck yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, well, one thing that <laughs> one thing um, that um, you're really, really good at is uh, backflips. Holy crap! Have you seen her backflip? Hell yeah! I've Have you seen it. her front flip? Penelope, I've seen it all. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Um, well, and you're a good mentor. I see, saw you mentored Megan Dingham. Yeah. who also is a big hero of mine. She's yeah. a great skier. Um, I was wondering if you could teach me how to backflip. Yeah, I could, to I could totally teach you. Yeah. You want to learn right now how to backflip? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So basically what you're going to do is like, <clears throat> okay, so pretend like you're, 
you're gonna go like off the jump this way, right? Okay, so you're skiing really fast into the jump and when you hit the jump, you're gonna pop up like this and then just look behind you. So let's do a little trial run, shall okay. we try? try? Okay. Ready? One, okay. two, three. <gasps> okay. Yeah? So, so, okay, I'm getting All right. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> oh. Oh. oh my God. Are you okay? Sorry. Oh, no, 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 we got you. We got you. Are you okay? Are you all right? Yeah. Because <laughs> okay. is that good? Are you okay? Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. We don't... Yeah. <laughs> Pit Viper takes no responsibility for anybody who gets hurt <laughs> on the set. They will not uh, cover your medical costs or anything okay. like that. Just FYI. We should... Oh, okay. Let's I think you got it. Thanks. Let's take a picture. Okay. Maybe we should wait till we're off air. Okay, this one's for my should we mom. Should tell people to buy some pit vipers? Sure. Which do you like mine? These are my prescription ones. They're great. Thanks. They're, They're really cool. <laughs> um, maybe you could sign them for me. Oh, okay. Do you want me to just sign them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just Why sign them. Just leave them on. And okay. Say, okay. Cool. We'll just sign them right on your face. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Rachel, you're so cool. Yeah. Are you the go. best skier? <laughs> and um, also, I've brought a few other things to oh, sign. Okay, I can um, sign some things. You um, were on the tram at Alta, and uh, uh, I was wearing this jacket, and you brushed up against me, and I haven't worn it, washed it since. Could you sign it? Sure. sure. <laughs> right there. Okay. Just right. I love Penelope. I love P. And um, a pair of my Pit Viper goggles. Oh. Could you, could you just sign cool. those? Sure, you got it. Yeah, okay. Okay, there you go. Ooh, those are pretty cool. Okay. And um, uh, uh, my Pit Viper hat, please. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, and my erotic novel, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And um, my uh, toothbrush. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, you yeah. I just to want to be. How do you prep for the day when you go out for a big run and you gotta, you gotta get out there and you gotta get your game face on and you're gonna go down that huge cliff. How, what do you do in the morning? Well, I mean, I do brush my teeth. Okay. Okay. And then what else? Um, have a big breakfast. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, lots of steak. What do you say to yourself when you're pep talking yourself um i just try and go fast downhill <laughs> go fast downhill go fast downhill go fast downhill go fast downhill what would you say to me i would tell you to stay positive and keep the fantastic energy up and keep inviting those boys to go skiing with you every day oh and you guys want to go skiing with me today oh no. I think that guy does. Okay, take her. Have a date. Have a Woo. date. I think we got Penelope Pen a date. Penelope. This is yeah. fantastic. Penelope. Yeah. They say never meet your heroes, yeah. and I think we need to change the title because you met your hero today. She has about ten other things in there, and there's a little something called stalking, which is you know sometimes when you're a fan of somebody, there's a line, and we'll talk about that later. You're beautiful. Thank God she's an amazing sport. Rachel, isn't she a sweetheart? She's just wonderful. I'm so thankful and grateful to meet her. Thank you so much. She is your biggest fan. She literally had 15 other things that she wanted signed. Maybe off camera yeah. you could do that. Maybe come over for dinner. I actually have plans to see Okay. 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 Well, Penelope, was this everything you dreamed it would be? Yeah, thank you, Pip Viper. Buy sunglasses. Buy sunglasses. Buy sunglasses. Thank you. Let's have a warm round of applause for Rachel, Legend, Birch, and Penelope. There they are. In the flesh. <laughs> Key player. Let's get Penelope a date. Let's get a Penelope a yeah, date. Boys. You two okay. take care, all right? All right. Thank, thank you so thank much. You so much. God, bless. Good God bless. God bless. No, Good you're. Luck with wow. Just amazing. Making dreams come true. You know what? She's a hero you would want to meet, as are most of the key players. Because the truth is, Pit Viper doesn't sign up anybody to ride for him. You got to be somebody. And not just anybody, somebody with a heart, somebody with a mind, somebody with a gift for gab. Speaking of a gift for gab, we're going to the weather right now. I'm going to go ahead and head right on over there. And let's not forget, I'm wearing the Peacekeepers, which you can get now for 69% off, only this hour. Let's head on over. This is our weatherman. He's one of the best in the biz. Thank you very much. 
happy to be here with you for this 69 hour for profit telethon we're out here having a great time jonathan wayne freeman is absolutely laying it down and i will be letting you know about a few things happening in the weather this week oh sorry is this live this is my mom um she's calling um yeah mom yeah no i'm on the, the telethon live right now so I, I probably shouldn't take it too long but yeah, no. I talked to them. Yeah, I know they're coming to town next weekend. I'll make time for my cousins. I always do. Yeah, we're going to have a good time. Okay, yeah, but, but, but mom, really, it is live right now, and um, it's getting kind of weird. So, uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. All right, yep, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I love you too. Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I will call soon. I will. Um, okay, thanks. Bye. Sorry about that, folks. Um, forgot that this was live. Um, but, uh, you know, I do think it is important to take those calls and uh, pick them up, say something nice, have a great time. And uh, they're very important because they might call you about something that you do already know about, or they might not. So you could learn something new right there. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our five day weather forecast coming up here in Salt Lake City in the greater Wasatch. I drew this last night. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of it. It's gorgeous. You're very talented. Thank you very much. I had a really good time. I was watching the Monday night, Sunday night football game. Anyway, Monday. I will also preface this with this is mo mainly about what's going to be happening in Pit Viper's big load warehouse due to the big telethon that's going on right now and all your great sales heading towards us reaching our goal. Monday. It's going to be sunshine. We got some overcast smog going on, but there's a light amount of orders. Everyone got in there early today. We're feeling good and there's no fatigue. But as we roll into the afternoon, get ready to see those clouds start increasing. And uh, come Tuesday morning, we're going to have a new weather system on our hands, specifically at the Big Loads Warehouse. We're not going to know exactly what's going on on Tuesday just because uh, the radar's a little funky right now. But at around 7 a.m., we should be able to come back and tell you that. Uh, Hopefully the clouds are increasing, and that means the orders are really ticking up again for this Pit Viper 69 hour for profit telethon. Uh, the warehouse team should be going crazy, and they'll know what's going to lie ahead for the rest of the week. Though uh, I wrote the weather, so I'll, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Uh, regardless, though, we will have sunshine, a moderate breeze. Um, out of the northeast that will bring a storm front going, breaking up that high pressure system. We love that. Wednesday's the middle of the week, and that is when we are going to see that blizzard, uh, the craziest amount of orders you've ever seen. And there may be no light at the end of the tunnel and nothing, no way to finish. Hey, hey that's a baseball. It's the official league Kroll B baseball from Rawlings. I threw, I hurled a few of these back in the day, but I decided to go with weather instead of pro baseball. Um, I also stopped hitting my sophomore and junior year, so the coach cut me. But I did make a good uh, way back for uh, my senior year, didn't I, Jonathan? You sure did, Th champ. Thank you very much, yeah. But uh, like I said, with this blizzard really coming in to hammer the Pit Viper Big Loads Warehouse, there's going to be no light at the end of the tunnel and no way to see finishing, which is really tough for me because uh, I'm a guy that gets the job done quite fast. Um, it's just efficiency, really. Uh, the order totals are expected to increase, making those roads and byways very, very treacherous going into the nice holiday season. Thursday will be a nice time to relax. I think we're all going to take the day off and not think about all the orders, but it will be time for stuffing. Not of the boxes, but lots and lots of stuffing as the, sta as the sale continues to rage on. But we'll be back on Black Friday having a good time. and. Uh, yeah, Rachel, uh, we invited you to dinner, and you haven't responded to any of the texts. So, um, you know, we just got to know if you're going to bring the green bean casserole or not. I got the right number. I called 911, and they directed me directly to you. Um, they seem to always know how to direct my calls. I, um, I called them, and they sent me your number. But are you going to come or not? Because I got to know. I mean, we got to know. I got to go buy more plates. We only have five at the house because I've broken two since I've moved in. Um, yeah. Okay, okay, that's great. Thanks so much. If you just want to text us back, that'd be awesome. Friday, we are going to have a literal shitstorm on our hands, people. I'm not kidding. The orders are going to be off the roof. Black Friday is going to be raging. People are going to just go to bed with that little tingling going on of, I got to go buy some pit vipers. I got to go buy some pit vipers. So uh, Friday, we got a shitstorm on our hands, but we will clean it up and get you those packages just as fast as we can. 
It really is one of my favorite times of the uh, year for the weather because it's so unpredictable with a sale like this, but it's also pretty predictable that we know we will be working our butts off. And a lot of people buy pit vipers as gifts, but the thing that I have to talk about is they're not usually referred to as pit vipers. We brand them as pit vipers, but people usually say, hey, I like those pitties that you have. Those are sweet vipers, dude. Hey, I like those pits. For Christ's sake, we named them pit vipers. Say the whole thing. It's nice when you have a pet name for something, but these are pit vipers and they demand respect and authority. Yeah. They demand yeah. it. So, 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 I, so I don't want to hear any of this anymore. But maybe if you have a pet name for something uh, with a brand this big, maybe we've really made it, you know? So I think we have. But uh, again, they're called Pit Vipers. We are now going to move on to the section that I have spent a lot of time on, the mountain town weather. We're going to go east to west, maybe skip over the Midwest. But it's just because I've never been there, and I don't really intend to go ski a mountain that gets bigger every year because they got to put more trash on top of it. Though I am glad you're getting more vertical feet. We're going to start with Mount Sunapee. It's my home mountain. Grew up uh, looking right at that thing every day, and they are back for another season of fun. And it's Boston's home, baby. Boston's home mountain. Get it going. You can see a lot of Patriots jerseys up there. There's still only three parking lots, which means you're going to bus in from the, uh, the state beach there, and there's only three lifts you really want to ski. But it is truly fun for the whole family. Usually at a mountain like this, you can hear someone saying, hey, 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 we're going to go to the top. And then we're going to come back down to the bottom. And you got to think, wow, wow, it's not every day you get to hear something as prolific as that, right? I mean, that's usually what you do when you go skiing. Sunday River is another place that I've spent a heck of a lot of time at, with eight peaks that suffer from terrible windstorms that shut down your lifts and ruin your weekend of skiing. Plan on going to Aurora or Oz when, the, when it does open, because that's where the realest skiing is. Everyone who skis Sugarloaf says that they should rename Sunday River Someday bigger, and I hope that they're also that implying is possible for me. Sugarloaf, I've been there a few times. Have fun accidentally skiing down to the super quad once and spending the rest of your time thinking, wow, skiing is not waiting in line and it is, it is not as fun as I thought. Crotched, another home mountain of mine. Tiny, tiny little place. You'd never really go there unless you lived close by. But this lift used to take 10 minutes to get to the top. And then they put in a high-speed quad, so it took only five minutes to get to the top, and they named the lift the Crotch Rocket. <laughs> I mean, come on, you can't even make that stuff up. They named the lift the Crotch Rocket because it gets you there fast. It, it just, sometimes it doesn't even seem real. Stratton is a mountain in southern Vermont that I've also spent a little bit of time at. And if New York City had a ski mountain, it would be Stratton, Vermont. You go through that parking lot there and you go New York, New York, New York, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. It's, it's, you don't even see a Vermont plate. But when you do see it, you don't actually have to see it because it's a Subaru. It smells kind of funny. Trey Anastasio is yelling in the background. And they got the 1997 fish tour just on repeat. Stratton. Great fun place if you're from New York City. Bromley's also at Stratton. Well, it's across the street and a little ways away. And I've skied it many times, but the summer is really where it's at. Fun fact about me, the Alpine slide at Bromley almost circumcised me for a second time when I fell off it at six years old. <laughs> it was uh, quite wild. We're going to move to the West Coast now and just uh, skip right over the North uh, Midwest. Again, sorry, I have a lot of friends from the Midwest. Love you guys, but there's a reason that you moved out West, and I don't see any of you moving back anytime soon. Same reason as why I moved out here from New Hampshire and also don't see myself headed back. But when you're in South Lake Tahoe or North Lake Tahoe and you're on that divided line right between North Lake, South Lake, Nevada, California. A lot of really fun stuff happening, but I don't understand how any of you are able to go skiing when there is legalized sports gambling two doors down. I mean, come on, you got to stand out in the wind and the bad weather, you get a sunburn. You can go, they got casino vents down the way. They're giving you anything you want, and there's a lot of money to be made. I don't see anybody making money skiing anymore. That's for damn sure. You tell him, Pete. Hey, I'm telling him, Jonathan. I'm out here having a good time. Um, but yeah, I mean, 12-team parlays. It's all sorts of fun stuff headed down. <laughs> Check out uh, Tunnel Creek Cafe as well if you're on the north side of Lake Tahoe. My good buddy Chad owns that restaurant, and they put out some of the best breakfast you have ever had. Not even kidding. 
Anyway, big bears in Southern California, and the whole thing's a terrain park, I heard. Never been, but I've just heard the whole thing's a terrain park, and uh, that's cool. Big bear. <laughs> um, lastly, I know I missed a lot of mountains, and I'm contractually obligated to not say anything about the central Wasatch, uh, but we do have a lot of traffic and a whole lot of fun. So, you know, um, I've had a great time telling you the weather today. Again, we're going to trend sunny, cloudy, Good old blizzard. That's a turkey, which doesn't have anything to do with the weather. And we will have a literal shitstorm on our hands on Friday at the Pit Viper Big Loads Warehouse. I'm going to pass it back off to Jonathan now. Thanks so much for stopping by for the weather. Come back here. Let's just talk about it for a second. You are a rare talent, sir. That was absolutely mesmerizing. Thank you for putting that together. Hey, uh, you're very welcome. It was a heck of a lot of fun, and uh, love being here to do the weather. It's, uh, it's one of my passions, really. Peter, you know, as a fella who uh, has never really been down the uh, mountain on skis, I learned a heck of a lot from you today, so thank you so much. Hey, thanks so much. You can catch me uh, at Alta skiing the high tee faster than majority of the humans. Wow, he's confident as well. I do have a question, though. If I'm not a skier, can I still wear pit vipers? You absolutely can wear pit vipers. You can wear pit vipers in parking lots, on the ski hill, to the store. You can wear them anywhere you want. Pit vipers are just an everyday thing. You can even take the lenses out. Oh, did you ever see my last skit before that I did the weather for Pit Viper? I used to do uh, funny skits about how these don't have lenses in them. Peter, I'm going to be honest. I, I follow your entire career, your entire catalog. I celebrate. And really, it's just amazing to be here next to you. Now, I noticed when you do buy Pit Vipers, which, by the way, the ones I'm wearing are 69% off for this hour only. Just want to mention that. It comes in a box. Now, un unlike most sunglass companies, this box, it's got a lot of fun stuff on it, and there's a lot of activities listed. How many of those activities can you list? I think a lot of them. Uh, they're good for diamond bags, bar biking, city biking, biking to the bar in the city, mountain biking, gravel biking, um, stick and ball, ball and hoop, and many more activities that are great. <laughs> you are a riot. Your energy, your love, your passion for life. God, I learned a lot today. And I appreciate you being so kind about Big Bear because that is my local mountain. And I'll tell you what, you took it easy on us because there's a lot of great resorts out there. And Big Bear is one of those resorts that exists amongst all the resorts. And you were very kind to us. So I appreciate that. Absolutely, anytime. Again, I've never been there. I would never rip a mountain that I've never been to, but I would like to go at some point and just uh, really check it out. God, you skiers are just a hell of a group of humans. Classy. I ride surfboards and uh, they're kind of jockey, little jerky. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I bought these Pit Vipers. I did. I got the Pit Vipers and the surfers, they were like, what are these? They couldn't handle them. They were too cool for school, you know? Yeah. But then I started wearing them, and they realized they wanted Pit Vipers, too. They started asking me, John, can you get us a pair of Pit Vipers for my kids? And I said, no, but you can go to pitviper.com. The entire site's 31% off. Isn't that something? It is amazing. And I have a question for you now that we're, we're here and we have some good rapport. You know what? I, can I, I, I want that question, but you guys, I'm going to loosen the tie up a bit. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I, I wore the three-piece suit because I wanted to do a great job, but you guys are pretty relaxed and loose here. After seeing the shitty hats at shittyhats.com, I realized that they're, they're very loosey, goosey with the rules around pit fiber. Go ahead, Pete. Yeah, um, so being a surfer, I've never been surfing. One time, and the break beat me up so bad, I thought, I can't do this anymore. Um, are you able to wear the pit vipers while you're surfing? <laughs> Funny you should ask, Peter. One of the first duties uh, as a uh, fan of the brand, and uh, they called me up. They called me up. I got the big call from Pit Viper. They said, could you, could you uh, get one of them GoPro-y, Schmo-y, Bowie, whatever they are, those cameras you can take in the water and film yourself with some Pit Vipers? And I can assure you, because I have video evidence, you're damn right you can wear them in the water. But do you want to lose your Pit Vipers when they're so precious to you? Probably not. Yeah, you're right. Probably not. But uh, they're good for sitting on the beach watching the surf break, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. And uh, can I come surfing sometime? I would take you surfing anytime. I would put you in my pocket. I'd let you come live in my house. I want to raise you. Right. I want you to be my new son. Cool. Can you tell me where you got this? Because I've seen Chuck Mumford, who, by the way, 
in the next hour is going to be doing something that possibly he hasn't done in many years and you need to stay tuned. He's going to be making some pit vipers, showing you how he puts the art on, where it all originally started. But what is this? I've seen a picture of Chuck and he's wearing that. So um, this is a chain that says LXIX. And the brand, when we make uh, really good clothing drops that we like, LXIX is the Roman numeral for 69, which <laughs> tends to be a number around here that's thrown out a whole lot. What, why do we keep saying this number? I don't get it. I actually personally am more of a fan of the number 68 because it's more ironic than 69. <laughs> You're too much. You're too much. All right, and that's something else too. There is a multi-level marketing scheme with Pit Viper as well that I think may be one of our segments. That's exciting. Thank you so much for doing the weather. That was incredible. God Thank bless you. Yeah. What a talent. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is good morning, Pit Viper. Keep that round of applause going. Keep it going. Keep it. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. I feel like I can loosen up. I can loosen I'm a real square, but I can loosen up a little. You guys know how to make a guy feel welcome. Hey, we're going to move on right now to a little segment called How Pit Viper Changed My Life. Now, we've already seen a lot of amazing things in the first couple hours of our journey. We saw a young man who works here, an employee, reunited with his father. We saw a little girl named Penelope who had what one dream in life, and that was to meet a key player. Oh, she met a key player, and more. She got her heart filled up, she got some things signed, and that little girl is going home, and she's gonna remember that for the rest of her life. We're gonna bring up a fella, he goes by the handle Jake, or Jacob, depending on the day. And we're gonna talk to him about how Pit Viper has changed his life. I just really wanna encourage everybody during this telethon to spend as much money as possible because money when you spend it makes you feel happy for a moment but then if you can take that little moment and wear it on your face for days and months and years to come that moment never goes away I'm talking about Pip Viper sunglasses the feeling never goes away you walk around in your day to day and people go, look at the pit vipers on that. Beautiful human, what are they? I want some of those. It confuses people. It shows that you demand respect and authority. It is not a joke, it is a lifestyle. It is a vision that was laid out by Chuck and Chris and it exists today and you can be a part of it. We need your pledges, we need your contributions. How are the phones doing? Are we getting a lot of callers? They're busy. They're busy. They haven't stopped working. God. They have top level talent at this place. Full disclosure, I've been here for a couple days. I've got to meet the team. I've broken bread with them. The best on earth, the best that we have are in this building, okay? All right? And they got lives. They need to get paid. Maybe someday they want to move up in the Pit Viper business. And when they move up, Maybe they're gonna need an increase in pay, but we need you to buy sunglasses in order for them to get their increase in pay. Does that make sense? I know some of you are young, some of you are old. There's people from all over the world that are watching right now, all over, every language, everybody. Everybody's out there. And we want you to buy our sunglasses because when you buy our sunglasses, you are part of the team. You're one of us. You're part of Team Pit Viper. And what's better than that? Is anything better than that? No! Nothing. I need somebody to interview about how Pit Viper changed your life. Will somebody have the guts, the goots, to come up here and sit on the couch and tell your story? We need a testimony right now. I'm taking off the jacket. You wanted it, you got it. You got it. I worked long and hard because I knew I was gonna be on camera, all right? Do you know what kind of effort I put in? We got an individual. Get out here. Get out here. Sit on the couch. God. I feel like 
like this is how people talk on or sit on talk shows, right? A little cross leg. Coffee they, cup. they always do this. I don't. I think it's a. I, I'm more of like one of these yeah. folks, but I also like this too. I'm not ashamed. Seems a little like it's classy. The 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 cross, you know. It is very classy. So why don't you go ahead and give us your full name, and you don't have to tell us your age, but it would be neat if you did. And you could even make up a number. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Juicy Jake Curlander. Uh, we have quite a few Jakes that work at Pit Viper, uh, so I adapted the. The nickname Juicy Jake, if you wanna call me that, um, for sure. I think you know, got some juicy lips, so that makes sense, you know, right? It makes absolute sense, <laughs> Juicy. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little. Whoa, this full turbo's got a little cockeye. <laughs> Half in the bag. We have fun here. We, we have, have fun. fun. We have so, fun. where are you from? I'm from uh, Morristown, New Jersey. Jersey boy. Jersey boy. Yep. You can't. You can take the guy out of Jersey, but you can't take the Jersey out of the guy. Yeah. And what were your favorite activities when you were growing up there, Champ? Um, you know, mischief, uh, debauchery, um, Taylor Ham, egg sandwiches, um, bagels, that kind of thing. And when you were a little boy, did Pit Vipers exist? When did they come into your orbit? Um, when I moved out here, yeah. Uh, I moved out here 10 years ago. I'm 31. 31% 31 off sale. <laughs> <laughs> meant to be um, and I was friends with uh, Chuck and he gave me a pair and gave me a job and I've been here for two years Wait, you were friends with Chuck Mumford believe it or not I... you're talking about the co-founder of Pit Viper Sunglasses were you a fan of NAR he's in that movie that guy great soundtrack too. a lot of uh, ween but yes classic movie love it you got a problem with ween uh, you got a fucking problem with ween <laughs> brother <laughs> All right, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, mutual respect. Excuse my language. I thought he was. I thought he had a problem with weed. Never, dude. New Jersey's got a problem with weed. No. I'm just playing. <laughs> Pop. Putting words in my mouth. Get your go. So you meet Chuck, and he takes you in his arms, cradles you like a little baby, and says, "Come work with me." Exactly. Once that uh, nasty C word, the COVID, hit, um, I I lost my job, and they had room for me, and. Uh, the rest of the story is a, is, is a fairy tale. And what exactly is it that you would say that you do here? So I currently do all the Instagram things. Oh, thank you. I do all Instagram related things. Uh, I do the post currently. Uh, if you DM us, uh, please don't do that. I, I don't really like to work and that's like a big part of my job. Um, so yeah, no DMs please. Um, and yeah, I, uh, you know, when you post something and it's funny, I, I give it a little heart and I say, ha ha ha, you're, you're so funny, dude. And you usually like give me a little fist pump emoji back. And yeah, that's, that's my day. That sounds amazing. I tell you what, those social medias, they're addictive. Those it's, little hearts really get my <laughs> juices going juicy. It's really good. Right? That's why we got into the biz, right? We wanted, when you're right, you're right. We wanted that rush. So. I need you to go a little bit deeper with me, Juicy. You're wandering. You're just a Jersey boy. Did you have any sort of vision of where your life was going to go before Pit Viper came along and took you and cradled you and gave you direction and purpose and meaning? Uh, it, you know, this is exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I know, like, uh, a top job of millennial or of Gen Z is to be an influencer, but I was, like, the first one that wanted to do that. I, I knew I was going to be fucking on my phone you were the first influencer on all day i i had the stop play. the presses we got the first influencer <laughs> that ever existed here at the pit viper 69 hour telethon and, and i you thought you were the star in this interview i just thought no I, anything could happen here so how are you influencing people what's your messaging uh a lot of uh subliminal messaging um i try to spell out in the first uh word in every line something like buy pit vipers steal your mom's credit card um just a lot of like really shady tactics i try not to do any honest work can we go back can we take a little time machine and uh this might get a little sentimental a little personal were you the captain of the football team um which uh, 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 football team, like? Your high school football team. High school? Team. Uh, yes. I was. Tell the truth. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> and that's okay. Were you a jock? Uh, no. Were you an outsider? No. You weren't. Uh, 
Were you a class clown? Never been outside. Um, <laughs> Maybe. I don't think I was the class clown, but I went for it. You know, I gave it my best effort. Did Pit Vipers exist when you were in high school? No, not till I was, what, 10 years ago? So I was 21. I was in college. I'm going to be frank with you. They weren't around when I was a youth. Dude, we fucking Class of 98, go Wolverines. But had they been, I feel like I would have had a much better time in high school. Because I, I want to tell you something. I don't think there's better entertainment, another company that exists that would do something like this daily. I look on the socials. And I feel happy, I feel good, I get excited, and you're a part of that. And to be a youth in today's market, damn, that would be amazing. I would have been Pit Viper's number one fan. I'm a 43-year-old man, and I consider myself top five fan in the world. What an honor, man. That really means a lot. Thank you. You know what I like? I like when you put, I like when you put the Pit Vipers on, on the, uh, the, the older humans, yeah. the much older. Like I, I like like the 101-year-old that's celebrating <laughs> them. At and least. You, you put the Pit Vipers on them, and it's so fun. Like, you say, like, Pit Viper Babe or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it gets us every time. You it know? does. It <laughs> does. And I feel like, in all honesty, uh, it's a hell of a company. It really is. I'm going to give you a real no-shitter, okay? Hit me. It's the shit. <laughs> it is. It's the best place in the world. I've been here for a few days. The way they run this operation, I want to give them all my money. I want to give them my soul. Me too. I, I almost want to ask to, for them to stop paying me. I want to just like do this out of pure love, you know? That's the kind of loyalty and respect and authority that Pit Viper demands. Speaking of which, the entire site is 31% off. Oh, 69%. I still have them on right now. This is what we're looking at right here. Get them for your dad. How many minutes we got left till those those things are back up? Oh, we're gonna be here for three days. Uh, we're not leaving. Shit. What? I have to be here for three days? Yep. All right. I'm running on. I'm running on passion, fire, and a mother loving dream. All right. And my dream is selling as many sunglasses for the company that gave me life, gave me breath. I was nothing. I was nobody. I know this was supposed to be about you and how it changed your life, <laughs> but it changed my life. The kids talk to me now. That's way better than what I had. Take the, no, keep talking. Okay, uh, Pit Piper uh, changed my life. Uh, I have a cool new mustache. I have a rat tail. I have great fashion sense. I have uh, healthcare. Uh, I have... <laughs> Uh, worsening eyesight from staring at my phone all day. Uh, I have uh, lots of friends, uh, and I have a lot of Pit Vipers, and that is how Pit Vipers changed my life. That was amazing. For anybody out there in the universe, and there are millions of them that would love to be an employee at pitviper.com, what's your advice to get in this inner circle? First off, they can buy the glasses right now, which puts you on Team Pit Viper, but to get here, what would be your advice? Um, yep, buying, buying Pit Vipers is most important. Um, if you could be <laughs> friends uh, with anybody that works here, that's pretty helpful. Uh, you don't DM us uh, and comment on Instagram, and that's how you get a job here. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And live in Utah. And live in Utah, yes. So that was Pit Vipers. Good morning, Pit Viper. Day one. Listen to me right now. Coming up is something that I never dreamed would happen. Chuck Mumford <laughs> is going to be taking Pit Vipers and he's going to be showing you how it was done back in the day when it was just a man, a couple bucks, and a motherfucking dream. He's going to take them, he is going to show you his art, his passion, where it came from. You're in the belly of the beast, stay tuned the next hour. Chuck Mumford, co-founder with Chris.
two beautiful humans who gave this world a gift that just keeps giving. And speaking of giving this holiday season, buy our sunglasses. You don't have to pay full price. That would be stupid. Right now's the time. Tap, 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 tap. It's so easy. They come to your door. Yeah, right to your door. All your friends, all your family. It changed this man's life. It can change yours. So do it. Buy it for the whole damn neighborhood. Everybody loves them. They're the best. So stay tuned for Chuck Mumford painting pit vipers. And God bless you. And thank you for watching the 69 hour pit viper telethon presented by pit viper the sunglasses that sunglasses would wear if sunglasses wore sunglasses <laughs> <laughs> my time is a time oh god bless let's go get something to drink <laughs>
friends, neighbors, lovers, even haters. Glass half full or empty, well that's your choosing.
boy, oh boy, fans of Pim Viper, do we have a treat for you. We are taking a drive down memory lane. The one, the only, Chuck Mumford is here. Give him a big hand. Co-creator of Pim Viper. Here he is. Wow. As spry as a mountain goat. He's a youthful uh, 29 ish, maybe? Uh, 31. 31. 31. Chuck, listen, this is an honor and a privilege. I met Chris earlier and getting to talk to you both. You are the man behind the man behind the man. This is your baby, Pit Viper. Talk about it. Right now, pitviper.com is where you need to be shopping. That's what we're talking about here. For profit telethon, everybody. We got a big surprise for everyone here in the studio today. I like surprises. Uh-huh. What is it? Oh, well, we're gonna put together some hand-painted sunglasses to be auctioned off for profit. For on profit eBay. on eBay. Now listen, these aren't just any Pit Vipers. These are the Pit Vipers that this man's hands are gonna be touching the man who helped bring this to life with Chris Pit Viper. Now Chuck, can we do a little history lesson here? You've been on the mountain all day. You're wandering along. You find some sunglasses in a military surplus store. Is this correct? That's correct. And your mind just goes, these things suck. I'd like to brighten them up. Is that what happened? It was before everyone actually cared about wearing cool sunglasses. And I found this one pair and said, this is fucking me. You know? This is fucking me. That's how I felt, Chuck, when mm -hmm. I put them on. Because I'd always been a little conservative, little, you know, afraid to kind of let my inner freak flag fly. I put the pit vipers on, and I found more than just a pair of sunglasses. I found a lifestyle. Speaking of sunglasses, do you know what's going on this hour, Chuck? The Cosmos, single wide, 69% off. 69% off. That is so much money. So you find these sunglasses and what's going on in your brain? What are you thinking to yourself? I'm going to modify these. Are you an artist? Do you have an art background? So n not really. And anything goes, you know, in the life of Chuck Mumford. So he said, let's make this the most popular, best sunglasses ever to be created. But it actually happened. Dreams aren't supposed to happen, but sometimes they happen. It happened. Look at this. We did it, guys. They did it. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Two men, one vision to create the ultimate sunglass company, Pit Viper. Now listen, can we get into this just a little bit, Chuck? Let's get started. Okay, let's get started, but I just want, real quick, Pit Viper, the name. Was that your nickname out there on the slopes? Uh, we kind of uh, evolved from many different styles of uh, living, maybe be a good way to put it, where you might have a smooth, slithery voice. You might have a strong strike. This is something where you can really live as a pit viper. He's living now as a Papa Pit Viper. Congratulations, I heard you're a daddy now. All right, he's not living fast and free and as wild as he used to, but he can still paint the hell out of a pair of sunglasses. These are gonna be put. Let's get to it, Chuck. Get in here, show me what you got. All right, first we gotta find these, these cans. Here we are. Yes. We need to get you set. Okay, yeah. all right, all right, so, okay. First we need a your, your beautiful clothes. Thank you. By the way, this, this, on. this jacket is reversible. It's I wear it all the too. time. You're probably going to need to, to really... Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna take that shot. I'm gonna get on. Um, we have many sunglasses here today that are going to be painted. I'm going to give Mr. John the full treatment how to, how to do this. As he's getting ready, we have paint. We have sunglasses frames. And first things first, we've got to remove the lenses from the frames. It's a very important thing, or else you paint your sunglass lenses and then you can't see out of them. <laughs> I 
There's two now, instead of one. Put this in a safe place. Like, like the floor. Is this a safe place? I feel like I'm in a safe place. Your points are all sweet. Absolutely. We're going to be painting these same ones right here. Okay. They got me ready. Excellent. So first thing we need to do is nothing easy about painting. So let's stretch. Okay. Let's get stretch. stretch. Start with maybe a um, arm straight up. Okay. This man was a professional. Three, two, student. one. Step to your toes. How many years were you the world champion, Chuck? Uh, sixty-nine years and counting. Sixty-nine. No. Mm. Still got okay. it. Okay. Here we're gonna this hand here, and now we're gonna we're gonna go there. He's still so limber. Let's get this going. Okay. Three, two, one. Switch. That's a deep burn. Uh -huh. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh. Feels good. That was that was the right move. Okay, so you feel like you can ruin your clothes. No, no. I'll ruin mine. It's fine. Speaking of clothes, no. did you know the entire website's 31% off? You could have this jacket. This, do we still sell this? I believe so. That's one of my favorite, and they also have matching sweats. <laughs> and a matching hooded sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. I wear it all the time at home. Get a lot of looks, a lot of looks from the ladies. I'm a married guy, mm -hmm. if anyone's wondering out there. <laughs> <laughs> Polar, we got some original polarized uh, Cosmos as well here. These are beautiful sunglasses for sale. 69% uh, off on pitviper.com. Holy moly, man. That's a deal and a half. Isn't it? All right, you Chuck. Can't, you can't even pay money that much for those. What do we got here? Um, we found some shoes to paint. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, two different splatter paint techniques are going to be taught here in this demonstration. We have small splatter and large splatter. It's very, very difficult. This is going to be a state-of-the-art lesson that only can be seen here on the Pit Viper 69-hour for-profit telethon. I'm nervous for you. This man, he's an artist. Art is very personal. You usually do this somewhere alone, quiet, nobody's watching. That's when the muse comes. But you get to see the muse here and watch it happen live, only here. Only here, it's the only place. How are the phones going? Are we getting a lot of pledges? Do we have a lot of contributors? Is it still happening? Sure Keep are. those sales the coming. Oh, the phones? Listen. I can't keep up. Hello. Yes. Yes. yes, this is the telephone. Give us oh, all your money. Course. They are working so hard much. over there. Yep. Call all, right. all your friends over to the house. Get your mom and dad's credit card. Let's go. Okay, step one. I'm going to have you do a very important job. Yes, I'm ready. We've got some average to subpar terrible survey paint here that we're going to use to paint these. Potentially worse than what was ever used on pit vipers before. Do I need to wear a mask? I have to talk. I've inhaled fumes before. I think you could yell. <laughs> We don't want to go back to bad, Johnny. I changed a lot. I met a good woman. Ask the Jew. Congratulations. Oh, yes. and so we're going to shake them. You're going to be shaking these cans. There we go. That's what we're talking about. That's how you shake some cans. Got to mix the paint. The paint is very sensitive. Needs to be shaken. Good at this for some reason. I've always had very strong wrists. Specialist. Right and left. Can do them both. All day long I can do this. It's amazing. So up on the paint stage now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Everybody now, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 pairs ready to go. 69. Yeah. And for mathematics, for people that think math isn't important, this man helps run and owns a business. He had to learn math. You did amazing with that.
Thank you. I was in math A when I was in high school. That's for people that aren't very good at math. Congrats on the high school. Thank you so much. Did you graduate? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I did. It's exciting. All right, what's uh -huh. next, Chuck? So, what should we do? Should we wear some masks? I think we should. I mean, I don't know if I can one. lose more brain Hair. cells than I already have lost. All right. I'm curious to hear how the microphone. Can we? Ah, uh, he's got a gentle touch. He's got an artist's touch. There's no doubt about it. Wow. Remind you of the mm. pandemic? It sure does. This is a lot of fun to be back here. Thanks. Oh, you nailed it, Chuck. That's good. Okay. All right. How does that feel? That feels great. Feels great. These are N95. Are they N95s? That's it's important. All you can get any, any, any more of these days. That's right. Oh, I'm sorry. You Guys, this is how he did it back in the day. This was grassroots. Much better mask. He didn't know he was creating an empire that would okay. one day have a 69-hour telethon. Uh-uh. No. So, first things first. Did we shake the paint? I shook the shit out of the paint, Excellent. Chuck. Let's get it out. First, we're gonna go with a fluorescent pink, one of Pit Viper's favorite colors. Absolutely. Beautiful. Um, and it's shaking, right? Mm -hmm. And time to introduce a little friend of mine. This piece of cardboard right here. <laughs> See that? Oh. That's spray paint. Dude, it pops! That color pops! The color pops. It pops! Yeah. You know what you're talking about. I do. Mm -hmm. I know the words. So, I like to use this little uh, cardboard. Mm -hmm. This little friend helped me get through this process of the paint. Like I said, this pair of sunglasses has never been created before. Never been created before. Never been created and it's gonna be available on eBay and you can purchase it for, for profit. monies, for profits. So yeah, this will be uh, one and only and something that's actually not planned at all. We just kind of winging it because we had this paint over here in the back. Can you imagine some young bucks walking around town and he's got, I got the Chuck Mumford Originals touched by his hand. As God's witness, he put these up. I bought them on eBay. That would be incredible to be somebody who you gets stoned. You person. You could be this person. Um, you notice also these are all white. That's a great base for your fluorescent colors. All you DIYers out there watching this and saying I'm doing that, when I, I'm going to order those and I'm going to do that, white base is a great place to start. Excellent. He's Guess giving you a tip. Does. Allows the color to. Ah, pop! Oh, hey. Where's the balloon? Good callback, Chuck. Oh, hell yeah. I thought we were going to pop a balloon when we said that. Uh, no, I have a heart there condition. We go. I told you guys, no more popping. Damn it. Yeah, All so right. the first round is going to be this fluorescent pink. Okay, where should I stand, Chuck? Do you think the people out there are really dying to see this paint fly? 100% they're dying to see <laughs> the paint fly. Oh, okay. That's what they're tuning in for. Okay, so. Let's try it like that. Get things going. Oh. I feel like we're okay. going into combat. Look at us. Okay, come on. Come on behind me. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Okay. We're going to dust. We're doing dusting. Okay. Do a dusting. Take these kind of hot paint. Okay. Ooh. We want these kind of house color. Look pop. at this. Remember that pop? He's as graceful as a gazelle. He's still you got it. Oh. Really, it's a dance. how Pit Viper started right here, going back to their roots. We're making them kind of pink. This is going to be color kind of pink. What the hell is that? It's like, there's a, this place is haunted, I swear. No, I've heard all kinds of weird noises. I've been here for two days and I've seen and heard things that uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anyone to see or hear. Crazy. All right, so. You can see. Yes, love that. Amazing. They're kind of pink. Huh? They're kind of pink. Hey, is anyone calling in about this? Dude, do we have any callers? Does anyone want to get excited about getting a pair of one and only Chuck Mum for Pit Vipers hey, from his the, own hand? Do we need to check in with the callers? We can check in with the callers. Let's test out our telethon staff. I see a bunch of people sitting out there looking around, not doing much. When Chuck wants a caller, Chuck gets a caller. Get on it, people. I can't carry this whole thing. I got broad shoulders. 
but I can't carry it at all. This guy right here is the reason you're here, him and Chris. Okay? Let's get it. Golly jeepers creepers. Show some appreciation. Well, we haven't even started splatter painting yet. You're That's right. the only thing anyone cares about. You're right. I'm sorry. Hey, I've been working on my temper. I've been in classes, and I apologize. Hey, looks like there's a caller. Oh, we got a caller. All right. Where are my headphones? You go. Let's see what's going on. What do you got? Looking for pit vipers? Yeah, it's Cosmos single wide, 69% off right now. Go to the website. Hurry, hurry. Time's almost up. Wow, he's good at his job. Do you got a yeah, caller? Yeah, so efficient. Yeah, they're requesting um, one of these handmade pairs right here. What are these going for? About $6,900? That's a great wow. question. Can we figure out what these are going to be listed for? Ooh, wow. Hello? Hello. Yes. You're wondering if you should put THC in the mashed potatoes. Mm. Is grandma coming to Thanksgiving? Yikes. Yes? Okay, then definitely do that. Yeah, okay, the sunglasses, yes, you should also buy those too. Giving out information, life lessons. Sales. They're pros. We're talking about sales for they profit. They are professionals. Sales for profit. Yes, sir, Reed, Bob. Okay. So check, check, to be honest, I need to ask you a question. These sunglasses right here, do you have any sort of direction as far as the way you spray, any sort of movement? Is there any spirit that you bring mm. as you're painting? Do you harness anything to put into the glasses that is the pit viper essence? So, there's pit viper essence throughout the whole process mm. because it's how you make pit vipers. Mm. Um, the next part, the splatter paint, which everyone's waiting for, is going to open up everyone's eyes to what can be done, especially those DIYers out there. I know they're craving they, this. Uh, nobody in their oh. right minds uh, could, could even understand how you splatter sunglass frames. I have no idea what's going to be expected, and I am super excited. I got to be honest. We're doing purple next. Purple, purple. Purple, purple one, next. One and one horn flower, purple people leader. That's a great name for a pair of glasses, the purple people leader. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't. It's not my job. I'm just saying, if someone wants to take it, you can have it. So I'm going to need some, uh, hey, guys, uh, who, whoever the best camera guy is, we're going to need him on, on right now, okay? Close up of this nozzle is what we need, okay? Back in the studio, close up on the nozzle, close up, anyone? Can we get a close guys, up, please? Guys? There, oh, closer. We need you closer, okay? We need this to be close. Oh, wow, wow, now this is what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be called a very special trigger effect where you need to be really on your game when it comes to a spray painting. This is a normal spray. This is not spraying. I'm not spraying anything. We're going to need to find somewhere right in the middle. Oh, that is amazing. See that? It's a manipulation of this can. Restoleam didn't say do that. I did it on accident one day, and then started painting sunglasses. God, I would kill to have fingers that could do that. That's just, that's a touch that you don't see every day. So, very important. Go halfway. Look at that, look at you, they're splattering. There are little beautiful dots occurring right now. Mm -hmm. God, dang it, you wake up every day and you learn something new. Hey, that's, no, no, Chuck. I don't play those kind of games. Okay. You understand? We're gonna so, go ahead and uh, put the purple to the glasses now. Okay, let's do it. Very delicate now. This is where the magic happens. This is the finesse. This is everything you're talking about. It's all in the fingertip. It's a, you know, insert tip joke. Insert tip. I can tell you this. I don't want to cross the line, but Mrs. Mumford is a very lucky woman. Let's be honest here. Chuck, hey. she caught ya. You see this? You see this going down? Uh -huh. See what's happening there? Oh my gosh, there are, can we get some camera? Guys, there's these beautiful, beautiful pit viper dots just coming onto these glasses. You're seeing how it's made as it's happening from his hands. Oh yeah, my go. gosh. No, it sounds like I'm it's like happening. I am mesmerized right now. It's happening. You truly have a gift. You gotta hit the touch points. From the almighty. It's all about the touch points. Oh. Okay, we're coming around. You can see. It's 
stunning. It's You're stunning to turn into something that's going to make you more popular and get more attention. Don't I you want to weep. My eyes have never seen anything so beautiful. This is amazing. Oh, Chuck, you really got something special. Okay, here. so we're going to get this splatter going. we got to finish these off. We're running out of time. Uh, Are we good on time? You take your time. Okay. You okay. take your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know how many super fans, how much money they're going to spend on these? You give them what they want, Chuck. So it's important not to over splatter you DIYers out there. Great thing for you. Uh, when do you ever get an opportunity to get some legit hand-painted Pit Vipers? Hello. You don't. That's the answer. Okay. Here we go. Holidays are coming up and only 39, 69 pairs of these are available. What a treat. Oh, Chuck. Oh, okay, Chuck. Now. God, those are beautiful. Oh, those are beautiful. That is what we're talking oh. about now. Hello. Guys. What do you want to do with a color like this? Anything you want, you guys. These are going to take you to a different level. Personally. What would I want to do with them? You do. I'd want to rock and roll, Chuck. <laughs> rock and roll, baby. Dude, can you imagine the power, the respect and authority that you demand when you okay. wear regular pit vipers? You put these son of a guns on, you're taking it to a different level. We're going to have to come up with a new name. Maybe. Forget full turbo. We need a new name, Chuck. I think these might have to be the son of the guns. The son of the guns. I like it. Man, you are just full of it today. Good job. This is incredible. Okay, we're going to go do the back side. Oh. Yeah. They're all laughing in the studio after that one. Screw them, Chuck. It's about you and me and the viewers on pitviper.com. Okay. We're not going to skip out this, although you can't see it. We're not, we're, we're not going to cut any corners. Nobody had the grit and determination Let's to throw them. Prep and finish work. Those are the only corners we're going to cut. Chuck, they're beautiful. Okay, here we go. I think, I think that's the end of our light splatter technique. I've seen a lot of a lot of sunsets and sunrises, but this beats them all. These things are absolutely okay. stunning. So we got some uh, shoes down here too. These have potential for something you don't know. Will the shoes be available for purchase as well, or is that too 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 soon to say? Well, that's uh, something maybe people need to keep their eye out on the on the 69 hour for profit telethon. Stay tuned. No, well played, sir. Yes, well played. Yes. All right, I'm going to back off. Let's go ahead and see what he's going to do with these sneakers. Okay, sneakers. We'll just, we're just going to give him some, uh, some purple. Okay. Give him some purple. Okay, cool. What about a pink? Should we do some pink too? Pink sounds great. Okay. Who cares? They're just shoes. They're just shoes. Some of us are all we care about. That's true. They're, they're the shoes, yeah. Everyone's got them. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Oh, the done, huh? Oh, this looks amazing. Okay. So, we finished with this portion of the small splatter. And maybe we should go to the callers? Let's go to the callers. Do we got any callers? Kids, how you doing over here? You guys all right? Any of the phone still ringing? Let's let's do it here. What are we here here? Go Wait, on. I'll have a larger pizza than that. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> and this then... guy's ordering the damn pizza. Oh. Sorry. You get paid, right? You work here. Yeah. That's yeah. a bunch of nonsense, dude. We're in the middle of a live telethon, and you're ordering a pizza. I'll give you a slice. It's a bunch of bullshit. All right, you got anybody on there? Yes, I am receiving a lot of stoke for the commemorative tote bags that we're gonna have available. <laughs> Oh my lord. Okay, wait, time out, time out. Listen, the generosity of this company cannot be overstated. If you sign up right now, you get a free, that's correct, free tote bag, all right? And you can be entered to win an ATC. That's an actual all-terrain cycle. Yes, they're amazing. And you can also get a free bumper sticker. So take your fingers, go down there, Use your keyboard, and you're going to get a free tote bag. It'll be arriving at your house in 8 to 10 weeks to 20 weeks. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Anybody on the phone? Oh, great. It's your mom. Great, guys. Thanks. My mom. Dude, shut My mom okay. would not be. I don't know if you're coming over Is oh, it really my mom? Alive. No, hey, I'm not. Hey, God, I broke the line. Sorry. I yeah, I know. Maybe it was uh, spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't even know. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, very important to note that the Bible this is not the world when it comes to, print, to splatter painting. There's a whole other thing that lives out there it's called large splatter painting. And we're going to have some special guests come in to help us demonstrate this special technique. I am so excited. Who could the special guest be? The it's your special guest. Special guest. Come on. Here they come. They are some drones and white. Very lucky people are going to have their, their fancy white suits, their tuxedos, are going to be splatter painted. Unreal. A splatter painted tuxedo? Are you out of your mind, Chuck? This is wild. This is banana. I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to it. You guys look great. Where so, did they... <sighs> look at these. Do you remember this one? Yes, you sir. This one? Yes, sir. This is, the, this is the trick for this major technique. Okay. Um, maybe we start with some turquoise, baby. Turquoise! That's a great color! Here it is! Turquoise is coming up! Okay, this is the color we're gonna go with. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's stunning, Josh. So, you know, I'd like the, the, the two models to stand here, please. All right. And the first step is to get your color palette made out of cardboard, preferably. Reuse your cardboard. And we're gonna load this thing up with some paint. Load it up, Chucky! Loading it up. Look at it all. You notice the point there, Josh? What is the point? You notice that point down there? Oh yeah, yeah. Look at all the paint oh. flow down. Oh, it flows beautiful. down to the tip there. Oh, look at that, look at that. Look at the way it's leaking. And that's when we want to splatter it. Oh, shit! We want to, we want to flick it on there. Hot we, damn! This is a riot! Oh, you just went from oh. looking like nothing to looking spectacular. We add more, and we're going to we're gonna oh. get here, here. We need to go all over. Yes. Oh. Model. Just tremendous. They're ready. They're ready. He's got an artist touch. Look at him go. He's taking yeah. something and making it more. We're gonna get some in the hair probably here. Uh, oh. hair. Oh. Just trying to avoid it. Yeah. That dude's got some good. sweet chest hair. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then you know, <laughs> this one color, great face, a lot of contrast. Excellent. And you kinda wanna just whip it. You need to whip it. Whip it good. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Let's get that leg. Oh. Is there anything better out there right now in the universe that you could be watching than this? The answer is no. no. This is incredible. The answer is no. Okay. How about we uh, turn around, guys, and we're going to do your backsides now. Oh, I love the backside. Look at these backsides. We got a couple yeah. beautiful models here. There they go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. So that's the back side. We want these suits to be best dressed at the best ball. Best dressed. Come on. Best dressed at the Our models ball. are having here some fun. Push, push in the tush. Come on. <laughs> we got some silly guys. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. Suit tip under fashion. Guess what we're doing? What are we doing? Switching the purple! Switching the purple! Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Stick Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, we're splatter painting. Truly a master's touch. Oh, whoa! Hey, look out! <laughs> yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. You're coming okay. in hot. We're flicking. Okay, front side, let's go. We're going back to front oh, side. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, these are some suits now. Hey, what were these for? I just found them. Hopefully they, they weren't for something They might have been. They're more important now. That was for my grandfather's wedding. He's getting remarried. 
Congratulations. My grandmother. 420 years yeah, old. Yeah, she. My grandmother barely been in the ground. She's still warm, and he remarries oh, this hairdresser. Classic. Son of a bitch. Yeah, but it's all right. He'll look cool with me. Yeah, that's your grandpa. That's, that's for sure. Grandpa. He's <laughs> a ladies' man. The silver fox. Oh, right. What we call him. Excellent job, guys. I think you would do a spin. Let's let's get. This is great. Wow. wow. Can we get a hand for our models, please? Wow. Chuck, Chuck, that's incredible. What else we got Isn't here? That? You know, you guys, don't overthink it. Sometimes all you need is some recycled products to really make something super special. All you DIY, DIYers hey, out there, John! let's. Hey, let's Chris, what, what is it? Hey, John! Hey, John! Hey, John! Hey, John! Hey, John! Hey, Hey, Fumes. I can feel it. That's what I'm, talking about. I'm gonna put this on my wall at home. Everyone's gonna see this when they walk in. This is never leaving my home. And I'm gonna say Chuck Mumford, co-founder of Bitviper, made it himself. Look at that. Wow. He has got a touch. We're painting still. You got the touch. Look at that. That's nice. Look at that. You got the power. Look All at this right. guy. Chris, you are something else. Sign it! Sign it! Sign it! Just sign it! This is too much. Sign them! Yeah! Sign them! People say miracles don't happen. They say dreams don't come true. They do. There we go. All morning long. Look at this. That looks like something I would do. Oh my goodness. Nearly 10 year celebration and I get I get the royal treatment. What an exciting thing. That is excellent. Thank you, Chuck. Did you see that? <laughs> Thank you. Look at that. It goes so well with that blue tape. God, this is amazing. From all the fans out there, Chris, Chuck, we say thank you. God bless you. Callers, do we still have callers? More callers coming in. They've been coming in the whole time. They're busy over here the entire time. Let's see what we got. Colors. He's requesting a rainbow splatter. Are we gonna make a rainbow splatter? Uh, next year's telethon, right, guys? Yay! Yeah! Yeah! Rainbow splatter. You heard it here first. Kind of a mixed review on that one. What do we got? I just had somebody give a pledge um, for every every type of shitty hat. All of them. Shut up! Did you hear that? Somebody. That is insane. Put a pledge in. For every single shitty hat, that is amazing, and it, it, it equals everyone's gonna be happy that created a shitty hat. That's amazing. That's amazing. What about you? What you, you were not supposed to inhale the paint fumes if you were doing it yourself. This was just a. Oh, we already listen, guys. Do we have to put a disclaimer up? Can we all wear our big kid pants? You know, we're professionals. That guy's a professional. Don't be doing the things you see here. That can be dangerous. All right, just buy the sunglasses. Enjoy the telethon. Enjoy being entertained. It's beautiful. We're doing a little touch up here, John. A little touch up. Um, something you want to try, maybe? Ooh, yeah. Can I? Yeah. I, I didn't want to interfere in your art. Show that all these DIYers out there. This is your process, Chuck. Thanks. It, anyone can do it. So I, I go like this. Yeah, load it. Load it up big time. More than that. We want full hold. Come on. Really hold it. And there we go. There we go. I'm doing it. You're coming under, you're coming under. You're doing the, you're doing a full whip. There we go. <laughs> wow. Dude, this feels great. Doesn't it? I didn't realize how much fun it would be, Chuck. That's what we're all about fun here at Pit Viper. It's incredible. We are in Texas. Great, look at you, sure you, you did it. So, you did it. You did it. You're, That's uh, amazing. You know, this is so good. Excellent. Thank you. You know, when I was young, I, I was never good at arts and crafts. Yeah. So I, mm -hmm. I totally. Okay. But now, mm -hmm. I feel like there maybe is a future and a hope. Yeah, sometimes when you're, you know, lost in the woods as a child like me for six to nine years, <laughs> yes. uh, you find ways to entertain yourself, no, really like find an old spray paint can with the dogs and stuff like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. Cool. Chuck, while you're here, let's just be real. Let's cut it for a second. Okay. We're showing you this amazing stuff. What words of encouragement do you have to the human beings out there? 
who are looking to pursue their passion and their dream. You put, do anything if you put your mind to it. Woo! That's the stuff! Where else are we going to hear that? I'm never, that's the shit. You can do it. So you're saying if you put your mind to something, mm -hmm. you can do it. Yeah, believe in yourself. Oh, dude, you're dropping gems, yeah. dude. Stop. Believe. Yeah. Not in other things, but in yourself. Yes, it's the best investment you can make. Holy shit! Are you getting this? Dude, listen, call in, call in, call in, get these sunglasses. You're not gonna hear this kind of gems anywhere else. Interest rates have nothing to do with, your, with you. Okay. <laughs> That's another good one. Yeah. Man, Chuck. We painted, we splattered, we designed. We, we lived. We lived a little bit. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> it does feel a little. There's something here, Chuck. <laughs> One out. Sorry. Easy there, hey. cowboy. Okay. <laughs> yes. Big, big mm -hmm. note for all the DIYers out there. Must use some sort, some sort of enamel finish, clear enamel finish on your freshly new painted pit vipers. You work so hard to get this finish that you think is gonna take you to the next level in life. Protect it with some clear coat. And for everyone here in the studio, we're gonna skip that step. <laughs> Cause look at this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hello, uh, darkness, uh, my old friend. No, I'm good. I'm good. There's just a little slippy, a little slippy. Reminding everybody this hour only the Cosmo single wads are 69% off. As I mentioned previously, nobody gets 69% off. Not even everybody who works here is best friends. But you do. And so does anybody that you know. Get 69% off all day. No, 31% off all day. 69% on this one. And every single hour, we're going to have a new pair. These are the Cosmo single wads. Change your life, demand respect and authority. Bye, bye, bye. This is the 69 hour telethon presented by Pit Viper for profit. You just saw Chuck Mumford, who is the co founder of Pit Viper, along with Chris, make some incredible custom Pit Vipers. You witnessed it here, you saw it. We're taking calls. She apparently said my mom called. I'm not buying it. After seeing the shitty hats, I don't know what's going on around here. There's shenanigans. Which shitty hat did she buy? I don't know. My mom, I don't know if she bought a shitty cat. You, maybe Topcom. I don't know. Pee pee poo poo. That's mama. That's my. I love you, Verna. Verna, if you're watching, you know I love you. And uh, this is my dream. I'm living my dream. I'm learning stuff. I'm gonna maybe give this to you for Mother's Day. You can hang it in your. Yeah, you are art. I am art. I am art. You're living you're art. You're art. You're living you're art. art. You're art. You're no, you're art. Now, Chuck, yeah. there's a lot of rumors out on the street that you and Chris, this might all just be a giant art piece, yeah. and that this is like Thank you so living your art. Mm. It has nothing to do with capitalism, with being a business. Is it really an art project that kind of just kept going? We like to say the joke has gone too far. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, since this is our passion, yeah. um, the sales are a, a bonus. The sales are a bonus, but remember. But now is the best time to make those those sales right now. Right now. 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 Right now. Do you understand how this works? Remember you did the clicky thing? The clicky. Let's do that. Let's do that. Click, 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 Think about how many sunglasses we just bought. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. At least they were 69% off. Or 31% off. I don't know. Can we just mention the sun's super dangerous and you need to protect your eyeballs? Polarized amazingness to protect you and your longevity and your health. And uh, debris. Don't forget about debris. Debris. Let's talk about that for a second. We're not talking French cheese here, guys. No. Those ballistics, they are ballistic. There's a pit viper for every type of person to protect yourself and to also look amazing so, as heck. One more thing. What would you like to put your sunglasses in besides a commemorative tote bag? Funny you should ask, Chuck. 
If it wasn't this commemorative tote bag, which anybody can get by simply giving us their email address so that we can email you the greatest awesome emails in the whole wide world and tell you when awesome things are happening, I would say the best thing to carry them in would be the case that comes with them. Was that the correct answer? That's the correct answer, but then you wouldn't have the commemorative tote bag that we're offering right now. Our hope is that these are all around the world. You go, you use this magical tote bag for all your adventures. We see them out in the wild. And just like with pit vipers, when you see a friend with pit vipers, you see a friend with the tote bag and it's double awesome. And you make more friends, you share the pit viper love, the family continues to grow. It's another way of saying how much we love you, Chuck loves you, yes, Chris love you. loves you. They're gonna give you a free tote bag and yes. even a bumper sticker. And if you want to enter to win an ATC, well, howdy doody, you can do that too. Click, 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 don't forget. Click, click, click. I'm gonna go back to the phones right now and see what's happening over here. Chuck, hey man, it truly is an honor. You're a hell of an athlete, a hell of a human. Keep up the good work, keep putting the positivity out into the world and having you as a guest we know you're a busy fella running the empire you and chris to just have you both here it truly is an honor and a privilege and we love you and thank you for everything you know what we're going to do for you and all the viewers out there what? we're going to get some of these together we're going to build the sunglasses put the lenses back for tomorrow's show hey gosh damn it hot diggity dog are you hearing this are you hearing it he just came up with that just now. He's gonna put some lenses in. Thanks. They're gonna bring them back for the show. Thank you so much. We're gonna check over at the phones. Chuck, incredible, incredible, just incredible. Anything else going on over here? Um, bidding. They wanna know what the bidding's gonna start out for the sunglasses that we're just scraping. Chuck, what's the bidding? I mean, I give me a low ball. What would you put the lowest one at? Uh, I think the reserve would probably have to be at something about $69.69. Cents. <laughs> Excellent. 6969. 69. That's great. The reserve 16. I have a caller who just wanted to let you guys know that you look very handsome today. Stop. Hey, 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 Chuck. We both still got it. Somebody just called in and said we looked handsome. Well, that's because we take care of ourselves and we wear pit vipers. Yes. We got it. Pit viper. We look handsome, according to one of our callers. Did they pledge, most importantly? Oh, they sure did. So they bought something yes. and said? They want to look as handsome as you. That's what we call a double whammy. Sold some sunglasses, some pit vipers, and they said we're handsome. Who are you talking to? Customer wants to know how many cantaloupes can fit in the tote bag. Ooh, how many cantaloupes can fit in a tote bag? That's a great question. I think you could get at least one, two, three, four, I'm going to say five. Please, five. You know, we don't have any cantaloupes. We got some cans of paint. You want to see how many of those in there? Heck yeah, I do, Chuck. Thank you. Let's see how that goes. All right. Get them in there. At least four. Mmm, that's good. We got four in there. Look how good it looks. It feels really nice, like, in my arm, you know, like, just stylish. Look at that. You just walk anywhere. I imagine people going to their favorite market putting their favorite adult beverages or whatever beverage they prefer inside of this, going to a picnic with their significant other, just having a great time. It's stylish. It shows that you were a mm -hmm. person who contributed yes, to our do. cause, which is for profit, we also make the which profit is really important. Family. Profit's important. Yeah. Because again, as I've stated previously, these people have homes, they have lives. They like to buy treats sometimes. How many people that work here are going to buy Pit Vipers today? All of you? Yeah. 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 Buy, 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 buy. Just, just because you work here doesn't mean you can't get even more Pit Vipers for more people. That's what we learned just now. I'm proud of all of you. How, how's everybody doing out there? How's our crew doing? Yeah. 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 There's two more days of this. Two more. We're, we've only just begun. We have only just begun. Let that sink in. Are you a winner? Are you in it for the long haul? Or are you going to run out of here the second something goes south and you get scared? Spencer, are you in it to win it? I'm here. Let's go. Let's go 12. 
Open. You're damn right. You're here. All right. What is this? There's something in the back that keeps showing up. Is anyone else seeing this thing on the screen that keeps moving around? I'm not. What the heck? Dude, what is that? So bizarre. So bizarre. But remember, sign up right now. You get your free tote bag. Phones are going off. We have so many contributors and pledgers. There is so much coming up. We have shows. We have the, excuse my language, the Fuck Golf Pit Viper World Championships. We have a petting zoo coming up. You know what else we have? We have a clown show. We have stunts. Hello? What's that? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you too, you too. Okay, all right, DM me. Yep, you gonna pledge? <laughs> a good one, good one. Three pairs. You're the coolest person I have ever spoke with. You're the raddest. Thank God. 69% off. <laughs> I know. It never gets old. Enjoy. God love you. Uh, Wiser, what is that? What I don't I don't like that thing. It's bizarre. Now listen up, everybody. I'm not sure if you fully appreciate what you were just treated with. You were treated with a demonstration. Oh. 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 Shit. Are you okay? Are you kidding Guys, me? Guys, I was just trying to catch a frisbee and uh, we had an accident. Those uh, were really special and a lot of. Guess what? You know what I'm not worried about? What? These sunglasses. You know why? Why? Because of the height of durability. Hey, man, brother. Damn, any other sunglass on the planet that is not a pit viper is going down, but not these bad boys. They're fine. I promise. He's a showman, folks, and he's gosh darn right. They look amazing. Look, nothing wrong with the frames. They're perfectly there. God, are you okay? Actually, the price is gonna stay, stay the same. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I think it should go up after you did a people's elbow into your own pin libraries. Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe we should do that. I was just trying to catch that Frisbee. There's something else, dude. Here, the Viper. They are incredible yeah. athletes, and uh, I think there's first aid in the back, but you're durable as hell, man. And so are the Pit Vipers that you and Chris created. God bless you both. Thank you so much. That was creating Pit Vipers with Mr. Chuck Mumford. God bless you. Thank you, and to all the DIYs out there, good luck. Good luck, everybody. They don't know what they're making yet, but this is very, very exciting. I know that they've been dreaming of baking their entire lives, even though they're athletes. You see, I think that they're both professional bikers, but I'm not actually sure I'm going to let you and them introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Brady Tweedy, and she's correct. I am a bike rider. Cool. I thought something totally different. Okay. Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, Blake Hansen, and I ride bikes as well, too. Thank you. Fantastic. But they've been dreaming their whole lives of being bakers. And so here we are on the key player, Great American Bake Off, and they will be competing. Do you all want to know what you're going to be making this evening? Yeah. Tell me, tell me about, do you, you dream about baking when you're, when you're out there on your bike? Uh, historically, I'm a professional of uh, tacos and seafood. Yeah. Tacos and seafood. Ooh! Well, drum roll, please. They will be making this evening hot dogs. Oh. Hot dogs. From scratch. From scratch. Okay. Yeah. In front of her. No, no, keep I going. I thought they told me hot. Did, did 
did you, did you, they're making hot dogs. No, it's hot dogs. Okay, hot dogs. Okay, hot dogs. okay got yeah, it. Okay. Scratch. Mm. Hot dogs. Don't scratch. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. We added it in hot dogs. They're both competitors, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, let's get to baking some hot dogs. Let's bake. Oh, oh, it's going to be a spicy competition. Maybe they'll make spicy hot dogs. Who knows? Okay, let's meet the judges. Right next to me, we have Andrew, Andrew Pollard. Andrew, what do you do? Uh, I'm a skier from Salt Lake City, Utah. Third place Frank world champion. Oh, so that means that he has a lot of experience with hot dogs. I am the glizzy king, if. The glizzy king. He's gonna be a perfect judge this evening. And then I also have Emma Olafson next to me. Emma, what is it that you do? Um, I eat hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> she is going to be the best judge ever. I can't wait to get into how they're going to judge this evening. So, Andrew, earlier on you were telling me that What's your up? your grandmother used to make you hot dogs from scratch. So, how do you think that's going to influence this, this afternoon? I was born on hot dogs. I was raised on hot dogs. Like, yes, you said my grandmother, bless her soul, made them from scratch. Um, she used squirrels from the yard that the dogs would bring in. Um, it gave it a nice gamey flavor, so I'm really looking forward to what these competitors will bring, what unique ingredients they'll source from our kitchen back there at Pit Viper HQ. Mm -hmm. um, these employees eat some good lunches. Maybe there's some good employee lunch that's been sitting there for weeks that they can Perfect. give a nice earthy hot dog for us today, folks. Fantastic. Well, do we have um, any squirrels or we no. absolutely do not have do not any have squirrels some. yeah well there's probably some dead ones in the street you guys can make that happen right okay um emma talk to me about your experience with hot dogs what do you love hot dogs do you, i mean like is this part of your just give me the rundown on why you're going to be a great judge today um i eat hot dogs with a passion um quite often last night it's just my favorite kind of food so i think i'll be a great judge because uh, I have the experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll be judging flavor, size, um, like the feel, like how soft or <laughs> <laughs> the so, texture, the texture of the hot dog. Okay. Uh, what what makes a great hot dog? Um, you know, it's about how it's made, how it's prepared. Well, I think. I mean, we have a lot of. Fantastic um, things in the office um, we're going to be baking with today. Um, can you just, just one quick question? I'm curious what is going on with the kitten? Um, this is Fluffy Boots, the third. Um, she was afraid that she was going to potentially become one of the ingredients for the hot dogs, so I have since adopted her. Um, she's yeah. a rescue, she's she's a rescue a re kitty. She's a rescue kitty. Um, it's my emotional support animal. I'm just making sure that she doesn't end up in any of the hot dogs. Because you didn't want to eat her. I bet she'd be delicious, but unfortunately, I am emotionally attached to this animal. No. Okay. And she, yeah, she's a big hot dog fan too. Fantastic. Herself. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have her try some. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, without further ado, let's get to the actual baking of it. Officially, it is time to get this thing underway. Both competitors will be given 69 minutes exactly to bake, boil, cook, smack, whatever they need to do to make these hot dogs fantastic before they are, of course, judged by our professionals. So, without further ado, ado, let's get baking. Three, two, one, let's bake! <laughs> oh, that's really gross. She's already put her fingers in that one. <laughs> A little cheese. Oh, we got cheese, beef, turkey. These guys know what they're doing. In beef, we've got butter, cheese is being sprinkled all over the place. Oh, someone's trying to. <laughs> I don't even like hot dogs. This is really hard. Um, <laughs> it definitely seems that uh, Brady looks a little bit more frantic right now. He's, he seems very, very, very nervous. Uh, Blake seems very cool over there. She's cool as a cucumber. She's cool as that meat that she's got in her hands right now. Whoa. So Blake is now rolling the beef on the butter. The butter stick appears to be on the receiving end of the beef. And she looks very, 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 very calm right now. So it seems like she might be a little bit more experienced maybe than, than Ray. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. 
know. I like a little spicy dog with a little chilies in it. Okay. Spicy dog. Spicy dog, yeah. chilies. How are you feeling right now? I'm a little nervous. I just yeah. hope my dad's proud of me. Fantastic. Does your dad make a lot? No. No? I'm just disappointed. Just disappointed yeah, in you. And so choices. like this is this is yeah. big this is a big day. This is a big day, yeah. Big day. What's going through your head right now? Oh, you only have that. 69 minutes to cook. All I, can see, all I can see right now is beef. Okay. Well, again, let's just make let's just make his father proud his father proud. You know, this is this is the heartwarming part of the event for me. <clears throat> Over here and bother. Blake, well, Blake, what are you doing with the uh, onion and the butter? Uh, we're going for a mixture here of um, a few different elements to really bring out flavor, accentuate flavor, and um, give us a well-rounded dog. Okay. She seems very, very calm. What? I mean, are you, do you face your biking career the same way? Top of the, top of the line, you're just cool as a cucumber, or is it just with baking? I tend to take it slow. I prefer a slower, more controlled approach. Um, however, Excuse on the me. bike, Excuse me. Um, that's okay, Brady. On the bike, I tend to not really use my brakes much, so when I'm baking, I tend to slow it down. Right. Slow balance. it down. Balance. balance. Do you think that's going to be enough to get you the W today? You know, Rachel, I sure hope so. Um, it's been a long time coming to get here, and um, you know, I really just want to uh, have my talents shown today. Have, have, have her talents shown today. Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> And last, we, this is not going to air, so we hope that your viewership is enough that it actually makes it worth it for our contestants right now. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we should uh, talk to the judges a little bit, see what they have to, what the, what, what's running through their minds as these contestants beat the beat. Yeah. She likes her meat beef. Andrew, how do you like your meat beef? Well, you know, when you're beating meat, it's really important that you don't overbeat the meat. It's all about putting the right amount into that, right amount of work today into that meat, you know? Yeah, I agree. Not letting it sit for too long and soak there on the table. Like, you gotta keep that, keep that active, keep that okay. stuff moving, you know? So active great. meat, you know, dynamic meat, that's what we're looking for. Dynamic meat here at Pit Viper. Dynamic meat here at Pit Viper, we don't like to soak. The meat no, this, the soggy meat is not what we're looking for. We're looking for nice, active meat out there. So that's why these competitors are so aggressively beating their meat today, Rachel.
know? We've got two completely different techniques. This is uh, impressive. What do you have going on over here, babe? Hey, Rachel. Yeah, so I'm a little bit uh, new to this world. Um, not a lot of experience. I'm a little timid to touch the dog. Um, and so what I was thinking was that we would start with something sizable yet palpable um, for kind of like an introductory taste to the dog. Well, I mean, it, you have been working on that dog for a while now, so um, I am excited to see what happens. Um, and then over here we have Brady He's going for a completely different method here. Uh, talk to me a little uh, bit about what you're doing here. Uh, they always say uh, bigger's better. That's what I have when I was here, so that's what we're going for. Okay, so maybe less palpable, but... Yeah. Just big. Just big. Large. Okay. Well, you know, I'm really interested to see what the judges are, are thinking right now. Um, <clears throat> definitely want to. I want to ask the the judges about sizes over here. Wait, Emma, you're about ready to eat a hot dog. What do you? Have? Uh, I just got really hungry watching these guys beat the meat, so I brought a snack. Well, that looks pretty small in comparison to what they're making out here right now. Oh yeah. It's pretty small, but um, it's not all about the size. So um, this one tastes really good, feels really nice in my mouth, um, and it's all about that really. Doesn't matter, big or small, eat them all. So yeah, we're talking about meat here today, folks. It's meat, it's the size, it's the taste, it's the texture. Um, yeah, it's... Want some? No, I'm good on that meat, it's been... Andrew, Andrew, you you get judged all all your life, but like particularly in these ski competitions, you know, you have your line, your fluidity, aggressiveness, technique, control. Yeah. How do you think that that translates to the size to, of the piece of meat? Well, to like how you're going to judge dogs. the competition today. Yeah, I think I'm going to kind of resonate with what Emma said. You know, it's like they say about pool. It's not about how the size of the stick. It's about how you. How you move them balls. Emotion in the um, So, you know, it's about the taste, the flavor here today, folks. We're not looking for size, shape, you know, there's some weird ones that still go good, but. This one. Yeah, how's yeah. your meat? Well, I can't stop eating it. <laughs> cool. Sweet. And they can't stop eating it. Back to you, Rachel. Wow, Andrew, yeah, not about the, um, the pool cue, it's more about the way you move the balls. That makes really a lot of sense to me. So I think that the next part of this is going to be the baking section of our of our hot dog. We have to bake the buns now. There truly, re there really isn't ever a great hot dog without buns. And so let's see how they can translate that next stage of this bake off. Some hot buns and dough. We'll see. Coming up next. Blake, what are, you, what are you actually doing with the casing over here? It looks like these casings have come unlubricated, and so I'm just kind of getting it started. Okay, and then the uh, end, end game is... <laughs> Pull it back out. <laughs> and now, is the casing ready for the actual meat? Casing's ready for the dog. Okay. Let's see how this goes. She's clearly done this before <laughs> many, many times. <laughs> oh, wow. I hope that the judge is like extra buttery casing. How does it feel? That's gonna be a nice dog. Okay, hey Blake, what kind of casing are you going with? It looks like our selection was pretty slim, but i uh, pretty happy with the selection that we did have. These are all natural, organic, um, intestinal casings. Fantastic. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a delicious, buttery dog. Casing is a very important step in making a good dog um, safe and um, efficable for the consumer. Um, at the end of the day, we don't want any mistakes because we don't have much options these days. So we case our dogs. Fantastic. Um, however, Brady, you've chosen not to case your dog. Can you talk to me a little bit about this decision? 
I'm all natural. I like to keep it natural. Raw doggies is what they call it. That's where I'm going with that. You think that the judges like raw dogs? I hope so. Because that's what they're getting. They're getting a little bit of raw dog here. Raw dog. Okay. Um, What's... Ex excuse me? Hey. hey, hey, sorry, you're in the middle of our shoot right now. Oh, no, no, it's really funny. You're actually in the middle of my office. So, if you guys could, like, keep it down. I, like, I'm this kitchen, I'm, like, heating up my coffee. So. Okay, hey, we'll I'm just. So, go. I'm really sorry, though. Because I'm at, like, I'm working on selling sunglasses. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're making dogs for you, dude. Making dogs? Hungry? Awesome. I'm actually vegetarian. Oh. So, that sucks. Sucks to suck. Yeah, it's not, yeah. I'm not big into meat. No. Honestly. Wow. How does, the office, how does the office smell right now? Um, it, I, I actually, I'm not getting paid for this, so I, I'm going to keep that. Okay, well. Yeah, I'm going to keep moving. We're but, gonna, um, we're going to just pretend that. Keep it rolling. Let's pretend. try and like pick up the pace a little bit. Just so you guys want to flip. Yeah. Finish your coffee. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Love it. Wow. Love the energy. Wow. Well, let's just, oh, let's just. Let's just keep rolling. Okay, uh, t you're talking about raw dogging. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping uh, at least one of the judges likes a little raw dogging. Judges, what are your thoughts between uh, the two different methods here, uh, the raw dogging and the uh, totally organically encased dog? Um, well, I'm more of a safety first than fun sort of a program here. When you're leaving a dog unprotected out there on the old surface, you're just it's just going to succumb to all these outside elements, you know? And you don't know what the outside world can deliver on that table, you know? We just saw our employee come in, and he just gave, I mean, what germs did he put on the table? So I like Blake's approach with the protection of the dog. I don't know how Emma feels about this. She seems to like to live a little bit more loose. Yeah, I have to disagree with you. Uh, I don't really know what that case and stuff is. Um, so, I don't know, I prefer the it raw. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like plastic inside my body. Like that's what we're trying to get rid of, plastic everywhere. So keep it out of your body. Okay, I think it's about time that we uh, get these in the oven. Are you, uh, are you at final? I'm ready. I got, I got the raw dog XLT is what we're going to call it. Uh, looks Look like a masterpiece. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. I'm ready. Okay, are you ready for the oven as well? I'm ready. Okay. Well, nice boys. Ready to go. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's get these things in the oven, shall we? And you're about ready to cook over here, is that yeah. correct? Doing a, one last little little seasoning on there for it. Okay. Yeah, a little ketchup. We're going with the microwave. Wow, the microwave, huh? Next technique, we'll see what happens. Oh, 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 they're fighting. They're fighting. Uh-oh, Blake appears to be in the way. Let's see how long he chooses to cook it. Oh, 420 minutes. I don't even know if he has that many more minutes. Um, some hot dogs um, in the microwave. But let's see what Blake's choosing to do now to take care of her hot dogs. Bake her hot dogs. Oh, oh, looks like she's going to be boiling her hot dogs. Wow. That natural organic casing looks like it's going to hold the juices in while it boils. I think the judges are really going to like that juicy encased meat. All right, let's see what the judges have to say about what's going on over here. <clears throat> Andrew, you want to like show us what's going on? So we're going to look at Blake's whole mixture here. And you know, the casing is looking a little bit interesting there. What do you think of that, Emma? I kind of like it. I've changed my mind. Yeah, I've actually changed delicious. my mind too. I'm not into the casing here, folks. So yeah, I don't know. We're feeling pretty good about Blake's whole soup over here. <laughs> it's feeling good. Splashy, wet, Ooh, okay. nice. Okay. It's what we're looking for. And then okay. here we go. Let's check out the microwave. So here we are, dude. This is just looking really good. This thing has been in there for around 69 minutes already, it looks like, but it's gotten nowhere. So yeah, not really looking that promising here for the giant meat missile in the microwave, but yeah, we'll see how that goes for him. It's a bold strategy, and yeah, we'll see how it plays out. Back to you, Rachel. All right, Emma, what do you think about the uh, microwave strategy here? Well, I used to microwave a lot for cooking because it's easy and fast, and sometimes that's good. You want to get the job done. Um, so I think, I don't know, I, I like both methods. 
Okay, perfect. Well, um, let's uh, let's let's get on to the buns. I know that they're they're baking somewhere. Let's let's talk about that. There is a very good chance that we uh, leave the meat a little bit too long out here because we're down to our final six minutes. That's right. This is a six minute more warning, and we have to bake some buns. Okay, they're looking frantic. Now Blake, who is you know in this contest, she was she was really 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 cool as a cucumber. She was um, you know coming on very confident, very very very. You know, strong and slow, slow and steady, and now she's looking a little bit more, well, no, not as panicked as Brady. Brady is definitely losing a little bit of his, his composure right now. He really wants to make his dad proud, so things are down the wire, and they only have six minutes. Six, that's right. All right, Brady has uh, chosen to go with his brass straps right now. We are in the final few minutes. He's really, really in the zone. He's got to make sure he doesn't get this shit in his eyes, because if he gets in his eyes, then he's not going to be able to make the buns. Looking forward to this. Oh, he's getting really, really aggressive. Oh my gosh, how can you even see out there? He's getting face shots from that stuff. Oh, rip them off. Next rock drop level. Let's go, Brady. He is in the zone, people. He is in the zone. All right, we're, uh, we've, we've, uh, we're checking over at Blake's technique right now. All right, oh, wow. She is getting ready to eat that. Those buns are getting punished. Oh my goodness. But I've heard that kneading dough is actually better for the fluffiness. It's going to be some fluffy buns. <laughs> you know, who needs a KitchenAid when you're just working as quickly and hard and aggressively with that dough as Blake is right now? She is really, really needing that. I can imagine that's really going to pay out for her when she gets out of here because she's just needing it so hard. She doesn't even need it. Look at that. She's using her elbow, her whole body. You can feel it. You can really, really feel how aggressive, aggressively and, 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 and important this is. This is where she shines. This is really where she shines. She is a baker, people. You can tell that she wants to be a baker. You know, I think that maybe Brady was a little bit, you know, he was a little bit better with the meats, right? A little bit better eating the meats. But, man, Blake is really shining with me that dough right now. Wow. This is impressive. I'm just not even mad. I'm very, very, very excited about this. You know, he's kneading his dough. It looks like his consistency is getting, oh, my goodness. I think that the Utah health inspector might have something to say about that. However, I don't think the judges care. So... That might end up working in his favor. We'll see. Wow. Consistency is looking a little bit different on that one. We'll see how this one pans out for him. <clears throat> well, we've seen them uh, working on the buns right now. And, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see what buns they go with. They could do lunch buns, breakfast buns, dinner. Wait, what are you? We're, we're not cleaning right now. Just not quite. We're not quite cleaning right now. We, we're on set. I'm sorry. It just looks like a big mess. I don't know. Uh, can we read? Should we read? Oh gosh. Okay. Anyway, so there's a bunch of different buns that they could they could go with, right? They could do like a brioche style. They could do a steam bun. They could do um, breakfast buns. Like I said, it's gonna be really interesting to see what what they go with, like what genre they go with. So, anyway, we're gonna find find out what the judges have to say about um, <clears throat> their opinions on the best buns. So, buns. How do you feel about the buns? Um. Oh, you're not more of a, you're more of the dog, you're more of the meat expert. I'm more of the bun expert, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so the buns, hmm, folks, we're looking at buns here today. We're looking smooth buns, fresh buns. The buns are the most important part of the dog. You know, you talk about sushi, it's all about the rice. I would say that the bun is a very important part of this. We're talking from scratch, folks. So they need to have the bun included. So when you, when you bite into a bun, what do you like to bite into? I don't like to buy into the bun. Uh, I just think it's more important that the dog fits perfectly in the buns. Uh, that's more my concern. So right size for the right bun. So are you thinking today that there's going to be some different size buns out there? Uh, I hope so. Uh, Brady's got a really big uh, meat stick. So. so a really small bun. Hmm. Mm. No, we're, we want the appropriate size bun. We're looking for a big bun from Brady today. Mm. Big bun. Kind of just a nice that's average right. size bun from Blake, you know? Yeah. Yeah, can't. But we did see her meat sausage fall apart out of the casing mm. out there at our last inspection. So do you think she's going to have to adapt her bun for that? Uh, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. Stick it all in there. Um, I do like the way that uh, Brie was working with the floor. I don't really mind a bit of floor action. So I'm mm. interested in having a taste of that. So it doesn't bother you at all that, oh, um, no, that the, oh, it adds to the seasoning, oh, right? Yes. Okay, maybe it goes back to what Andrew was saying about like they're adding a little bit of a... Uh, you spice, know, spice, whatever you find on the side no. of the road sometimes, you no. know, so. Squirrels, 
No, I object on that. Squirrels are not the same as dirt on the floor. Okay, so... This isn't a shaggy rap video. Nothing's going down on the bathroom floor. I don't want that in my hot dog, okay? Do you think it's gonna come together? Basically, like, they only have six so minutes left, fun. right? Do you think that they're gonna be able to bake the buns and get them ready to you put the dogs in the buns? Minutes, I don't have faith in them. Uh, show me what you got. Six minutes. I'm pretty really bored actually over here. I wish they'd get to bathing a little bit quicker. Mm. Definitely giving bonus points for whoever finishes first out there today. First. Okay, fair enough. Okay, are you hungry? I mean, you've been watching them work with the meat and the dough and all of this, you know, the smells in here, the aromas have just been sensational, truly. Trust me, I can attest to that. Um, so, I mean, are you just salivating? Are you hungry? Uh, We're starving over here. I am. Emma, you you've been starving for a long time. Yeah, I can have more than one. Can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait for a sample. How many meat snacks in a day? Three. Cool. That's perfect. Mm. what happens for right now. I think Blake is about ready to plate her buns. So, um, <clears throat> oh, she's just very, oh my gosh. Blake was just very calm, cool, collected. They look like buns. I don't have any idea what Brady is doing. That doesn't look like a bun. It doesn't look like dough. I mean, I think we had a clear winner with this one. Look, she's even glazing. She's glazing with egg. She's glazing the top of her buns. Brady is sprinkling his buns. He's, he's got dry buns. I think she's got much hotter buns. Oh, they're um, getting a little bit, whoa, whoa. Well, I hope they don't drop it. They don't have much time. There's actually no, they will have no, there's no return if they drop this thing. All right. Through the last 69 seconds, the competitors are super frantic. Oh my goodness, those buns actually ended up looking surprisingly similar. Oh my god, there's so much going on. Those hot dogs look like they're, oh no, they're on the ground. It's okay, we're down to the wire, down to the wire. Go, go, go. They're going to need to make these look good. These judges are going to really judge everything. They're going to judge consistency, the bun, what they look like, the Break garnish, up. everything. Oh my gosh, she's pulling them out of us. We all saw what those look like when they went in. Wow, those look really a lot better than I thought they were going to look. And this is this is super, super, we are down. Are you, are you stressed? Are you stressed? Oh, get out of my face. I can't handle it. Blake, Blake, are you ready? Are you ready? This is ready. the hour. This is the hour. What's she doing with the ketchup? I have no idea what. Oh my gosh. She's done this before, people. She is literally garnishing this like she's done this for her whole life. She might have gone to. Oh my gosh. Look at this beautiful color arrangement. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Brady is coming out of nowhere. He is absolutely crushing it. Three, two, one. And we are done, ladies and gentlemen. Finished product. Very impressed with how these turned out, with all the all the things that happened in here today. But um, yeah, let's go to Brady and hear what he has to say about his creation. Brady, yours is quite colorful. You want to tell me about uh, what was going on with your bees here? Yeah, I went with a little organic turkey, and a ground beef blend. Did a little topping of a, a little pickle there, a little relish. Little toasty sesame seeds for a nice smoky finish. Fantastic. Well, I'm actually quite impressed. <laughs> Blake, talk to me about your finished product here. I mean, this is quite impressive. I'm really blown away by your presentation. Things are looking pretty, pretty lovely. Talk to me about your dish. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I went with a duck fat dog this time. Mm. Um, basically, our base is um, all natural beef 
made here, right here in Utah. Um, but the secret sauce is that these dogs are infused with duck fat. What does this do for the flavor? And uh, what this duck fat does for the flavor is that it adds a unique and bold taste. Um, I think never before seen by another contestant on this show. So uh, most of my sauce is really touched on that duck fat. I think that's really where this dog is going to shine. And what about um, the the very um, last little a, bit? A garnish, a couple of tots on the side there. Uh, balance the flavors and uh, just give you a little bit of a pop of something different. Fantastic. All right, let's see what the judges have to say about this. Thank you, judges. Here is my dog for you guys. Good luck. Thank you. Mmm. Well, it is prettier than I expected it to be, but it's also way smaller than I expected it to be. Yeah, based on what went into the microwave, that's looking a little bit slimmer than what came out of it. Yeah, that's not a lot to work with, but let's try it out. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. What are your thoughts right now? Are you really nice? Okay, stress right out? That's pretty horrible. I wish this sauce would have been on the top of it. I'm not really getting any of the... Sometimes. Yeah, I think with a nice hot dog. How are you eating a hot dog like that? You need to hold it in your hand. Oh, come on. It tastes good. Please taste good. A proper hot dog. Really want to, I know that this is really hard for you. You want to make your father proud. And he's a Viking that has really made it for you, so. This is a big moment. She's falling apart. She's sorry. I can't make the dog correctly. What do you think? Do you think they look like they... She is On the regular? There's definitely more people. Are you more worried about Andrew? So yeah. Give me your thoughts. Like, what do you think that they're? You have any serious right hot dogs? Are you even from America? We've gone through this. I've had a lot of experience with hot dogs. All right, judges. I need to know the final verdict. What do you think about Brady's hot dog? Honestly, it's great. Looking at him, I feel like, no, this guy does not have a good hot dog, but he can cook a hot dog. Um, but it's pretty dry. So definitely minus one for that. Um, just, I just like the way he handled the meat. And feels good. Andrew, go ahead. Tell me what your final thoughts are on Brady's dog. I'm gonna have to agree with my judge, Emma, over here. The bun was a little bit dry mm -hmm. on it. I wish it would have had a little bit less pickle. The, those notes were a little bit overpowering for the dog. You know, we had that big piece of meat go into the microwave, a little shrinkage in there, come back out nice and small. But we wanted to taste those flavors. Didn't really get that with the pickle coming through. So yeah, I'm gonna say it's a bit of a miss for me today, folks, but we're... If you just have the meat, mm. okay. Yeah, but you all feel pretty good. Well, you know, they have it. It's a 50-50 chance. Okay. Those are bold odds. <laughs> bold odds. All right, so let's, uh, thanks so much, Brady. I appreciate it. We'll see what happens, and let's see what the judges have to say about Blake. We're back with Blake. You know, the judges just gave Brady their uh, opinion. It sounds like he's uh, strong in the meat and pretty shitty in the buns. So um, I think that um, Blake is, you know, has a chance here. How are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. I think Brady and I uh, have some differences, and I'm excited to see which ones shine better for the judges. All right. Well, we'll hand them over to the judges. Thank you so much, judges. I've put a lot of love into this. Looking forward to trying it. So I'm already missing the pickle. All right. So, but it's, yes. um, this looks more moisturized. Yeah, talk to about through your okay. okay. as they're talking about. Mm. They have a problem with mustard. And we get two. One each. Yes. Bigger. I, better. Yeah, I am actually. It is nice that they got our order number right. There are two judges. They should make two hot dogs. Yeah. So well, Blake does actually get points for that. You know, give the people what they want. They need two hot dogs. Thank you. We're going to see, though, if, how this bun is looking. Cheers. Can we cheers our dogs? Yeah. Are you nervous? Pretty nervous. I'm hoping they're really okay. liking my buns. Mm -hmm. I can taste the plastic. Mm-hmm. I 
I'm getting a lot more plastic than duck fat. Yeah, this goes against my morals. Are you, you, the casing? Yeah. Yeah, I'm casing a little bit of the casing left over. Hmm. But, however, the bun. Bun's better than braised stuff. Seems a little bit better. Clearly. Um, you were very good at eating the bun, uh, the dough. Oh, it is. Better the dough. It's, um, it's a completely frozen tater tot. It's an American delicacy. It's that's meant to hot dog cold. Mm -hmm. It's hot. delicious, yeah. It's a, this nice balance of cold and hot. Mm. Oh, see, Andrew likes the, the top finish. I'm surprised he likes these top We've had a chance to taste the dog. What is your final consensus on Blake's dog? Blake's dog was all right. We got a little bit better bun. More moisture in the dog. More moisture in the dog. Slice too. down my throat way easier than brace. Yep, good. Slice down your throat. Do you think that was the excess ketchup or because... Yes. Yeah, I see I'm a little... And the duck fat. There was only one was... sauce. Mm. You think there was also the cheap? duck fat butter in the... In plastic. the latex too. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, Andrew, is your final hard. consensus same thing? It's going to be a hard decision here today Very hard. because... Extremely hard. So, so hard. I mean, basically, we're looking at two things that are pretty similar here today, folks. Not a lot of generic stuff between these generic hot dogs that somehow generically appeared out of nowhere. They're pretty similar. Um, okay, so what's going to be the absolute deciding factor? Mm. Is it going to come down to the pussy? I yeah, think I think it's going to be a... We're gonna have to see what El Gato. El Gato. Uh, All right. You've heard it. It's a really, really, really super tight contest. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, we have come down to the very culmination of this first last event ever. And the judges are ready. Let's hear from the judges. Who is the winner of the key player, Great Bake Off? It was tough, but it's gonna be Blake. Oh my goodness. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations, Blake. Oh man, you know what? At the end of the day, I think those those puns of yours really did pay off, you know? Congratulations. Congratulations. Fantastic. <laughs> My dad's going to be upset. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about that. Well, folks, on behalf of the Pen15 Network, thanks for tuning in. Don't think we had enough viewers this year, but, uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning in. On behalf of the Pen15 Na Network, thanks for tuning in to the Great Key Players Take Off! <laughs> That was incredible. That was the key player bake off. Just tremendous. We got something else coming up for you. I am so excited. It's IFHT making shitty crafts for 18 minutes. They are incredible. We're excited to have them on the telethon. They are amazing. I want to share something with you real quick. I am wearing the Pit Viper Purple Rain. And I want to talk about the packaging for a second. You don't just get the sunglasses from Pit Viper shipped to your house as like it is on your face. That wouldn't make sense. It comes in a beautiful packaging. They do an incredible job. It's durable. It's beautiful. There's so many amazing things on here, little tidbits, information. Best when used for, I'm not going to read them all off. Listen, I'm here to tee up the next segment, which is Shitty Crafts by I effing hate this. I'm not gonna say the word, Spencer. He said it, I'm not, gonna, no. I'm not gonna say the naughty word. So, why we have a moment, first off, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the telethon. Please tell all your friends, all your social media, do your Instagrams, your MySpaces, get up on the interwebs, tell them all. Tell them all to join us. We're not going anywhere. We're just gonna keep the awesomeness going. I would like to bring in a very wonderful and talented human who works here at Pit Viper. Please come on in. Did you say your name was Lexi? It sure is. Incredible name. Please come up, come up. This is yours right here. This is your space, my space, our space. Where are you from, Lexi? I'm originally from Maryland. Originally from Maryland. Now you're dedicated to living in Salt Lake City 
fully involved and invested in the Pit Viper lifestyle. Is this correct? That is correct. And what is your job title here at HQ? I am managing servicer. Managing servicer. And what does that entail? I like to service customers the best way I can. <laughs> That's great. And I noticed you're wearing the new flight optics. Yes, I sure am. Those are gorgeous. They fit you incredibly well. And what's different about the flight optics as opposed to the purple reins that are 69% off that I'm wearing right now? Well, the style is slightly different, kind of bigger. Two lenses, double the trouble. Double the trouble. And what exactly does your job entail? Well, uh, usually customers hit us up, usually like to say hi, and I say hi back. Sometimes they have issues, but I service them. Okay. I want to get, and I may, be, I may be going too far here, do you get some difficult customers? Sometimes. Generally not, though. You get some upset mums and daddies? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I could see that happening. And how do you solve those? Let's do a little role playing here. I'm going to be an upset father. Okay, and, and I just want to see how you handle it. Is this okay? Yes, let's go. All right, Lexi's game. Here we go. I'm going to pretend I'm calling you, all right? Speaking of calling, we're still taking calls. This is a telethon all day long for the next 69 hours. Going into tomorrow and to Wednesday, we'll be taking calls. We need pledges. We need contributions. All right, here we go. Ring, 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 ring. Hello? Is this Pit Viper? No, this is Pizza Hut. Come on, seriously, is this Pit Viper, the sunglass company, the sunglasses that my son had sent to the house? Yes, sir. Well, I have a question for you. He has been acting so different since he put his, sun, since he put his sunglasses on. He is running around. He's acting like he's David Lee Roth from 1986. What is going on over there? Oh, you know, once you put those shades on, you're a different person. Well, I don't know if I'm okay with it. Is Junior going to be all right? Oh, he sure will be all right. Let me tell you that. Okay, well, I noticed that it came with some things in the package he got. There was a ruler in there. It was a six-inch ruler. What is this about? Oh, it just measures things, fingers, other phalanges. Understood. I appreciate you taking the time and being so caring. Is my son going to be... Is he going to be safe when he's wearing these sunglasses? Is he going to get into trouble? Is he going to make, like, the wrong crowd? Is Are they going to be hanging out with him? Oh, no. Pit Vipers are the safest you can get. Z87 Plus rated. Dang! I didn't know that. Pit Vipers for the people. That was Lexi. She does an amazing job at her job. Thank you, Lexi, for coming out. I know you're very busy. She is actually at work today, and we appreciate you taking the time. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. And Godspeed. Godspeed, Godspeed. We're now moving on to IF. TP? HT. HT. I fucking hate I'm you. sorry. Damn it. Doing shitty crafts for the next 18 minutes for your viewing pleasure. God bless. Keep calling. Make those pledges. 69% off the Purple Rain, 31% off the entire site. Hey everyone, um, it's Cameron here. Cameron with an M. And today I'm gonna be making a gingerbread house uh, for the holiday season. So I got everything you need basically and I'll, and I'll run you through it so you can follow along with me. Um, it's pretty basic, really. You're gonna want your gingerbread kit. I found this in the back of a cupboard. Uh, I don't know really how old it is, but it's seen, it's seen some better days, but don't worry, I'll show you how to fix that. Moving on. Pipe cleaners, pretty self-explanatory. Corn dog. really, I just need the popsicle stick, but um, they didn't have any popsicle stick at the store, so uh, I'll just get some popsicle sticks from the corn dogs. Icing sugar. This is going to be the glue that holds the gingerbread house together. Glue. 
this is gonna be the glue that holds the, the house together. What else? Pizza. A lot of this is really just leftover Halloween candy. Um, my mom doesn't really let me eat it all in one go, so I have quite the stockpile. Moving on, um, I couldn't find any Rudolphs at the store, so I think these will have to do. Next one's pretty cool, actually. My Corvette collection. Gonna implement them into the house. Here you have Christian Bale. I couldn't find um, anything Christmas, 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 Christmas related at the store, so another bag of icing sugar. I don't think you're gonna need it, but good to have. Yeah, lots of little odds and ends that you're gonna wanna decorate your house with. I got tons of colors of trees. Um, ah, brick. Mm. Mm. Level. This is gonna what be what you want to check your measurements. Hammer. Um, I've never really been allowed to use tools around the house. We're gonna use this um, in a pretty crucial part of constructing the house. Um, safety glasses here. Very important. We are we're constructing, so we want to be safe. Cotton balls, very good for fake snow. And uh, chimney, smoke. Got a bag of cereal here. Um, now, pro, this is a pro tip, pro tip. This is what you're gonna wanna use for the shingles on your house. As you can see, I've already been pretty busy. Um, I've eaten a fair amount of corn dogs so far. Oh man, that was a big bite. That's a little corn dog. Secret ingredient. Oh shoot. Mustard. Mm. Oh god. Oh, mm -hmm. As you can see, we've had a casualty. That's been so stupid. But we're gonna make it work, don't worry. All right, let's get into it. All right, so you're gonna wanna open up your gingerbread kit here. Just be careful when you open up your gingerbread kit because as you can see, stuff can happen. All right, let's get it out. Let's get it on. Front of the house here. You can tell because it has a door and a window. It's a pretty nice home. Um, it's a lot nicer than where I live as you can, as you can tell. It's got a chimney for a fire. We don't have that here. So grab your bag of icing sugar and we're gonna wanna secure the front of the house to the base. There's mustard everywhere. So I don't have any scissors, um, but you can usually just give it a bit of pressure and, and, oh, come on. <laughs> come on, Cameron. Mm. So we're gonna secure the base. And what you just wanna do, just get it on the bottom there. <sighs> There's no such thing as too much. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Um, now a little secret I like to use is white glue. Got a little bit of icing on it. Ooh. Nope, that was glue. Oh man, I did not like that. So the side of my house fell apart in the opening of the gingerbread house. Um, it's a bit, bit of a broken home, I guess, but pretty used to that. It's kind of nice for the holidays though when um, I get to visit my dad. Grab your paintbrush, just give it a little dab. Mm -hmm. 
And I really like this activity because it's pretty easy. And you get to show it off at like family events. I just, I don't have any family events, I guess, so I don't show them off, but this is where the popsicle sticks really come in handy. And the lollipop um, has a stick too. I'm gonna get started on that as well. I should get more popsicle sticks. Apply some more icing onto the base. Okay. Now take out your pizza. Whoops. And we're gonna use that little decoration for the side here. This one time all I had to eat for a month was pizza. It's a pretty good month. Get my 67 Mustang here. Park that right up front. And as you can see at this point, it's looking like a house. Time to install the roof. Oh man, how the heck am I gonna do this? Oh frick. Oh man. This kid didn't come with instructions or a box, so it's a bit DIY today. We're gonna check our angles. I actually don't know how this works, so. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Other piece of roof here. And just balance that between your corn dogs. Ice it. Mm. Apparently these are really spicy. Oh God. I just really want to step in the middle. Mm. No, I'm out. Get your deer out. And we're just gonna put them right out front. This one's Lyle. I know you're wondering why I have this. I actually just wanted to add Santa to it. So I got one with a T-Rex. It's my favorite dinosaur. Unfortunately, it's in the snow globe. So we're gonna have to break it open. Now I recommend... What? I recommend getting out your safety glasses because this is going to be a little dangerous. Put your gingerbread house to the side. Don't worry about that. You're just going to want to give it a little tap. It's glass, so just a little tap and um, um, uh, no. Well, guys, um, looks like I broke my T-Rex. <sighs> I guess we're gonna go with Santa. Here we go, guys. Ah! So a little bit harder this time. What? Pretty easy, as you can see. You're gonna to wanna to bring back in your gingerbread house. The Santa's really gonna help bring it all together. Ah, glass everywhere. Yeah, so as you can see, it fell down a bit, but you can easily just one, two, three, put it back up. Where did the front go? Ah, okay. Watch out for the broken glass. You got this. Nice. It's starting to kind of look like my house, to be honest. All right, so now you're gonna to wanna to apply icing to your roof um, to have a ton of fun stuff on top to stick to. First things first, tree, and then cereal. And you're gonna to wanna to be pretty heavy handed with this. Mm. This is so much sugar, so late. 
my mom is not gonna like this. Now this part's really fun. These are what you're gonna wanna use for chimney smoke. You're just gonna wanna hold it there for like 30 to 45 seconds. <coughs> just like everything, ice it up, put it on. Yeah, these are gumdrops. And we're gonna use them as Christmas lights. But, oh, oh, there we go. And if you just apply a small dab of icing to each, they'll stick right on. About that much. Now you wanna get out your Christmas jawbreaker and start getting to work on that thing. We got some chocolate balls here. I love these things. Take your collection of popsicle sticks and we're gonna start building a fence. Pro trick here is to break them in half and to start stacking them around the outside. So as you can see, I've run low on popsicle sticks. Um, I'm just gonna keep going on these. Oh. It's frozen still, but we got our popsicle sticks. I guess they're more of corn dog sticks. Now, if you've been following along so far, you'll see that we've established a pretty nice house, but we got more to go, don't worry. I told my mom not to buy these at the dollar store. They're not as good quality. I'm just gonna lay down a base layer. <laughs> Let's get started on our holiday jawbreaker. Mmm. Got <clears throat> Almost forgot about our dots here. Mm. And really want to add these to kind of fill in the gaps around the gumdrops. I really like Tootsie Rolls. They remind me of summer in camp. I've never been to a summer camp. Holiday pipe cleaners. I like to coil them up and just put them on the roof. Kind of like how a spring would be on a roof. Yeah, that looks good. My mom didn't know I bought these the last time we were at the store. I snuck them into the basket. They're boogers. So crack open your box of boogers. Gross, right? One for me, one for the house. Mmm. 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 Those are good. Almost as good as real boogers. Remember our old friend icing sugar? Just a little bit on there. Now at this point you gotta be careful because you could add too much to your gingerbread house, but I actually think this year I went pretty light. I think my dream Christmas present is a dog or a cat, but I don't know how well they would do in our house. There's a lot of um, like fighting and arguments between me and everyone and the people I talk to in my head and stuff, so I don't know, maybe it would be okay. And really important through this whole process to, is just to keep a clean workstation. Oh, I almost forgot. Another jawbreaker. Mm. I could suck on this for hours. Mm. You can see a changing color right before your eyes. I love the holidays. Now this is gonna go great in your backyard. Never had a backyard, but if I did, I think it would look pretty similar. We're gonna put it right here. The moment you've all been waiting for, um, this is where the house is really gonna transform. You just really wanna be careful with this stuff. It's pretty messy. So just gently open it. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Pay close attention because I think this is where it really comes into its own. Basically what you're gonna wanna do is sprinkle this from a high elevation. Um, okay. Hold on. I haven't, hold on. I went a little heavy there, but I think it's pretty good. Might as well use the rest. As you can see, it was basically a blizzard this year. It's starting to look a lot more realistic now, I think. I love the snow. It's pretty much my favorite weather. And I know what you're saying. You forgot the hot dog. Nope, it's right here. You wanna get your bun, spread it open here, and then insert the wiener. A couple of brown balls here just really set things off. Bit of an insider tip. If you don't have any icing sugar or you're Italian, 
You can use Parmesan cheese as well. I think we're looking pretty good here. I might just get some other things here, one sec. Now, remember how I said we're gonna help get it to set? This is my secret weapon. I took it from my mom's bedside table. And this is really gonna help really apply that natural look to your gingerbread house. So by this point, um, your icing's probably pretty moist. So this is really gonna help it dry. You're gonna wanna get a good angle on it here and... Oh! Okay, so it's causing a bit of a mess. Um, but hold on, okay. So I'm just gonna put it down and clean this up a little bit. Hold on. Oops. Oops. Um, yeah, that feels pretty good. Hmm. What's that? Hmm. Oh no, no, oh no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Well, guys, thanks for joining me. Merry Christmas <laughs> and happy holidays. That was amazing. Coming up next, we have Tippy Time with Brett Tippy, mountain bike legend. You're going to want to stay tuned. And also, coming up this next hour, we have the money counters are going to be 69% off. I'm wearing them. And do you have shitty hair like I do? Get yourself over to shittyhats.com. What's this one say? Pipe layer. It's what I do. Honey, I'm coming home in three days after I'm done with this telethon and I'm bringing this hat with me. God, you're a hot woman and I love you. Thank you for letting me be a free bird and be here with the Pit Viper family. I'm having the best time of my life and I'm being a good boy. God bless, Tippy Todd, coming up now. Shaka Brada Kain. <laughs> And this is Tippy Time. We're here at Pit Viper and exclusively on the Pen15 Network. We're going to have some special guests with you today and uh, have some good conversations about absolutely nothing and everything all at once. Amazing, I know. Yes, we're going to have a gas <laughs> with all the athletes and artists in the building. It'll be um, quite along the theme that uh, we don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do it anyways. Yes, speaking of artists, do you know why artists like gasoline? Because it makes their Van go. <laughs> Do you know why you should never date an artist? Because they're sketchy. <laughs> All right, so I just uh, flew down here from Canada, and uh, the craziest thing happened. I was actually on the plane, and the stewardess was serving coffee, and we had some turbulence, and she spilled hot coffee on my lap. And I was like, ah! She goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was like, that's okay. Uh, but was that regular or decaf? And she goes, regular. And I go, oh great, now it's gonna be up all night. <laughs> and another amazing thing happened, actually, I was here coming into the studio, and I found a tennis ball coming over here. And I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I'll bring this home to my neighbor's dog. So I put it, you know, in the pocket of my pants, and I walked up, and I came to the stoplight. And there was a little lady there, and she looked down, and she saw the big balls in my pants, and smiled at me, and looked at the balls in my pants, and Maggie, you know, I could see what was going on. And I go, oh, <laughs> tennis ball. <laughs> and she goes, oh. That must be painful. I've had tennis elbow before. <laughs> we all have on the show in a little bit here, Emma Olufsen. And then as well is uh, a fast race car driver, uh, Tony Breidinger. Breidinger? Breidinger. Breidinger. Emma, I know she's good. She just won a contest in uh, Bellingham. And uh, I've seen her at Worcester Bike Park. Total shredder. Oh yeah, you know, she can whip it. She's got a big bag of tricks and uh, yeah, very, very fun girl. So, yes, it's going to be very good. And 
How do I look now? Is it way better? Way great. better? Okay. That's great. Now That's I can great. see better. Ugh! No, just kidding. <laughs> Beauty is in the eye of your holder. But I'm drinking um, an energy drink, as you can tell. Thank you for joining, and we will talk to you in a bit. Back after these messages. first guest we're gonna have a race car driver by the name of Tony Bridinger 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 <laughs> or something like that I don't know I heard she's fast anyways uh, without further ado I welcome to you Tony Bridinger <laughs> Pit Vipers don't look as good as you as perhaps these ones. Maybe you can switch for these ones, would you? But it's your choice. It's your choice. But I would try these ones because it just kind of goes with your um, sweater. Fit, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you want to look pro. You're pro, right? Exactly. Right, yeah. Okay, so we have much more. Much more pro. Yeah. There we go. You know what the difference between pink and purple? How, I don't understand, but... How grip you tight? How tight you grip? <laughs> On the steering wheel? purple? Yeah, you're, like the blood in your oh, fingers. I Like, oh, you're white knuckling it because you're like your knuckles right. Different between white and pink, white and purple. <laughs> Do you get scared? You squeeze tight and you're scared. Um, definitely. Like, I feel like when I'm driving, like I have to be like, okay, down the straightaway, like move your hands and breathe because I feel like when you're just gripping the wheel and your heart rates up and like you're just like tense. Yes. You can be like a little more chill. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So first of all, <laughs> you are a race car driver. I, you know, you're famous, but I don't really about I mean, you. I'm from the mountain bike world, the snowboard world, so I forgive, forgive me, forgive me. But uh, tell me who you are, where you're from, what you do. Okay. So, I am from the Bay Area. I was born in San Francisco and raised outside a little suburb area. So, my home track when I was growing up was Sonoma Raceway. They have a go-kart track up there, and that's how I got introduced to the whole world of motorsports. Uh, my dad was driving down the highway, saw this sign for go-kart In a go-kart? Yeah, in a go-kart. So I took my first go-kart class up there, fell in love with it, told my parents I'm going to be a race car driver. And when I was uh, 17, 18, I moved out to North Carolina and pursued NASCAR, and here I am. What do you do with your hair when you race? Um, usually like a little like low bun, ponytail situation, tuck it in just in case you catch on fire. You right, exactly. Hair, you know, any other examples? <laughs> Maybe some arrow action? Uh, oh, yeah, you have a windshield. Yeah, I have a windshield, so I'm all like just in the car, like yeah. locked in. Yeah, are you good? I mean, I'm my biggest critic, so I feel like I can feel like I can always improve. But I mean, I know I have to be like, good to get to the spot that I'm at. So right, right, right. You know, you know when you're a good race car driver. What's that? When you have splattered bugs on the side of your car. Wait, wait, knees out. Awesome. So you race go karts. Mm -hmm. You made it to NASCAR. Yes. How was it different as you thought it would be? Like, how was it different? The whole process was totally different. When I was little, I had this whole plan that I showed my parents, like, okay, I'm going to race this this year, and then this year I'm going to go race NASCAR. And, like, it totally, like, I did not follow that plan at all because life happens and nothing goes perfectly. Um, so in my mind, I was going to start racing NASCAR when I was, like, 18 years old. Like, I just had this, like, whole plan locked in place. Didn't work out like that, but it still kind of all worked out together. So, yeah. In a perfect world. Yeah. Yeah. What was your best results? My best results? I would say we got a lot of top 10s this past season. Ah, we winning. I don't know. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? Come on, pretty um, well. Okay. Um, I would say my best results this year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Did you say top 10? Yeah, I love that. Oh, okay. That. Okay, no, no, no. Just kidding. Okay. Go-karts or NASCAR? NASCAR. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right then. Okay. Just, just checking. Just checking. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> As you say. Um. <laughs> that got me all flustered. I got scared. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, I was like top ten season in Astros. Pretty solid. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And where was that at? 
Um, we got a few. Daytona was my first one. We started off the season. We were running in the top five, and then Daytona was just crazy last lap, and we got shoveled back to ninth. Um, but yeah, was shoveled back to ninth. What did you get up to? Um, I think like the highest spot that I was in, I was pushing my teammate who was leading. So we were like second, third, and then we what? Had, like, a green white checkered, and we got like chaotic. So that's amazing. Yeah, you yeah, are fast. <laughs> Although you went back to ninth. <laughs> anyway, that's okay. It's pretty good. Second or third is pretty good. So you're in behind your, your uh, teammate drafting? Yes. And what happened to go back to ninth? So, did you get bumps? Uh, yes, I did in the turn, which is like not the best place to go. And you're doing what, 190, 192 miles an hour? Yeah, like 190, yeah. 190.1? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe? <laughs> we don't have like a... Say yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> we don't have a gauge to say like the mile per hour, so it's kind yeah. of like... Yeah, you're, you're going on what they're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And where was your other best results? Um, I would say Pocono this year was another track that I was kind of happy about my results there. I think I got either eighth or ninth there, just because it's called the Tricky Triangle. So I was a little intimidated going there. Tricky Triangle because the, uh, the corners are sharp. Yeah, and it's most like tracks are kind of like an oval more so, and this is literally like, it looks like a triangle. Wow. Yeah. So it was. Did very, you have a cute car? Uh, a cute. Get it? A cute. <laughs> 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 yeah. My car. <laughs> my car was cute. You can shoot me if you want. No, 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 I deserve okay. it. I deserve no, it. I, I okay, I'm gonna shoot myself. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. And so where was that at? Um, that was in Pocono. Pocono. Yeah. Oh, that's a, what state is that in? Um, Pennsylvania. Okay. I think. Nice. Okay. I think it was Pennsylvania. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So if you could recreate the sound of your race car, what would it sound like? Um, like that, or is it more of like a like? What? 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 Um, I would say it's kind of like in between the two. It's like I'll do like a little restart. So like usually when I start, it's like okay, here we go. We have like four gears, so okay, gears. right? And downshift, downshift for me, please downshift for me. <laughs> Oh, because you're racing. There's no going slow. Yeah, exactly. So. Oh, okay. Shoot me, shoot me, I deserve it. Oh, in the face! You shot me in the face! I was like, I didn't shoot you in the face! Lucky I had my pit vipers on, that's okay. I would, I would like to um, to join you, like a, like a race car duet. Okay. So, like, go, make it, like, make it sound like your race car sounds, going through the gears, okay. and I'm going to join you. Because, you know what, I asked my wife if she would do a karaoke, yeah. and she refused, so I had to duet alone. So I would like to join you in a karaoke of race cars. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. So, okay. racers ready. On the line. Is it a gun or is it a is it a flag? What is it? Green flag drops. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna wave this bush and then we're gonna start. Okay. Okay, okay here we go. <laughs> racers ready. Start your engines, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. There's no flag yet. What are you cheating? Wait, You're cheating. Sure There's one rule, no cheating. Okay, here we go. Okay, wait. Here's the, here's the flag. Watch. I might spray with water. Okay. Go. Mm -hmm. In for a pit stop. Pit stop. We're going for a pit stop. Oh, pit stop. Yeah, okay. pit stop. Not the neutral. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go. I'm going to put you on the Go. Okay. Back in again. Get two fingers again. <laughs> Wow, I believe you now. You're not just saying that you're a restrained driver, <laughs> so you can be like cool in the press. What about crashes? Everyone crashes. What's the worst crashes you've ever had? What's the worst crash you've ever had? Definitely Talladega. Um, you fixed a Talladega too? I did. Do they race at night in Talladega or is it only in the day? Uh, yes. We race during the day. Okay, how come the movie's called Tal Talladega Nights? Um, is that like the lifestyle and more of like they were going I after? I think it probably is racing. Some tracks like don't have lights when they're like super big, like Pocono for instance. It's such a big track, they don't have lights going all around it. Okay, okay. So we had a bad crash there? Uh, yeah. Was that it was your fault or, or did you get bumped by somebody? That was, I got bumped by somebody, so. Oh. But, I mean. It's and were you doing like, 190 miles an hour? Yeah, I hit the wall pretty good. No was, way. Was, 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 were you okay? Was, 
Yeah, I was fine. It went by really fast. Like, I always envisioned hitting the wall at like 190 miles per hour would be a lot worse than that. And I was like, oh, that was it. Okay. So did you tag it on the back end, the front end, or in a grinder, or what? So it was through, they call it the tri-oval, which is like pretty mumpy, so you don't usually want to bump draft somebody through there, because the car will just kind of like... It's bumpy. Yes. Yeah, like in that area, so... They have speed bumps on this track. That's what it feels like. Yeah, right? right? Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what the guy that was afraid of speed bumps? Afraid? Yeah, he's slowly getting over it. Oh, I love that for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's bumpy? Yeah. Short corners? Pretty oh. like you're wide open Slowly. the entire time. Yeah. It's, yeah, and the triangle is bumpy. Yeah. How much did your head move from? So, so much head movement you have when you're in um, Talladega. Uh, Talladega, so like it's a little bit. I mean, you're pretty locked in. Like, you see. I'll do the wind. You do the bumpiness. Ready? <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Talladega, okay. 90 miles an hour. <sighs> <laughs> okay, bumpiness. Give us, give us the, give us the <laughs> Real, real. For five seconds. Okay. You're there. You're there. Imagine yourself. <gasps> little bit of rain. <sighs> <laughs> it was just a spit. It was just a spit. Okay. Okay. So we're trying to give our viewers an authentic, you know, yeah. uh, idea of what it's like. Okay. So then, how did the crash happen? Um, I don't even know what. I was trying to save it, which I should have just maybe just gave up at that point. But I was trying to save it, and then the car, like I think I went like backwards, like into the wall, kind of like driver's side a little bit, which wasn't fun. I just like hit the wall. And then at that point, the car was just like trash, so I was just along for the ride at that point. Whoa. Okay, show us how you hit the wall. Okay, stand up. <laughs> stand up. And like, you can stand up on the couch. Up on the couch. Oh, on the couch. Okay, I'm gonna throw you into the wall. Okay. Like, <laughs> make, make a face like you made when you, when you, got, when you hit the wall. You ready? Wow. Ah! Like, how many times did you hit the wall? Just once? Just once. Okay, okay, one more time. Slow wall, slow wall. Make a face okay. like you hit it. Right? One, two, three. <laughs> you were laughing? I, I was that's not what I We're going for realism here. Oh my god, you're winning everything. Okay, like make a face like you hit when you hit the car. Okay, but like you're focusing. Oh, head bump. Here we go. And. Oh, and I was like, oh shit. Oh, okay, no. Okay, see, that is authenticism. That's what we're looking for here. I love it. I love it. Okay. And do you sustain any injuries? Um. Not really, like a little bit of like a bruised ankle, soreness, like a little sore neck, back, all that, but nothing like intense. Did you know? I raced the next day. I was like, fine. Oh, you raced the next day. Yeah, I'm back. You're up. like a warrior. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a warrior prop? But then this is a sword, and hold it up like a warrior. Yes. <laughs> you are a screwdriver, so it's kind of like that, like right? Exactly. But like make it like a warrior face. Yes. Oh, you're okay. Now you're getting it. So you hurt your ankle, but you yeah. was it your gas foot or your uh, clutch foot? Do you have a clutch? Um, we don't use it. Really. You don't use it unless you're like. Um, yeah, you just get on the gas. It, yeah. yeah. Like well, you don't. Know, you're gonna use it. But. Right. Without your ankle, you don't want to leg stand on racing cars. That's true. Right. Yeah. Huh. I was a funny car. I thought you might hurt your arm or something because you're in the car and stuff. Yeah, but. I mean, like kind of sore, but I feel like once the drum hits, <coughs> then you don't really. You know what I mean? You Right, right. Did you hear about the guy that went to the doctor? And he says, doctor, I just want to do this. I just want to do this. I just want to do this. And he goes, well, don't do that. You have a broken finger. Oh. <laughs> um, and did you hear about the guy that went to the doctor? And he had, like, um, some salad up both nostrils. And, oh. and he had, like, a cookie in this ear. And he had, uh, um, you know, a piece of bread in this ear. Uh -huh. And the doctor looked at him and said, well, first of all, you're not eating right. That's true. That <laughs> Sorry, true. I couldn't help. I couldn't help. I'm going to switch classes just for that, just because I deserve it. Okay, so tell us about your diet, training, what you do to become this fast person that you are. Um, so, I train in North Carolina. We have like a training facility. And I usually train like five days a week, like depending on when we travel for races. But usually, like, not six days a week? Monday through Friday. And then I race on Saturday. Oh, okay, so you're lucky. Like, yeah, okay. All right, so. okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Pretty active. Um, That's using your head. Exactly. Yes. Um, and I'd say I try to maintain like a pretty healthy diet. I have a nutritionist that I work with. So we have like a meal plan for like race day and like day four, day after, so. Did you hear about the tequila diet? No. You only lose three days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried it. <laughs> well, so what is your weakness? Like, 
what is like? Are you a candy per, candy bar person? Like when you blow your diet, tell us secretly. No one will know. Yeah. Except for people, a million people out there. Yeah. And like when you blow your diet, how do you blow it? Are you are you like wolfing down pizza? Ah, I do like are pizza. you you do like pizza? I like pizza. Do you know the difference between um, a large pepperoni pizza and uh -huh. an aging pro athlete? And an aging pro no. A large pepperoni pizza can feed a family of four. What do you tell an AG Pro athlete on your front doorstep? I have no idea. Please. Hey, where's my pizza? <laughs> You'd be a fast pizza delivery driver, though. <laughs> Indeed, right? Yes. Okay. So, um, on the track, wrestling the steering wheel. Yeah. Can somebody say wrestling? King of Moons here with the Fair Fight Career Entertainment Network. You're watching the Teleton. Wrestling is like three doors on the right. We're not doing that yet? No, it's like right next to insults. Oh, come on. Well, you get on. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. <laughs> as we're saying, as you're wrestling the steering wheel on the, on the track, you're using your diet, you're using your training, you're using your experience. What else is left? Your car. Yeah. Do you have a fast car? I do have a fast car. And how much horsepower is in your car? Um, I would say like our horsepower is probably ranges between like the 600 and 700 range. What? But, yeah. Maybe don't quote me on that, but I'm like 99% sure. It's like around there. Yeah. How, how sure are you? <laughs> 100%. Okay, for a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So what determines, like 600 to 700 is a big difference, yeah. right? Yeah. Is it like the elevation? Is it like, does humidity make a difference? The temperature? Like, is there, is, are there limits to the horsepower you can use? Is the types of race gasoline that you, you, can, you, you, can, you can use? <clears throat> Sorry, wrong one. <laughs> um, so everything's pretty spec, so you really can't do much like engine-wise. So if you're gonna kind of work on your cardio faster, it's gonna be more of like a setup or any other situation. But again, there's like so many rules, you kind of have to push the envelope a little bit to find some speed out of your car. Okay, wow. So when you're going fast, do you feel the G's like coming back, like like pulling your face back? Like, can you like when you're accelerating and in the corner? Not like pulling your face back, but like pushing you in the seat. Like my first lap at Daytona ever in my entire life, I've never felt G forces like that, and I was like, am I gonna like throw up right now? Like in my car, I didn't. Come but, on, really? But I literally, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I. Did it feel like this? <laughs> <laughs> of the race car uh, no scenario and about your career and your diet. You never did tell us what the seat, that your weakness was. Um, I would say I love like a french fry. You like french fries? I do. Do you know where french fries were originally cooked? No. Where? People think it was in France, but it wasn't. It was in Greece. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this has been nice to have a nice word with uh, Tori Breidinger. 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 Yes. Breidinger. <laughs> You say it, I'll, I'll mouth it, and you say it. Very nice to have a word here with Tony. Brightinger. Like I said, Tony. Brightinger. Tony. Brightinger. Sing it, sing, sing okay. this one. Tony. Brightinger. Brightinger. I'd like to uh, now thank Tony. Brightinger. Brightinger. And then in, uh, introduce Emma Olifson. So, uh, yay! <laughs> Tony, Emmy, Emma, Tony. Hi. This is uh, Emma Olufsen and Tony. Brenger. 
<laughs> and uh, you're very uh, accomplished athletes, two different worlds. Hello, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you? You're very well, nice to see you. You too. Um, coming from different sides of the sporting spectrum, with a bicycle and an engine, you're very good, but she's faster than you because she has an engine that goes 190 miles an hour. You probably only go maybe up to maybe 40 miles an hour. So um, we decided to have her first and you're second. So I'm very sorry that you know, you're know you not as fast as her, but... Um, it's not all about speed. Sometimes slower is better. Yes, that's I what I said. Longer. Right, okay, perfect. That's, well, that's what I was thinking. And that's... Um, <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, <laughs> oh, um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, uh, I agree with you. <laughs> um, okay, so to all our guests out there, uh, Emma is from Whistler, uh, very talented mountain biker. I'm just joking, by the way. I, you're, you guys are both awesome. Um, but uh, I've seen you in the bike park. I've seen videos, videos of you in the bike park. You're a rad shredder. Like, um, you know... Uh, but I, I, I have to ask, you know, how did you get that good? And it, it, is it tough for both of you girls to be in the sporting world and not be attractive? Um, no, it, I kind of embrace like the crustiness and <laughs> I just love being dirty and gross. Like I didn't shower for like eight days one uh, week, like a month ago. Right, you have to respect and bacteria. Just, it's only yeah, culture some people have. Um, so you, you live the dirt bike lifestyle. Oh yeah. Yeah. Embrace it, love it, live it. Right. I can tell, like, like with your yeah. hair and stuff, it's... like, just kind of like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> can you give us a, a twirl? Nice. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, you two at the same time. Let's all walk together. Okay. On three. One, two, three. <laughs> Stand up, stand up, balance on one foot. Who can balance on one foot? Whoa, okay, who can stretch it out? What? I did it. Oh, you guys are athletes, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, no one gets the shot. I was, just, I was gonna see, if anyone fell over there, I want the good. shot. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You thought that was water, didn't you? Okay, you ready? <laughs> there we go next. <laughs> it's regular, not decaf. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so tell us, you're originally from Sweden? Yeah. And you live in Whistler? I live in New Zealand. But I was in Whistler for like two, three months this summer. Oh, okay. I thought you were from there. No. So you're, you're riding in Queenstown? Yeah. On big jumps? Yeah. Well, they're, they're big to me. Maybe yeah. not so big to you because like, you're awesome. But pretty big. They're pretty big? Yeah. How big are they? If I was this big? Then this is if I was this scale, big, okay, say this is scale like... Scale of one, two... One to like uh, 69. One to 69. Yeah, probably. So this is like, so like, okay, imagine I'm five foot 11 inches, and that's two measurements. <laughs> and I was just thinking, how big would the jumps be? So like two and a half times my height. Three times my height. Really? Come on, you're lying. I don't know. Are you? <laughs> I missed. Oh, I said I wanted a white t-shirt. <laughs> I want to get some of that pit bikers, right? Close your eyes. Whoa! I got you. Okay. Whoever has the wrong answer gets it. Okay. Okay. So, in Queenstown, yeah. hitting massive jumps. Yeah. Is that what the dream track is? Yeah. Dream track. You don't hit the dream track, do you? I've done it a few times. You've done the dream track? Yeah. Okay. So, for those track. that don't know, this is absolutely insane. The jumps are like gargantuan. Garg Hello. This is like. Uh, a lot live show. Hello. Uh, some guy in a suede jacket just came in. What is that? Like a homeless person. <laughs> and he's just gonna like set up lunch here. Like, hello. <laughs> Who's the guy in the suede jacket? I it's uh really uh really suede to see you. <laughs> hot dogs? Are we just having a random hot dog moment? I guess. Um ladies, what do you, do you know him? No, yeah. but I'd like to. All right, well, we're just we're randomly having lunch here. Is hot dogs one of your weaknesses? I can't say that I'm a fan of hot dogs. Okay, awesome. So anyways, um, we're just going to move along here. Um, how many hot dogs have you ever eaten at once? He has like eight. I put seven in my mouth earlier. 
That's... Or maybe A. Can you stick your fist in your mouth? I can. I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. <gasps> oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, how many? How, can you stick your fist in your mouth? Let I me mean, just, just like, come on. <laughs> open up, open up. Come on. <laughs> 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 yep, she can stick my uh, fist in my mouth. Okay, here we go. Let's see if you can do it. <laughs> 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 Pretty good, okay. Hot dog jokes are the worst. The, the bread worst. Worst, bread worst? Yeah. Oh, she gets it. Indeed, okay, so that's pretty good. <laughs> so, you're riding in New Zealand, you're hitting big jumps, you're from Sweden. Yeah. How long have you been training to get as good as you are? Uh, and first of all, how good are you? Uh, intermediate. Are you, would you say you're like, ah, or ah, like if this was a good scale, <laughs> would you be like, ah, ah, or like, ah. Uh, Uh, yeah, at uh, like trail riding, I would say. Uh. You trail riding, you're like ah. Uh. But but like, but like at jumps, you're like ah. Uh. No, I'm like ah, uh, but like ah. Uh. Right. Okay. You know, huh. you can. That's pretty specific. It's really hard to be ah. Uh, I don't know who's ah. Uh. Right. In your race car driving career, yeah. would you say you know what are your strengths and weaknesses? What's your strength? What's your weaknesses? I guess I would say it kind of like depends on the track. I would say probably like the super speedway racing was like really new to me, so just like that was probably more difficult. But like on the short tracks, I feel like that's more what I grew up on. So, so on the short tracks, would you be like ah oh, or ah? Oh. Um, I feel like an ah uh, like that. And on the fast tracks? Um, I would say like a little like ah. Uh, just say I have like a lot. <laughs> that's the same. Just like a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, you're very funny too. See how funny too she is? Yeah. yeah okay. Huh. Okay, interesting. So, you're from Sweden. What is your background? Do you have a BMX background? And no. does your BMX background have a BMX background? Uh, I have a background of liking BMX boys. Uh-huh. Cut-offs, metal, sick shit. But I never rode a BMX. Okay. Um, I used to work as a makeup artist back home. Okay. So that's my background. Uh -huh. What? Yeah. Really? That's a, that's a different background. Yeah. You do not have a BMX background, you have a makeup background. Yeah. Then who applied your makeup? Who did what? Who did your makeup? Uh, I did. Makeup, makeup, we need a redo here. No, I'm Actually, kidding. I need to retouch my lipstick. <laughs> right? It's all over your fist. And then you get a little highlight in your hair? Yeah. <laughs> We're highlighting your hair because some hairs are more important than others. <laughs> yeah. Highlighted pink. Right? Okay, I don't have a color pink, but I can I can wet it down and I can make it look darker. <laughs> okay, a little bit of tussle. Mm. Oh, oh, way better. Okay, so how does someone with a makeup background get so good at sending it up big jumps and going fast and carving corners and doing all those things you do on a bike? Uh, ride with the boys and uh, send a, I think I just started riding with my brother. And he kept pushing me, and he's like, "Do this, do this, do that." Is uh, your brother your stepbrother? Uh, no, my real brother. Your real brother. Yeah. And but, he must be good too. Um, I don't know. Actually, he hasn't ridden bikes for like three years. So you're better than him. Are you better than him? Yeah. If, this, this will be on air. He'll see. He'll hear this. I'm gonna. He's gonna come to Queenstown and see me in like January, and so we'll oh see how God. good or bad he is. Right. Yeah. And all your friends that you used to ride with, are you better than them now? Mm -hmm. That you've been like hammering time in Whistler and Queenstown. Well, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Does it like feel cool? Calvin, I think I'm better than him. He's just been cruising all winter. Is he ah uh, or ah? Uh, He's like, uh. right? <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like, like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> You're better than your brother, yeah. hopefully. You're better than your friends, and that's only a punishment. That's a punishment. You get punished again. <laughs> Anyways, you have to do the next shot. Okay, you ready? You ready? If she does something bad, shoot her. Okay. And right in the mouth. Okay. okay. So, um, who aren't you better than that? Uh, like, who, who from your old school, who's better than you? You. But I am not better than you. Yes. 
Well, maybe it's steeps. Maybe. <laughs> but I've been doing it a long time. That's all I can do. I can't jump. You're better than me at jumps. For sure. I've seen you send it. you got the nice style. Thanks. Now, you just recently won a big contest in uh, Bellingham. Uh, yeah, I won their Rider's Choice Award at Hang Time. <laughs> and uh, did you cheat? No. Did you pay somebody off? No. You won I a fair and square? I don't have any money to pay anyone off. Okay. Ooh. Now you do. Hmm, who am I going to pay off now? The judges. You want some too? <laughs> sure. You can pay off maybe the, the scorekeepers. There you go. And the rest is for my um, LA skiing budget. So, <laughs> yeah. No, this is the first telethon. <laughs> for purely profit, right? <laughs> so, so you're saying that you didn't pay off the judges. No. You I didn't pay off. I think it's the riders. It was judge. Yeah. So you paid everybody? No. I flirted with everybody. Oh, hey, well, like, flattery will get you everywhere. Uh, I'll vote for you if you vote for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, tell me, that, tell, me, tell me again. Use that voice again. <laughs> I'll vote for you if you vote for me. Okay, say it again and you mouth it. You mouth it, you say it. You say it and you, you mouth it. Go, go, go right behind her. You, you come in front and you go right behind her and you say, you mouth, I'll vote for you if you vote for me, but you have to say the words. On three. One, two. If you vote for me, I'll vote for you. Um, so, what kind of a track did you have and what, how was the format and what, it was like a jam session? Uh, yeah, so it was a women's uh, jump jam. We wrote Blue Steel in Bellingham. Like kind of... Blue Steel? Yeah. Give us your best Blue Steel face. Give us your best blue steel face. I don't know what blue steel is. Here, look at her. She has a good blue steel. Wait, it's like a duck face? Yeah. Well, but yeah, kind of, but a little more serious. Ben Stiffler. Ben, ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. <laughs> ben Stiller. Stiffler? <laughs> Those are two different characters all mixed together. That's like mixing the athletes together. Like if we were all mixed together, like put an arm through here and an arm through there, like, like a twister. <laughs> uh, 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 a Brett Stiffler. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Twister. This one goes there, this one goes there, there, <laughs> there, <laughs> there, there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, inside voice. Inside voice. Anyways, so um, back to your blue seal. Give the blue seal, you do blue seal, and I'll do a blue seal. Ready? We have the same time. It's like a, wait, wait, move over, move over. I'm gonna do a, uh, we're going to do a blue steel wave. Okay, ready? Look to the right or to the left? Which way do you want to look? This way? Okay. okay, I'm gonna go and then you're gonna go and then you're gonna go. Yeah. Blue steel on three. One, two, three. Oh, wow. <laughs> Who's the winner? Who's the winner? <laughs> One more time. Okay, okay, here we go. Blue steel on three. One, two, three. Ooh, wow. I don't know. <laughs> this is very close. <laughs> might be it. it might be tied between the girls. Tip it. You might need to Okay, shoot me, energy. shoot me, shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's oh, you're shooting okay. blanks, eh? See you right now. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. That'd be a really good guy. Nice shot. Oh my god. So yes, shooting blanks, aiming for the head. Hey. Yeah. And uh. Um. Really quick, I reserved this room. Um. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna like wrap up soon, but I do. Oh, there a meeting? Yeah. No, you can just have a meeting right there. No, we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll just be here just, uh, doing a live TV show is all. It's in like five minutes. Um, it's the Pippi for Spaghetti Committee. So it's a really important meeting. Um, I We're talking about meeting. eating pasta, smoking rasta, going pasta. Do you want to be, do, would you like to? Well, we, maybe we can all have the meeting, meeting together. We can have the interview and the meeting together. So yeah, feel free to come back in five minutes. We'll be, we'll be ready. Are you yeah. ready for a meeting? Yeah. Yeah, you ready for a meeting? Look, yeah. Interview, yeah. meeting. We're doing it all. Can you do it all? Yeah. I, we can do it all. Can you do it all? I can do it all. Okay, we're going to have a okay meeting. Yeah. One thing that I would like to request there was like a. Please come back in five minutes and we'll do it all together. Okay, there's, how much is going to cost? There's one more couch that was missing here. I don't know what you guys did in here, but if you guys could just like put that couch back, you guys can totally join the spaghetti committee if you want, if you have something. I think the couch got smoked. Did you make the couch? I'll buy it. Okay, I got it. I got you. Here, we'll keep for the couch, and uh, we're ready for a meeting, and uh, just just take the glasses off and I'll wear these ones. They're exactly back. the same. <laughs> Perfect, right? Um... It's like, uh, we have hot dogs in here, and like, okay. I thought that was the meat in already well, happened. Four minutes and 20 seconds, the meeting commences. Four minutes and 20 seconds, okay. Yeah, here. Perfect, okay. Can't wait for the meat to come in. Right. Okay. Where's the beef? Uh, well, 
Okay, so we're gonna have the uh, rest of the interview at high speed. So we're gonna play it fast forward. <laughs> secret of about your weakness what's something embarrassing in your fridge what's your weakness are you a chocolate fiend are you a cheese fanatic what's something that you will only reveal to us <laughs> okay well that's all the time we have for today um thank you very much ladies <laughs> emma Uh, this has been Tippy Time here at the Pit Viper um, for profit telethon. Please send your money. We need more of it. We always need more. And uh, thank you very much for coming out. There's uh, a little bit for you, a little bit more for you. Please do something with your hair. There's some money for your hair. And uh, so long. And thank you for all the marbles. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Say bye. Goodbye to me. Goodbye to them. You got this, Emski. You got this. You're gonna, you're gonna interview these people. You're gonna wow everybody. You got this. You got this. Just pump yourself up. You're in a fucking porta potty. Pump yourself up. Get up there. Yeah. What? We're reporting live from the Salt Lake City Farmers Market, and we're gonna find out just how produce does. All right, guys. We're here at Horny Guys Kettle Corn. We're gonna try to find out. Just how kettle corn is made. You guys have a few minutes to show me how it's made. Can I come over and watch you make it? All right, guys. So we're here at Horny Guys Kettle Corn, and they're making some serious kettle corn. Glaze that I put in there and just stir it all together, and as it pops, when we're done, we put it in the screen, get all the little crappy stuff out of there, and finished product, and serve it up. How long does it take to stir it? Three minutes a batch. Three minutes a batch, and how much popcorn? Um, so it'll be like three large bags. She's doing over there. And how many bags of popcorn have you ever eaten in a single sitting? Just one? Yeah. Do you think that's a safe number? Yes. Bag of popcorn a day, and you'll feel quite full. <laughs> so what different flavors do you have? So we have two. We have a sweet, salty kettle corn, and then the dark one is caramel. Caramel corn. Yeah. Oh, boy, I see it's starting to pop. He's got to get in zone. So as the corn pops, do you have to lock it and drop it? Say that again? So if the corn is popping, do you got to lock it and drop it? Oh my goodness. It's like a war zone in there. It is. So I can turn the, the gas off. It just keeps popping from the heat on the kettle. So how many batches have you stirred up? In 18 years, I have no idea. <laughs> Too many to count. Yeah. How old is this spoon? Um, I change it every... I usually go through two in a season. Have you ever heard of perpetual stew? No. Back in the medieval times, they used to keep stews going for yeah. tens, hundreds of years at a time. So the one that they keep throwing on the stove? Do you think you could do that with popcorn? No. <laughs> yeah, not going to work the same. It's going to get a little soggy. Do you have any specific toppings that are your favorite for popcorn? Um, white cheddar. White cheddar? Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing better than cheddar. Uh, and I 
can't do that here because we don't have any power, so I don't have a tumbler. Uh, so uh, here we just stick strictly with sugar pop. Yeah. So 18 years of popcorn, man. And I and I can't claim the business my brother started it. So, yeah. But one of them, I'm out. Yeah. A few years later, my, I'm out. So. <laughs> and then it'll be on to the next popcorn king. Yeah. <laughs> or daughter. <laughs> or daughter. Or queen. Yes. Well, thank you f so much for showing us your popcorn empire. We'll let you get back to business as usual okay, no problem. and thank Have you so weekend. much you too all right one more question okay in the current political environment do you think popcorn has the power to unite us absolutely who doesn't like popcorn and that's the way the colonel pops <laughs> that's nice all right we're here at the informational booth trying to find out some more about what you can do at the farmer's market. Hello, oh, how are you doing? I'm with Pen15 Network. We're doing a little spot <laughs> on the farmer's market. Great. I was wondering if I could talk to you guys there about what market. the farmer's market is all about. Yeah, who are you with again? Pen15 News Network. Okay. We're just all looking right. for general info. What, oh, sure. what is the farmer's market about? What is the farmer's market about? It's about local fresh food, supporting agriculture. It's about community. It's about um, starting new businesses, incubating new businesses. It's about helping people build um, you know, a life around something that they're passionate about. Um, it's about fun. And today it's about really cold toes. Really cold toes, guys. That's, <laughs> that's the main point of the farmer's market. How do you keep those toes warm? Um, if I were smart, I would be wearing better shoes. Um, and sometimes we use space heaters. But we have been really lucky. We've had great weather all season. So today was just like the kicker. So are you sad to see the farmer's market come to a close for the year? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's um, so much fresh food and fresh produce still, and we have been really lucky that we haven't had any late freezes. Uh, but luckily, in just two short weeks, we open up at the Gateway for winter market. Um, and so you're still able to get all the stuff you love really all season long. A lot of stuff holds, like apples, pumpkins, squash. It, it really will hold for months. Yeah. So we'll have a ton of fresh produce, really all the way through April. Do you save any of the produce from this year for next year? Do I personally? Yes. Um, they used to call me the canning queen. I like to put stuff up in jars. Oh, what's, what's your favorite thing to jar? Tomatoes. Tomatoes, and I make chili sauce, and I make salsa, <laughs> and I'm my own grandma, basically. Do you sell any of it at the farmer's market? No. It's, um, Why not? Because it's really, really, really hard work. And what you should know is that when you pay a little bit extra for a jar of food here, it's because someone worked really hard to bring it to you. You heard it here first. Yeah. Working really hard to bring it to you at the farmer's market. When your canning is all done, you don't celebrate in some way? I might sit down and make a really strong cocktail. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, like, the process of canning? The process of canning. Um, well, first you start in May and you buy some tomato plants and then you plant them and then you pray that they don't die and then you harvest them in like let's say august if you're lucky and then you get all your jars and you get all your stuff and it takes like 14 hours and um, at the end of it you have a lovely thing that you put up on your own and you're very proud of and lovely and when you give it to someone for christmas they are really honored that you would put love and and sweat and tears into that product how many jars do you make um, in the olden days, I would do like 300 jars of various things. Wow. Yeah. Nowadays, I only do a couple dozen because I have kids and a life. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> well, someday they're going to jar me up, and we'll see where I go. Keep me pickled. Can I ask you guys about your beef? We're here at the grass-fed beef tent, learning about how feeding beef grass 
Makes beef better. Better beef. How you doing? Good, how are you? I am good. I'm with Pen15, and we are here just finding out more about the farmer's market, and I was wondering what goes into making your beef what it is. So we do quite a few things that help to both improve the environment and the health of the cow, because we believe that healthier, happier animals make healthier, happier people. So we have been a regenerative, a regenerative ranch for about 20 years now. So we work on improving soil quality as well as the environment. Um, the ranch is currently a fourth generation cattle ranch with three generations actively working on it. How many cows are on the ranch? Currently we have about 600 head. 600 cows? Yes. How do you even keep track of them all? Do you know all their names? <laughs> Not all the names individually no but we do have a couple that we do know um we we'll start with tag number usually but then we'll name them um but just ones that stand out uh the herd is divided into three different groups which is how we keep track of them uh the grandparents are in charge of the home herd um aunt and uncle are in charge of anthro and then rick and stacy who are my boss are in charge of cottonwood oh boy so with so many cows on the farm how do you manage that amount of poop so it actually helps a lot it's ground into the ground um, which helps the soil and then we have a few different tactics so we do rotational grazing so we fence off small pastures at a time and move them periodically um, usually at least once a day to keep both the environment not overgrazed as well as the cows eating the healthier stuff and it actually helps the grass grow faster and better um, as well as it helps keep that from being a huge problem. Oh yeah. Is there a certain species of grass that cows just go crazy for? Well, cows do tend to like alfalfa mixes, but it does also tend, and horses do as well, but it tends to make them a little more rambunctious, which can be a problem, but we grow... Rambunctious? Um, what does a rambunctious cow look like? Jumping over the fence, usually. You've seen a cow jump over a fence. Yes. Have you seen a cow jump over the moon? No. It's really hoping there. <laughs> In a single year, how much beef do you actually make? I'm not entirely sure on that one. I've it must be a lot. It is quite a bit. We do sell, we've been selling out a lot this year. Um, I do know that on any given week, we can sell anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds of ground beef alone, and we're able to keep that in stock. So. A little estimate. What are your top 10 cow names? The ones that I can remember, we had one that we named Little Mean Cow. So it was this tiny little cow. She was the most aggressive. She would hunt you down. Hunt you down? What do you mean by hunt you down? She would know when you weren't looking and slowly sneak up behind you until there was a position. I remember one, the Uncle Nils had to like run around a tree to avoid getting ran over by her. Now how big is this cow? She was the little one. She was like um, yay tall. Just a couple hands. Much smaller than any of the horses, but she did not care. Was she the alpha of the group? Uh, of that herd, probably. At least the females. So, you said earlier, you only really give names to the cows that stand out. What makes a cow stand out? Uh, either behavior, sometimes really cute patterns. Um, they have brockle face with white um, patterns on their face sometimes. Sometimes we'll name them. Now, I've heard that cows have best friends. Is this true? Sometimes. There are definitely cows that will be closer to other cows. Different friends. And like the show steers, you chain with them to be friendly, and the bottle babies are super friendly. So you can definitely get friendly cows. And lastly, I know they allow support animals on airplanes. Do you think they'll ever allow someone to have a support cow? We can always hope. We can always hope. What's the best cow joke that you know? I don't know if I know any good cow jokes. What do you call a cow with no arms and no legs? I don't know. What do you call Ground beef. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. We're here with beef. Beef, what do you got to say? Yeah.
Did you guys film that? Oh, come on. You know, it was just another average day at the farmer's market, and then tragedy struck. Jake, do you remember what happened? The tragedy. At the farmer's market? At the farmer's market. I heard something, something bad happened at the farmer's market. We're gonna find out. What do we got here? This is a pot of gold. This will the pot of gold. Heat the whole though. This is a mild salsa. It's a mild. queso fresco, Peruvian pepper dip. This guy wants heat. This guy wants heat in the hole, man. He's gonna Ooh. Get what he asked for. Yeah. He's gonna get the Carolina Reaper right here. Oh, I'm gonna die. Yeah, probably. Here we go. But it'll be fun. <laughs> I'm about to die. Reaper. Oh, that has a kick. <laughs> this is good stuff. Oh, my hole is so hot right now. Woo! <laughs> How many holes do you hurt on a daily basis with your hot, hot sauces? How long have you guys been making hot holes? Uh, two years now, just over two years. So, with salsa. Anyway, just over two years. Yeah. <laughs> just to specify. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is your personal favorite that you've made? Personal favorite, probably the tomatillo verde. Eat it every day, basically. Owning a salsa business, you eat salsa every day. That one's probably my favorite. What is the difference between a tomato and a tomatillo? Uh, to well, it's a different plant. But different it's still a tomato. Yeah, it's just a tomatillo. It's like they're cousins. Yeah, they're cousins. Kissing cousins. Gross. Is it a fruit? Uh, is tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Don't ask me that. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I'm bad. Yeah, this I'm bad with that. Yeah. That's a lifelong debate. I think man. it's a toss. -up. So is this a fruit spread or a vegetable spread? It's. Uh, it's. Uh, it's whatever you're buying. What are you We're buying? never gonna know <laughs> what this is. Is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Does anybody here know? Is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Oh, it's totally a fruit. Tomato is a fruit. Not a good taste. Is tomato a fruit or a vegetable? I think it's technically a fruit and it tastes like a vegetable. Tastes like a vegetable fruit. Do you guys want some salsa? They don't like fruit. They don't like fruit. It tastes like vegetables. Yeah. Confused fruit masquerading as vegetables. Excuse me. Is tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Uh, we're just ha we're discussing this right now. What's your answer? The well. Because vegetable is not a scientific classification, I think. It is it? it what? Well, is it a legume? No. No. Definitely not so, a legume. So vegetable is like, it's helpful if you cook, it's helpful to know what's vegetable now, but it's not, there's no clear boundary. So I think a tomato is not a fruit and it's not a vegetable. Then what is it? <laughs> what is it? It's, it's a weird in between thing. It's a weird in between, in -between thing. Yeah. I think in between. It's probably a fruit. It's its own thing. It came from space. It's a solanaceae. So, solanaceae? I think so. I've never heard of that before. It's, it's the type of plant that potatoes, tomatoes. Oh yeah, I guess those are still, those are in the same sort of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Man. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Do you guys know? I, I'm sorry, I have no idea. <laughs> We're just doing a little, you know, spot on the farmer's market. Trying to figure out, you know, the hard questions. Is it tomato or tomato? Is it a fruit or a vegetable? Will I ever find my way home? Maybe we'll find out. I'm live here at the farmer's market and nobody wants to talk to me. Would you like to talk to me? Sure. Yes. So how's the farmer's market going for you guys? We just got here. Like, <laughs> just, just now. No yeah. way. Is this your first time ever at the farmer's market ever? We've been here before, but we got here like five minutes ago. Yeah, we oh, woke man. up late. <laughs> so what are you guys trying to find? Korean bakery called Not Korean right now. <laughs> oh, oh, not right now. So we're gonna go to um, try the kombucha. The kombucha? The booth? Yeah. Where's the kombucha booth? True kombucha. Can I come with you? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's kind of Let's fun. go get some kombucha. Uh, My name's Emski. What's your name? I'm Charlotte. We should Charlotte? be friends. Yes, we should be friends. <laughs> I'm Hannah. Hannah. Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. We're roommates. Yeah, we're oh, roommates. nice. <laughs> you go to school up at the U. At the U? Awesome. Yeah. That's where I went to school. Really? Yes. Oh, really? Wow. You know, it's a great place. Big university, lots yeah. of learning. What are you guys going to school for? I'm studying strategic communication and minoring field. Oh, man. Yeah. What about uh, you? I'm in international studies and sociology and minoring in Chinese. My goodness. <laughs> so much smarter than me. <laughs> I studied making videos. Wow. I mean, that's Pretty much. Video. That's, yeah. yep. You know, it, it really worked out, you know? Yeah. So, are you guys regulars of the farmer's market? 
<laughs> and what is your favorite thing to get here? Is it the kombucha or is it something else? Bread. Bread? From where? I, for, I always forget what it's called, but I always go. <laughs> Do you have a favorite kind of bread? I don't know. I'm just a very carby girl. So would you say that restaurants should put out bread baskets? Yes. Yes. What is yes. Bread if, a, if a restaurant has a bad bread basket, the rest of the food's never good. Oh. Yeah, you might as well leave right yes. then. Yeah. 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 You don't know what a bread basket is? I don't know what that is. You, I mean, I feel like this is a really it's 90s thing. Korea. Yeah, oh, okay, think, yeah. okay. <laughs> Wait, how long have you been here? Nine months. Nine months? It's been ten months. Ten months? Yeah. Man, how are you enjoying it? Um, People are nice. In Utah, they're all nice. And I made a good friend, so... I'm so happy. you guys didn't know each other before? Yeah, I didn't know her in no. spring. Oh, we wow. met um, yeah. fall We semester. just met because we're roommates. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I went to the Capitol Reef uh, during the fall break. Yeah. Do you know where that is? Oh yeah. 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 It's beautiful it was, down it was there. So beautiful. It was my she first thought, time. She was in a game simulation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it real? Um, it felt real. <laughs> it felt real. You know, everything kind of feels real sometimes. So, kombucha. I don't even know what it's made of. I know there's living things in it. How do you guys feel about that? I, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's good. I, I guess they do good things, don't they? Yeah. They're like little bugs, I don't right? Know where they are, then. I've always yeah, been very confused. Wait, I thought they were supposed to be right here, but they're not, so that's really awkward. Well, oh no! We have a <laughs> kombucha's gone. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> How does it make you feel that they're not here? Um, it's okay. The guys that opened it are my brother's friends, so it's okay. I don't know where they are. <laughs> they gave me their business card, and I left it in the car. <laughs> My bad. It's all good. We all make mistakes. Yeah, she saw it. Yeah. You saw what? The card the in car, my the car. card. You did? Yeah. I leave it in there in case I ever feel like I want to drink some kombucha. <laughs> yep, just in case. Yeah, just, just in case. Well, is there anything else here? We'll, I will literally buy you something. Wow, really? We will buy you something. Wow, really? really? Pen 15 oh, Network. We'll buy you something. What do you? Real? That is real. Oh do you want God. some produce? Do you want something to eat? Let's, I want some apple cider. Let's get these. Let's get these people some apple cider. Yeah, we do. You know, come and cover where people are, what they're doing. The haps of the world. That's how come no one wanted to talk to you. Nobody wants to talk to me because I look weird. No. <laughs> you know. Yeah, cool. I look cool. You heard it here first. I'm cool. All right. Is this a cider? Yeah. Let's let's get some cider. Apples are really good for it. We need some cider. We got cider. Rooms? Right down there. How many would you like? Uh, we need two ciders. Yeah. Did you want slushies or cider? Oh, do you want slushies or do you want actual bottles of cider? These are six. Those are eight bucks for them. Yeah, what do you want? But those you have to buy. I'll have slushies. I'll have a slushie. Yeah, we'll do two slushies. Cider slush. And this is a first for you both. No, I've had it. You've had the slushie before? I come here like every year, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> so you're an avid farmer's market enthusiast? Maybe. Maybe? Just a little? Yeah, I think so. I think I think my boyfriend would say so. <laughs> I always that's drag him gonna, here. That's gonna be Thank you. Yeah. There's that for you. Oh, I'm so lucky today. Yeah. Yeah, aren't you glad you stopped and talked to this weirdo and then you get some free drinks? Well, what do you think? Let's do a review here. Review? Yeah. It tastes like apples. <laughs> what do you think? It's um, it's really sweet, but he said there's no sugar inside, so it's really cool. I really like it. 10 out of 10. 11 out of 10. Oh, of man. 10. Best cider in town. <laughs> awesome. Well, I don't want to steal your whole day away from you guys. Yeah. But I really appreciate you walking around and enduring us. No, it was fun. Thank you for this. Yes. Cider. Awesome. Have a good rest of the farmer's market. Have a good... <laughs> yeah! Hello, sir. Yeah. Do you mind if I do a little interview with you about Turbo Organic? So this is Pit Viper Entertainment Network 15. We're just doing some coverage of the farmer's market and what people are selling here. And Pit Viper's a huge fan of Turbo. And obviously we saw your booth and like what makes this stuff go? Alright. So the, the the 
hub of this. We've been making this by hand for over 30 years. It's our 11th year here at the market. And this is derived actually from my late science partner. Unfortunately, he passed on two years ago. But he developed this originally to feed soil bacteria to recover from toxic oil spills. And discovered by accident that it helped the plants immensely. So what was good for the bacteria, the soil, was good for the plants as well. So that's where how that started. But this is based in very dense plant matter that dates a dinosaur, very rich in a cornucopia of humic and fulvic acids. Uh, we researched about 1,500 varieties of sea kelp in the world, and isolated one comes out of the Norwegian coastlines. We mineralize it, own bioavailable iron we create, there's over 10,000 micronutrient compounds in this, and it works on all stages of development of plant growth, from microgreens, indoors, outdoor plants, to sequoia trees. Wow, and we, man. we guarantee results. Since we've been online in, in the U.S. Um, in the last 10 years, we've never had one performance complaint on the product. You know, when something goes turbo, it just can't go wrong. Have you heard of General Sherman? tree and uh, what is the Sequoia National Park? Yeah. I kind of think they might be feeding it some of this stuff. You never know. You never know. Yeah, they're slipping it in there. Yeah, they're just trying to say that he's all natural, but I don't know. I think he's getting a little help from the juice. <laughs> so obviously I'm sitting here. I really want to drink some of it because, you know, it seems like it might build me right up. Am I wrong? Uh, it's been known, uh, but I tried it once in 20 years, and I got, let's say, it was gastrically distressful, right? So I won't do that again. But it's not a human food, it's a plant food, but it's non toxic, safe for kids and pets. And so you could drink it. No, 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 I don't. That'd be foolish of me to recommend that. Work, but you <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I hear you on that one. Yeah. But I mean, I still want to drink it. No, please don't. Please don't. You'd have to sign a waiver. I like signing waivers. <laughs> Signed my life away. So many plants have probably used this before. Is there like a particular plant that does the best with this? Have you ever noticed <laughs> that kind of a thing? No. All of them. All of them. Every plant. In fact, it even will cross platform. We've used it for many years in hydroponics and aquaponics. The fish love it. A lot of commercial stuff will kill the fish. And so it's just, it's just, it's all around. I mean, there's, it's just, it's an amazing product, I must say so, even after all of these years. And we've got, um, real quick, so here's a picture of the hydroponics, right? This is romaine lettuce, 34 days from seed. It doesn't even look like romaine. The leaves normally are in an upright fashion, fairly narrow, the, the, the in the spines are, you know, about an inch or so wide. These are like maybe a quarter inch. The leaves are very, very wide. That's my hand They're in there. They're huge. And, and that's, this is an 80 to 90 day plant in the ground. We did this in hydroponics in um, 34 days over one pound plants. And what is it normally? 80 to 90 days. 80 to 90 days. Yeah. And then this was just a sample of handwritten comments people have done over the years. I have a stack like this, right? So... All who, singing the praises of Turbo Organic? Yeah. Who, I mean, who stops to write anything anymore, right? So true. Yeah. I don't even know if I know how to write anymore. <laughs> no kidding. I really appreciate you taking the time to tell us a little bit about Turbo Organic. Yeah. I wish you the best with everything, and I hope that more people and more plants can benefit from Turbo. Okay, awesome. And all they do is go to TurboOrganicMyGarden.com and bingo, and I provide all year free coaching support all year round. I don't care what level of experience you have. Awesome. Don't drink it. Not a good idea. I tried to do that. <laughs> Turbo organic. You want your plants to go fast? This is the gas. I love you, Mom. You're the best. Thank you. I gotta do the live thing. That was incredible. Guess what's coming up next?
Between Two Trikes. It's a very exciting segment where a man talks about his love of three-wheeled vehicles. Keep sending the pledges in. Keep donating. Tell your friends. We have so much entertaining action for you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget about our shitty hats. 69% off. A new set of Pips Biker sunglasses every single hour and 31% off the entire site. God bless you. We love you. Is this not the best time you have ever had? It's the best time I've ever had. I gotta call my mom back. Keep watching. It's gonna get better and better and better. And keep calling in with those pledges. Hey, mom. Are you ready? Are we rolling? Yeah, I thought. This is your thing. Yeah, yeah. Are okay. you ready to go? Yeah, okay. Let's go. <laughs> Quiet on the set, please. Thank you. Hello and welcome. My name is Christopher Jake George, and I'm here with Dan Valer, a member of our moto team here at Pit Viper. And uh, I'd like to thank you for joining us of this segment of uh, Between Two Trikes. What are we talking about? I thought we were talking about trikes. What is it about the trike? I'm going to start again. Hello and welcome. I'm here with Dan from our moto team. Dan. What are we doing in your garage today? They literally just showed up. That's absolutely correct. We're here to talk about trikes with Dan. The trike, the three-wheeled machine, outlawed by the American government in the 80s, said to be the unofficial vehicle of Pit Viper. Dan, why is that? Well, first off, it's the unofficial official vehicle of Pit Viper. The unofficial should, official you, vehicle you should, of Pit Viper. You're interviewing me, you should get this right, but... Well, it's, Most it's, of it, it's I, my interview, and the I'll kind reason of get it right why right I kind of yes. think that you know, like before you interrupt me again, is it's it's kind of like a mullet. Mm. It's business in the front because you got one tire. You get to the back with two. It's just a party. Mm -hmm. The business in the front, party in the back approach. Yeah. What other things in life has that same approach, Dan? Not you. It really was uncalled for, but. Um, Okay. What do you mean we're not talking about the trike today? We're talking about trikes. We're talk yeah, but we're talking about the trike today. No, no, we have to talk about the trike. No. The Dan is going to give us a brief history on the three-wheeled machine known as a trike. Dan, I understand in the world of Pit Viper that the trike is a very, it, it's a monumental machine. What is it about the trike that is so interesting? Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of things about the trike that make it, like, super interesting. Tell me one. Uh, they were outlawed by the U.S. government in 1987. Sounds dangerous. Why? Because they were killing people. That, they're, they're very dangerous. Can we say killing people on the air? So they were just brutally being mauled apart by these trikes? Is that what you're saying to me? Killer <laughs> trikes on the loose! For years, <sighs> and finally the government put an end to it. Well, we're grateful for that. No, we're not. Why not? Because it's, it's not the trike. Oh. It's the rider. I can ride a trike all day. I, they, I haven't really gotten hurt by one. Different situation. I don't ride many vehicles. I, I drive them. Yeah. To ride them, though, I... Yeah. I find that anything with less than four wheels, I'm prone to being injured, um, hence breaking uh, my hip and the same collarbone twice because of two-wheeled machines. It, it wasn't a machine, it was a road bike. A machine, nevertheless, it a very was, complex yeah. and, and brutal, brutal machine. Should be maybe the next thing to be outlawed by the government. I would agree with that, actually. I, uh, we should get rid of road it's bikes. It's nice that we finally have agreed on yeah, something. Yeah. I have a lot of other stuff to do. Do you want to keep this interview going or? I kind of would rather waste your time, but oh. you know what? I'm not going to do that to the folks back home. So Dan, um, you know, when was it that you began collecting trikes? Because I can see you have somewhat of a graveyard of, uh, of machines here, a few active, mostly, most of them dead. Um, but um, they, you know, they are all great running machines. Let's make that clear. I can't really see one that's functional, but um, Dan, you know, uh, when did you start collecting these machines? Uh, it started as a young child. Really? Okay, uh, 
So, we, ATC, all-terrain cycle. Oh, not ATV. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, not ATV. It's a cycle. C. Yeah. Got it. There's also UTVs. The hell is O-H-Vs. OHVs. OHV? Yeah. HOA. No, death before HOA. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. We don't do HOAs here. Yeah. DVD. Blu-ray. Blu-ray DVD. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The best part about trikes is you can get them for about 200 to $300 before inflation happened in the recent years, and now they're very expensive. So I'm sitting on a gold mine right now. Uh, but is this a long-term investment for you? No, it, see, there's a difference because I'm a collector. Once you get a trike, you do not sell a trike. You, you keep it forever. How many more trikes do you intend on buying? Dude, dude, I got a pretty big garage. I'm just gonna float something by here. Usually, when someone buys a series of items and holds on to them really tight, call that a hoarder. No, there's a difference between hoarding and collecting. What is the difference? One is a collection and one is a hoard. A thin line. No. A thin line. No. Very, very thin. Very easy to cross, no. I would say. Mm. Mm. Would you say you are the in-house expert on tricks? At Pit Viper? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. By far. Oh. What do you think has gotten you to that, you know, they say it takes 30,000 30, hours, right? Yeah. To master a craft. Yeah. Have you hit that mark? Yes. You're you have hit that mark. mark? Yeah. You have spent 30,000 hours. At least. On. We have a little more to go. Yeah. We'll, we'll let you go eventually, but not yet. Okay. Dan, I noticed that hands are dirty. What have you been working on? I noticed that your fingernails are painted. What have you been working on? Well, I've been painting my nails. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I like to paint my nails every now and again. It's fun for me, you know? Get a nice sparkle, a nice sheen. The light hits them really nice. Sheen? Sheen. Do you clear coat them? I don't clear coat them. Oh, you should. Yeah. It makes yeah. it shine more. Well, it would be nice because yeah. then they wouldn't chip and I wouldn't pick at them. Uh -huh. You know? Okay. What have you been working on? Uh, a trike. Which one? It's a, it's a special trike. Ah, yeah. okay, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, one of my very close uh, employee friends, I would say, friends is a loose term. Who? You. Uh, uh, asked me last minute to completely build a trike for this telethon. M maybe a day's notice was like, hey, you have a day to do this, you should probably get going. And then he showed up at my house and stopped me from doing the thing he asked me to do. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's about right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, pretty much intentionally wasted your time. Yeah. Yeah. I find that usually... Again. We'll get back to the difference between a collection and a, and a hoard, as he rudely put it. They stopped making these in 1987. All of my trikes are older than him, which is awesome because they still run. I go ride them in the desert, I have fun on them, I build them. My girlfriend has one. So the coolest part about trikes is doing wheelies. Mm. And I, we could insert a clip somewhere, maybe over his face right now, of me doing a wheelie real quick, because trikes do great wheelies. Describe how you do a wheelie on a trike. It's like doing a wheelie on everything else? No, but like give me an in-depth explanation. In de okay, well right. it depends because there's different trikes. This one behind you. This is a four-stroke, full suspension, ATC 200X. This is my babe, please, please don't. And it, it's a very expensive part. But it's, it's really, it, it rides just like a dirt bike. So it has a clutch. Mm -hmm. Probably doesn't know what a clutch is. You get that? But yeah, it's yeah, with yeah. your hand. Wait, wait, but the, but, the, but the sound of it. What's the sound like? The clutch doesn't make a sound. No, 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 no. But when you rip on, you hit the clutch, when you rip on the gas on that thing, what's that sound like? I know. Like, that's got the beep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's, deep. That deep. That has nothing to do with the clutch. That's yeah, that's what a very it, important. That's, what, part, that's a it, very important part. When of the it game. idles, that's how it sounds. Yes, because it's a four stroke. So he's so he's on this thing and it's. Yeah, it's it, yeah. So go back to describing the wheelie. So you. You rev it up. It's a little higher pitched when you rev it. How have so many people hurt themselves on trikes? So you can't really see this, but see these big tires? Yeah. 
when you're riding one of these, your foot gets sucked underneath the tire and it runs over you and snaps your leg. So that's one way. The other way, if you look at a trike, it's, it's not really balanced very well, so they tip over very, very easily if you don't know what you're doing. I notice that they only weigh about 50 pounds. That's pretty inaccurate, but okay. How yeah. much do they weigh? A, a decent amount. How much? It depends on the trike. There's different models. Well, this one right here. This one right here? Yeah. Yeah, probably wet. Are we talking wet or dry? I would call myself pretty strong. I felt it was only about 50 pounds. Lift that thing up, no problem. You lift it up the back. Do you want to lift up a motor? Sure. Right now? Nah. I'll maybe go, later. I'll go get it and put it on your lap. We'll pull a motor in after the commercial break. Let's pull one in. We're going to take a commercial break really quick, and Dan's going to bring a motor in. Uncross your legs. We'll put it down. No, put, uncross your legs. Here, no, just sit down. We're, we're, we're put it on your lap. I don't want to put it on my lap. Put it on my lap. I don't want to put the thing on my lap. I cleaned it. It's very clean. I know. I don't. You know. I don't trust. There's no oil in it. it. I just want to grab it. Yeah. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. How do I put it down? I didn't touch. Welcome back. Here with Dan from the Moto team at Pit Viper. Dan, a cultural question for you, if I may. What differentiates a a uh, a, a cyclist from a dirt bikeist, from a trikeist, from an ATVist of sorts? Well, this, there's no motor in a cyclist machine. Mm. Mm. So okay. There, it's human powered. There. They they like pedal. Yeah, well, there's a machine. There's a mechanism. Okay, so, well, so the implication would be there is a machine. No. Yeah, a mechanism works. So we're talking a dirt bike? Sure. A dirt so bike. So a is. dirt bike, it takes a good amount of skill. Okay. 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 So that, that skill is involved with a dirt bike. An ATV, not, not much skill. Yeah. A trike, a whole lot of skill. Hmm. Mm. We have a saying. Hmm. These old Hondas, they won't start unless you got a good two or three beers in them. Uh, I don't... Are we allowed to say that you can drink beer and drive a trike around? I don't... Private property. I don't... Okay. Okay, all right. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very cool. You ever played Mario Kart? You know, I am, um, I'm actually great at Mario. Okay, so you know, you, I forget what button it is, but you jump before the turn, yeah. so you do a sweep. Yeah, 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 you drift out. That's what, that's what yeah. riding one of these feels like. Yeah. You're just yeah. in the dunes and you just hit that, 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 that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You're just pulling back on that throttle. It's going wild on that. Well, it's a, it's a thumb throttle. It's a these. thumb throttle. So it doesn't twist like a dirt bike. It has ah, a, yeah. it's got a thumb throttle. Yeah, you press, you press it. Very cool, mm -hmm. very cool. I would like to give a shout out to our, our folks over at Trike Vision for the exclusive trike look. Yes. <laughs> what? The Trike Vision. What, what are you the talking about? There's nothing over trike there. Vision. Trike Vision has been sponsoring there's, segments of ours for years. You're pointing it's right back there. Just a whole thing tomato cocktail, huh? Uh, that's clamato. There's clam juice in there. There's clam juice in here? Yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> Put it in your beer. I learned that from Three Wheel Legend, Cole Denny. Cole from SD. Oh, yeah. yes. Cole from SD. One of our key players. Yes, Cole. Yeah. Dan, tell me. 
What's the furthest you've ever gone on a truck? Like, like height-wise, distance-wise, mileage-wise? I don't really care. Just answer Kilometers? the question in whatever way you uh, think is good. So the, the coolest part about these is they never run out of gas. How the fuck does that even make sense? It, 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 it's a trike. It just never runs out of gas. So they, they go forever, as far as you want to go. 69 miles. Easily. 420 miles. Yeah. 69,000 miles. Yeah. 420,000 miles. Yeah. One tank of gas. Yeah. An incredible machine. Yeah. Truly. So, Dan, I noticed that you got this power right back here. You ever take a sip of this bad boy? No. Why not? You can. I don't really know if I want to, but what's in here? It's gas. What kind of gas? It's race gas. Race gas comes out this kind of like greenish color? Blue. Blue. That's kind of green to me. This is race gas. How do I get a... Don't break it. I just want to test it. What are you doing? I just want to test it out. I just want to test it out really quick. Yeah, that's gas. <coughs> it's good stuff. That's high grade. That's what I said. Nice. It's 112. 112? Yeah, 112 octane. Wow. That's the good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Got it. But you don't drink it. You don't find yourself drinking that ever? No. You only drink the wheat stuff? No. I like to go for the higher stuff. When I'm drinking gasoline, I like to go for the highest I can get. Uh, pretty expensive. Yeah, it is. Okay. Gas these days, too hot. I think five gallons is about $110. Of this stuff? Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's probably last year a good long time. No. No, if you're... Sipping on it every now and again, you know, you, you sip on it nice and slow. You don't drink that. Sure you do. Are you okay? No. The fuck are you laughing at? I'm laughing at, I was just laughing at the moment. Hold on. What? It wasn't funny. It was pretty good for me. But it wasn't. It was a good one for me. Hold on. Kind of a waste of time. And when we come back from commercial, Dan's going to talk more to us about trikes, motorcycles, um, things with two wheels, and anything that takes high-octane gas. What happened to your piece of cardboard? Oh, it's right there. Kind of lost it. Didn't really feel like it. My nice little square of cardboard. That was a good square of cardboard you gave me. That was pretty good. What would you cut it out for? Because you asked for a small piece of... Oh, you cut that on the spot? Yeah. That's a pretty good freehand you got there. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice. What's with that, man? Come on, we had a good thing going once. We used to hang out. We've never hung out before. Yeah, I guess we never really have hung out. I, I've thought about us hanging out. Just like two guys hanging out in a garage, kind of similar to what we're doing here. We're just hanging out and kicking back. And I didn't even invite you. Poor little engine, poor little engine, poor little engine, get hooked. It's kind of looks better than you're gonna look at 40 years old today that much. I'm closer to 40 than I'd like to admit. You ever just think about that? How you're just aging rapidly? No. You don't just think about how like you're just aging fast and quickly. It's like you're speeding. I thought this was about trikes. We'll get back to the trikes. We'll get back to the tricks. We'll get back to the tricks. Can you move a little bit? Dan, push over. I understand. Absolutely not. I understand. What's the dirt bikes. What's just happened to your voice? Are played out. They're no more. Their reign of terror, if you will, is coming to a collapse, and the trike is making a resurgence. Is this true? No. Come on, man. Look, you gotta go with the bit, alright? You gotta go with it a little bit. No. You can't just leave me hanging. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Just be friends. I'm not you know, on. I'm not gonna lie to people for you. Look, you gotta go with the bit a little bit, alright? You gotta can, go with can you back a little bit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do 
oh, the best way. Oh, hey, I'm. Tr you're oh, not answering. Oh, oh, the time out. Right, whatever. <clears throat> Dan, what would you say to an aspiring trike enthusiast? Someone eager to get their hands right on the grip tape of these things. What would you say to them? Grip tape? Yeah, handlebar, grip tape, whatever the hell you call it. Well, you, you should buy a trike. The best way to get in is to own one. Where does one even buy a trike? I, don't, I have my best luck on Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. A big fa I love Facebook. It's a treasure trove for trikes. Yeah, and other things. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they get in, what, what should they look for? What are things that they can keep an eye out for? What's a good price? You want to make sure it has three wheels. That's a good start. start. To start. Um, three wheels full of air, I would assume. Purse, not, uh, many times the, they do not have air in them. Oh, okay. Uh, I only buy Hondas. Why do you, well, okay, let's back up. What else could you buy? What other brand makes trikes? What other? Uh, so Kawasaki made trikes. Kawasaki made trikes. Yamaha made trikes. Yamaha made trikes. And the elusive, the holy grail of trikes, the Tiger. Ooh. Do you have a tiger here? No. Are you looking for a tiger? Always. You're always looking for a tiger. I've never seen one in person. Looking for one to just jump out of a bush. You've never even seen one in person. In front of you. Yeah. You can the just... The elusive. The elusive tiger. Mm -hmm. Wow. Tiger 500. What is it about them that makes them so elusive? Uh, they're only made for a couple years and they're only made for the racers. So a lot of them didn't last. There used to be trike races. There still is. There still is? Yes. Are these official or these underground? Like more of like a, um, you know, like a televised event, or is this more of a, no, it's not Vin televised. Diesel, We Are Family, Fast and Furious type thing, where it's in the middle of the night and they got the underglow and they got the whole people around and there's music oh. blasting and then they're jumping over the bridge and they got the the streets marked off because they got their set course and yet you wonder how could they keep that course in their mind when they're going that fast but yet they all know where they're going. Is it something like that, or is it more of like a uh, NASCAR event? It's like a motocross event, but with trikes. Oh, so it's in a stadium. No, it's just on a track. In a stadium, under the big lights, no. with the dirt, and the dirt jumps are all there. There's dirt and, and dirt then jumps, it's again like, sponsored by like an energy no. drink company or no. something like that. No, there's no sponsors. Big title sponsors. No sponsors. You got a hot dog, you get a corn dog, you get some popcorn, you there, go wild. There, there is corn dogs. See, I know a thing or two. But there's no sponsors, there's no lights. The, why aren't there any lights? It's most of the time during the day. Oh. Well, these do have lights on them. Yes, yes. What are the other features that usually come on a trike? Lights, gas tank, tires. Yeah. Engine. They come into the engine. They have sprockets. I don't even know what a sprocket is. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to explain that to you. No, come on, man. And then, uh, yeah. Come I on, mean, we're friends. There's you full explain what, come on. CDIs, there's electrical harnesses. What is it even in there's a coil. There's For what? Brakes. Brakes. I got brakes. Yeah. Brakes. Yeah, yeah. Brakes make sense. Brakes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, an uh, interesting part, talking about brakes. Yeah. I, I do not run front brakes on any of my trikes. Why not? I take them off. Why? Because, as I was talking about before, you rudely interrupted me before. There is, uh, they're, they're very tippy, these trikes. They tip over. And we call it the old mouse trap. Because you're going real fast, and you, you grab a whole fistful of front brake. <laughs> It's like getting caught in a mousetrap. That's how you get hurt. Nice. So if you don't have a front brake, you can't do that. Interesting. So I just rip them off. You get the speed wobbles on these things? Oh, yeah. How? You go fast and it starts to wobble. Fast. Way too fast. Yeah. What's the most customizing you've seen of a trike in order to make it a little more street friendly? So, like I was saying, they stopped making these in 87. No. No, no more trikes. Question for you. How many total do you think have been made? A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. Okay. Enough that but, you could still buy them today. Yeah. Enough that you have seven in your garage currently, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All running. Oh. Is that true? Yeah. Don't mind me. I don't. I don't mind. All of them run? Yeah. All of them run. Strong. You machines. can turn this one on right here. This one, go. This one right here. Turn this one on Do right here. You want to turn it on? Yeah. You want to turn them on? Yeah. Fire it up. That one? Can you? I will continue to do this, thank you. What are you doing? Just checking the tire pressure. Most customized Okay, trike. so the cool thing that is happening now is yeah. the, the resurgence of trikes. In American culture. 
It may be or worldwide. It's worldwide. That's incredible. A lot of Canadians really like trikes. Canadians like trikes. Yeah. The Old North. Yeah. What are they getting in the trike industry for? Because these are, they're great in snow too. Ah, yeah. that makes sense. But most customized is, uh, there's a new company out there. There's a couple actually, where they take a dirt bike and they turn it into a trike. So there's people with 2023 20, Honda 450s ah. that are trikes. The price tag on that is about 22 grand. Very expensive. That sounds like a very expensive trike machine. It's sweet though. Is it? Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm. I understand you're customizing a trike right now, speaking of customizable trikes. Yes, it, yes I am. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Uh, no. I, I kind of, it's, it's a surprise. It's a surprise. Yeah. Well, what can you tell me about it? Go on. So, it's, it's a 19, uh, 1982 185S. That's older than both of us. Yes. Yeah. The, the S stands for sport, because it was the race model. In Very the day. fast. Very fast. Very fast. Too fast. Too fast? Or just fast enough? It, you can never go too fast. Perfectly average fast. Yes. Just like you. I wasn't given a lot of time to do this. No, I didn't give you much time yeah. at all. Yeah. And most of the time when I build my trikes, I don't care about how they look as long as they run. Mm. Mm. So I don't really take the time to like get 40 years of grease and dirt off the frame. Have you ever had to get 40 years of grease and dirt off the frame? What, what was that? Can you stop that. Trike that was coming from Trike Cam right here. Trike Cam, the only camera you need. You keep pointing it. So right here. This whole there. segment has been sponsored by Trike Cam, man. What don't you get? God. Lighten up. But I'm, I'm like, trying to look. I'm trying to make a little cash. It was, on the side, it was like right? a full like two days of cleaning grease. Forty years of grease. Forty years of grease. Because you told me to paint it. Well, you needed to paint it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. 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 It'd be so impractical, the trike community is probably going to be mad at me. But let me tell you, but, but, but hold on, hold on, because I know a piece of information that the folks back home don't quite know yet that they're going to find out right now. You're not making this trike for me, are you? Uh, I'm not? No. Oh. We're giving it away. We're giving it? We're giving it away. Can I win it? No, absolutely not. I want not. it. No, fuck you. But we're giving it to one of you out there. What? One of you could go home with a trike. Yeah, Dan, this isn't about them? It's about the viewers back home. But it's, it's about you. I took like four of my trikes to make one cool one. That's fine. It's for the people back home. Are they, are it's for the greater good. Will, this is a for-profit telethon. Will you give it's, me another trike then? Afterwards? No. Please? No. We don't have room in the budget for that. What? There's a budget? Yeah, somewhat. Why well, haven't I got it's any of the loose. budget? It's loose. I, I have it, look, it's a loose budget. There's not a lot behind it, but there's enough behind it to buy a tri to buy a trike and to ask you very kindly in your own time on your days off to, you know, spruce it up a little. Will you at least take me out to lunch after this then? Is that in the budget? Yeah, but we got to go as friends. Handshake doesn't count. It's not I, I, doesn't count. I don't handshake. Give me the hand. I'll take the dirty hand. Look at that. Good doing business with you. Good doing business with them. This, Dan, from the Moto Team. Dan Belair, from the Moto Team, right here. When we come back, Dan will have a little more about trikes for us, folks. And we're back with Wait. Dan from the Moto Team. Dan, what makes you a trike expert? I don't understand it. When did you talk about this like four times already? We're going to talk about it again. I I cons I don't even consider myself a trike expert. Well, then what the I hell are you an, doing with an, seven trikes? I'm an enthusiast. No, 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 no. Look, you can tell yourself. Look, I can call myself an enthusiast of food, but that doesn't mean that I am an expert on it. You are actively currently building a trike. The funnest part about riding trikes is fixing them. Yeah. You ever think about why do you have glasses on underneath your glasses? Because I can't see. What? Because I can't see. Waste of space. Absolutely not. You can never have enough pairs I'm of pivot bars. About you, but let's keep going. 
you ever think about taking a trek, selling it to somebody? You Never. Know, we'll call that. I told. I don't sell treks. Thank you. We'll call that person some sort of poor sap. Why and would they be a poor you sap? Sell it to them at a very high price on a place like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, KSL, what have you. And you intentionally leave a piece in there that you know is going to break probably pretty soon. So that they come back to you. And then you say, you know what, I'll fix it. But for a, a hefty rate. No. And then you never fully fix it. You know, so then they keep coming back to you so you can keep charging them and charging them and charging them and charging them. And then you, you really run their bank account dry. Right. So then what you do is you keep charging them more and more and more. And, um, you know, they just keep coming back from you and you're just taking, eventually it gets to the point where their entire paycheck is just going to you and it's just going right into your bank account. You ever think of like a grift like that? You know how I've been working on your truck the past couple of months and, I, and you got to keep bringing it back? Yeah. Yeah. I would never do that to a trike person. You've been doing that to my truck this whole time. It's pretty cold in this garage. You couldn't get heat in your garage? You couldn't put a heater. You seem like a handy guy. You got yeah, 47 different motorized machines around here and you couldn't figure out a way to get a heating unit in here? Dan, here with the Moto Team. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much for your time. Dan's gonna take us through a little tutorial here in a little bit on how to actually customize a trike. Tutorial? Yeah, tutorial! I don't know, what you got in here? We talked about that already. No, you no, tried no, to no. drink it. No, 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 I tried to drink this, but what's yeah. in here? I'm gonna make you sit here, I think, and just hang out. What do you think about that? I forgot your, uh... I forgot your Clamato juice! Clamato. Come on, a clam juice and tomato juice. Yeah. Pretty heavy, huh? It's a really heavy machine, isn't it? No. Oh. Is this how it takes you to start that thing up? Almost got it. Not quite though. That was amazing between two trikes and coming up. We have a very very exciting feature for you in just a moment We're gonna have what's it called again there? Yule log Relaxing with Tommy, Relaxing with Tommy. but in between we're gonna meet another pit viper employee. Come on down. Oh My goodness and look at this wearing a championship belt. What's your name? My name is Krista, AKA the Money Queen. The Money Queen! I am so excited to see you. You are modeling Pit Viper pants, Pit Viper jacket. What model do you have on? Do you know off the top of your head, Money Queen? I do not. Well, we're gonna call it the Money Queen! What'd you get the belt for? Uh, I, I am cr the current reigning champion of I am better than you. It says, hey shithead, this is just a daily reminder. I'm better than you and you get to wear that around the office? I do. For how long? One week? One month? Until somebody beats me at being better than me. And how would they do that? Uh, definitely not possible, so... Closely guarded secret, I like that. <laughs> smart, smart. How's your workday been going so far? Uh, I've not gotten anything done today. Absolutely fantastic! And you deserve that belt. You look amazing, you feel amazing, yeah. spirits are high. 
I can't tell you enough about what's going on over here. Come here. Get over here. Look at that. Look at that belt. Show the camera. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right. I want to see this. I want to see you do this since you're the reigning belt holder. I want you to tell the people what this hour only they can get for 69% off. Ooh. The Yankee Noodle single wide, 69% off. Now, is that a good deal, Money Queen? Yes, unfortunately for us, but a great deal for you. Look at that. We're giving away these things. Tell a friend. Tell a, tell a friend? A bit of a word salad. Hey, hey, you think there's any way I might get that belt? I'm only here for a few days. They flew me in. Want to thumb wrestle for it? I'll thumb wrestle you for it right now. Here we go. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. Oh, she's got... She's... Clap! She jumped up! Take a... Oh, ah, she keeps the belt. Have a great rest of the work day. You look amazing. You're doing amazing. And I got to say, you're the people's champion as well. That's me. That's me. And Barb. This yep. Is Barb. Don't forget about shittyhats.com. Head on over there. Someone's going to get a parking spot. $420 cash, whoever wins the design. Coming up next, we have an incredible feature. You're not going to want to leave. Tell a friend. Tell a family member. Keep pledging. Keep them coming in. We still got phone calls coming in. God bless all of you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Relaxing with Tommy. This is why you get divorced. Triple H. Sing with Tommy.
getting pruney. So pruney. You know, some people use prunes in their diet as a natural laxative. <laughs> Not me. Can't stand the taste of them. And I got no problem getting things moving down there. My secret, it's always moving down there. I actually medically need a lot more fiber in my diet. Doctor's pretty concerned. So much blood. So much blood. with Tommy. bullied a guy pretty mercilessly in high school for having psoriasis. We called him Psoriasis Steve, Scabby Steve, Itchy Itchy Stevie Boy, Steve Man, half scab, half boy. Anyway, we, uh, we yucked it up pretty hard, but about a year ago, I got psoriasis. It's not so funny. So I called Steve up. I told him I was really sorry for all the bullying we did. He said he barely remembered it, but I know that's bullshit. There's no way he didn't remember. Our jokes were awesome. So freaking funny, man. <laughs> Scabby Steve. Relaxing with Tommy. Any season can be hunting season when you're hunting bargains and werewolves.
I've actually ran into Scott Bakula a couple times. That's right, Quantum Leaps, Scott Bakula. I kept calling him MacGyver, which is Richard Dean Anderson. He hated it. He said, I'm Scott Bakula. And I said, Bakula, listen to me. Two words, Bakula's Dracula's. It's a haunted house experience. I think it could take us over the top. When's the last time you saw a million dollars in a briefcase? And he told me that's a weekly occurrence for him. He's Scott goddamn Bakula. We exchanged a thousand yard stare, shook hands like gentlemen and went off on our merry way. Don't drag race Scott Bakula, he cheats. He's got fuel from the past and the future. Relaxing with Tommy. That was extremely relaxing. I had a great time. Now, do you remember those funny fellas from IFHT with their shitty crafts? Well, guess what's coming up next? They spent a day at the office, and boy, did they have a wild time. You're going to want to stay tuned. Now, look what I'm wearing. These are the slipstreams. Oh, yeah. They feel great on my face. I feel confident, sexy, and cool. And guess what? This next hour, Spencer, can they get them for 69% off? Fuck yeah! One hour only, so get on there, check it out. It's gonna be amazing. Keep those pledges coming, keep contributing. You could win yourself a beautiful tote bag for nothing, just for signing up. And then you can carry around all the Pit Vipers that you bought for your family and friends. So keep on calling, keep on clickety click, 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 click. Click, click, and stay tuned for this beautiful presentation by IFHT spending a day at Pit Viper headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm, these are nice. Can I keep these ones? These are really nice. Oh, hey guys. Matt here from Mahal, my dude. I've always wondered, what is it really like to work at a company like Pit Viper? So, I've traveled all the way from Vancouver, Canada to Salt Lake City, Utah to find out. I'm joined by Kaz, David, and Jason. Let's go get to work. Oh, sir. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. I'm King Goots. Welcome to Pit Viper Big Loads. What brings you in today? Well, me and my friends here are looking for a job. So pretty much you can have your way with us all day. First things first, you got to look the part to work the part. Let's go. We got shades, we got clothes. You got to get shades first. Now you need the shirts. We got hats. You got to get a hat on. These go good with mountain biking. We got shades, we got clothes, we got everything here. Oh, we got pants, who needs some pants? We got shades everywhere. Here, you're gonna need to hold your drinks there. Okay, thank you. Drink. All right, well, I'm feeling like this is pretty good. I think we should hit the change rooms. Do all you guys right, have- Yeah, get all changed up, and then we'll see if you fit the part and see if we can use you. All right, you guys are looking the part. Now we gotta get you to stuff boxes in boxes and get them out of here. Let's go. All right, let's fold some boxes. This is where the magic happens. First, you take these two little flaps and give them a little fold in like so. Fold those in, now flip them up. All right, now you got those sides up. Bring this guy up and fold those wings in. You're backwards over there. Oh, God damn it. Dave doesn't know his way around a box. No surprises. Oh yeah, boys, box is ready to go. Now we can put more boxes in these boxes. Place it right in there. 
Now fold the top down and fold those wings in. Now we tape it. Oh yeah, nice and tight, make it right. All right, let's see how this is gonna go. Oh, oh. oh a bit aggressive. Now we're gonna take this label and stick it and slap it. Finish it. Yeah. Now this box goes into that box. Kobe. Now do 200 more of those and I'll talk to you in a minute. All right. How are you guys feeling? I feel good. I'm uh, very experienced with boxes. You know, it doesn't even take a lot of foreplay to get this box ready. Uh, that was me. Shit. All right, this one's going to Mason Hardy. Uh, his address is just house. Uh, All right, here and go. here we go. Oh, there's people in the way. Heads up, everybody. Oh, four. All right, we got yeah. one. There we go. There we go. That's the good old fashioned grandpa tape job is what we call that there. Yeah. This one's going out to you, Amanda. Amanda. I just massacred that box and it legitimately is going in the mail. I, come take a look at this. This is not a joke. It's really going out like this. <laughs> this is so terrible. This is a return this is a return case for sure. Maybe I should add more tape. All right. More tape, more better. Yeah. There'll my... probably be more stuff about that. Mm -hmm. All right, four. Oh, 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 gosh! It's all right, it's all right. Don't crush the packages, jeez. Kaz, you really blew it. There's a fine line between organization and pure chaos here at Pit Viper, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Hey, Peter, uh, I was told that you have a job for me. I got nothing to do. Yeah, um, so like nobody in here even listens to me. So like, would you be down to just like listen and do stuff if we hired you? Probably. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? You would, yeah. Um, I think this is gonna work out great, man. Let's okay, go. great. Yeah, let's get you on board. Awesome. There's a lot of unexpected jobs here at Pit Viper. Who can I help out? Can I help you out? Is there something I can do? You can use me for anything. The, uh, the bump box is down and that's how we listen to music. We were gonna put you up on the top rafters and have you sing songs for us because when the music isn't happening, uh, nothing's going on. You know, I kind of thought it was all just packing boxes, counting inventory, doing returns, you know, kind of coming up with new ideas. You feeling safe? You feeling okay? Uh, no, okay. not at all. But I got put on singing duty because their boom box is out of order. All right, you ready? You're going up, hold on tight. Yeah, okay, where do I put my hands? Okay. Be careful now. Eh, so we're breaking some sort of work safe law, that's for sure. Jesus, okay. I could legitimately get hurt right now. Actually, it's better if you just stand on the two forks. So if you just want to sing a little bit, the boys really like the song Take On Me. So they put me up on the forklift and I had to serenade the warehouse. Uh, 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 uh. Take on me. Take on me. Take on me. Hank, I do returns. Oh, we get returns mostly because the sunglasses are too small. Especially the Pit Viper Extra Smalls get returned because they are extra small. The website says they're for children, mm -hmm. but that message does not go across to our very intelligent customer base. Return to senders, return to sender overflow uh, boxes in case I want to reuse them can of soup that gets sent to us. Every year we get invited to many graduations and weddings. So Gunner John Barron, class of 2022. Oh, look at this big boy. Marshall Green, class of 2022. Class of 2022, Georgia Sterling. One of these graduations we're gonna all roll up. I think they would regret it very quickly. 3D printed penis tip. Whoa, what the hell? Minion, yeah. Quite strange. We do this thing called good luck money, so people can send us twenty dollars in hopes for good luck. This is just from a, from a week or two of just people wishing for good luck. So this is our slush fund. This is used only at the Seven Eleven for beer. 
When the pimp's in the crib, ma, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. When the pigs try to get at you, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. You know, I thought it was going to be a little bit more embarrassing, but everybody was singing along with me, so I felt pretty comfortable up there. Maybe give me another job I can right. do better at. <laughs> You work here? I don't even know. Um. Yeah, I I cook up. I I make little egg sandwiches for everyone. Um, put things in boxes. Yeah, I guess I do. From from a technical aspect standpoint. My glasses is getting foggy because I sweat easy, and um, there's a hot sauce on my sandwich, so. Don't mind me if I fog up a little. There's a lot of dicks so far. Um, I think there's some sort of obsession with dicks here. I don't really know why. Um, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It is Pit Viper after all. The thing is, is that we do a lot of scanning here. It's our double check. It's the way we uh, make sure things happen. So if we can just get you scanning some boxes, it usually just all works out. When the pim's in the crit mod, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. Uh, now it won't let me log in. This is the f golf scan. Yeah. This, there's a scan to express your disdain for golf. Okay. Make sure you get the password here. Point down, get the password. This password is actually the password to everything. I could not show that. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Nice. All right. What are we doing? What are we even accomplishing? I have no idea what's Anything? happening. Anything? Scan that so the customer knows, oh, it's out the door. And then put that in the box. Oh, I know I do this. Here, let me do this. I'm good with the boxes. Yeah, yeah. Fart in the box. Oh, God. It's got to get to Pensacola, Florida now. Ah! We're learning how to do things a little more efficiently around here. Dave, you got this one for me? That was beautiful. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. That was beautiful. Here, get it in the box and I'll alley me. Oh, so close. Sorry. Oh, so close, so close, so close. Oh. Oh, oh. You know, if you wonder why your Pit Viper order takes multiple weeks to show up, I guess this video reveals why. You know, the people here, they, they're just tossing boxes into the, the main shipping box, and most of them are missing. I found a few between cracks that probably no one would ever see if it wasn't for me looking for missing boxes. So, hey, Matt. Yo, Weston. Weston, how can I help you? Can I help you? Uh, I got nothing to do. All right, can I build a box for you? Yeah, build some boxes. All right. That was pretty good. Did five boxes. How many orders do we have today? About a thousand times more than that. Five thousand orders. For real? For real. Five thousand orders. Five thousand. Five thousand orders are going out the door today. Out the door. And we, in the last hour, have done about eight. At this rate, we're gonna be here till next Thursday. I'm feeling at this pace, we'll be making our way to the money factory in no time. I don't know how you're supposed to move these boxes. I think it'll help if I slap them. Possibly slapping usually uh, helps any process. You like that, huh? Kaz, you want to race? Three, two, one, go. Yes! Damn it! 
So um, we just helped the fellows over there fold probably a hundred boxes. This is not a joke. We actually folded them inside out the wrong way, all of those boxes. But they say they're gonna ship them out anyways. I thought we were doing a good thing, but we were doing the wrong thing the entire time, so. That's not my problem anymore, because I'm not coming back here. Thanks guys for coming in. You did a great job today. I think we're done here at Big Loads, but we gotta get you down to Money Factory and get you on the other end of the job. Let's right. go. Let's go. I hope they have lollipops there. All right, Matt and Dave just put some big loads into some boxes. So we are now moving on to the money factory. Apparently Pit Viper is actually a business. We're gonna go inside, get put to work, see what the hell goes on in a place like this. Let's go. Good day, sir. Welcome to the Pit Viper Money Factory, where global domination starts and dreams are made. Okay, well, we're here to work. Can you give us some jobs, some tasks? Okay, easy. Okay. Come on, let's go introduce you to the customer service team here. So yeah, we're here at the, the Money Factory, really just trying to find a job and how we fit into this company. It seems like a lot of people do a lot of things here, but we're not really sure who does what. This is our customer service team. All right, well, what do we do? How do we, how do we service these customers? What kind of emails do you guys normally get? What are you replying to? A lot of, you guys are awesome, so a lot of, yo, what's up? Is there another situation that one might encounter here at customer service? So, so let's say someone went mountain biking and they ate shit and like slammed into a tree with their face okay. and their sunglasses are broken. How would you respond to them? Dear broken face, it's been, it's been one week and it looks like you might not make a full recovery. Don't fret because even though you are horribly disfigured, <laughs> we've got your back, brother. We are going to send out a brand new pair of Pit Vipers to your door and $6,000. Hope your face doesn't look like an ass. Love, Brian, heart emoji. All right. Wow. That's pretty easy. <laughs> nice. We're in. Yeah, things started off in customer service. I was actually kind of wondering if they even really do anything because when we asked if we could answer any emails, they said they had none. So either they have no customers or they just straight up don't do anything. What's Yo, up, dude? What's up? How's it going? Good, first day at work. Yeah, we're here to work. Uh, actually, last day at work. Is this legitimately your last day? Uh, it's like my third to last day. Why? Uh, I quit. <laughs> what do you do? What's your day? Uh, I just look at photos all day. I tweet, I go on Facebook, I go on Instagram. So you're a social media guy? Yeah. So anything yeah. that people see on Pit Viper, Instagram, Twitter, yeah. dark? Right now it's all me. That's all you? Yeah. Let's see, what do you guys want to know? You guys have anything to say to the world? What are the rules of being a Pit Viper social media person? On Twitter, not much. I kind of just tweet whatever I want, so. This one was, our glasses don't fit your face, take HDH. So you're recommending drugs to people? Yeah. I mean, it's medicine. My job's not done here until I make a coworker cry from bullying. Assless tracksuits are in for fall winter 23. Uh, I said to a coworker, man, I never realize how fucking bald you are. I mean, it's really just whatever you want to tweet. Yeah, we can basically do anything, yeah, eh? Yeah, you can get the freaking account suspended for all I care. What are they going to do, fire <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, I've been saying that <laughs> all week. The best form of birth control is not wearing pit vipers. Is this all you do all day? Uh, I mean, I shop online, too. All right, now this is the interesting stuff. Okay. <laughs> You're getting shoes. <laughs> And you're gonna buy some Mizuno Sky Metal S. These are in euros. In pounds. <laughs> That's an expensive pair of shoes, sir. Social media gig pays pretty well. No. All right. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? The best part of waking up is pit vipers in your butt. 
Tweet it out. Tweet it out. Everyone can reply. All right, you out? Yeah, I'll see you guys later. What the hell do you do? Um, I set up the tents, I sell the sunglasses, I throw the parties, I cook the steak dinners. But I got a couple questions for you. What was your first concert? Shania Twain. Shania Twain? Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. mm -hmm. We have a quote here that when Shania Twain says, man, I feel like a woman, you feel like you can kick a fucking door off its hinges. All right, question number two. Mm. What's the difference between jam and jelly? Jam has three letters and jelly has five. Mm. I'm looking for a little bit more of an exciting answer. Okay, so the first answer is there's no such thing as a traffic jelly. And the second answer is... You can't jelly your d into someone. <laughs> no HR here. No HR. Tons of violations that I've seen. Um, bathrooms were nice, though. Come on in, guys. Uh, you're welcome to take anything that you'd like. Yes. None of this is all that important. Yeah, um, take it all. Most of this will never even... Come to market. This is a bunch of stuff that we can't really show the public yet. Okay. Um, don't film any of this here. Those are all prototypes. Uh, embargoed. Yep. Yeah, definitely can't show any of this. Is there any way we can help you guys uh, other than just leaving? Yeah, you can just get out. Mm. That would be very <laughs> <laughs> I think we did ruffle some feathers. Um, honestly, it, sometimes I couldn't tell if people were being nice or allowing us to come into the rooms uh, or they just wanted us to get the hell out. Uh, yeah, I was catching some vibes of some annoyance, people actually trying to work and us not. What's happening here? Sorry, you are very close. <laughs> this is our uh, B2B like, touch base for the week. Very important stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get invited back. Are you someone who works here? Is this the, ca the casting couch? Do you need something from me? That's what we're trying to figure we're out. We're trying to get a job here. No one has, seems to work here. Oh, yeah. The fuck are you guys doing in my office? Right. Can someone um, give us a job? Give us something to do. What do you do? want to do? What do you qualify then? Coffee. Coffee? I haven't had any, I haven't had coffee in too long. Yes, coffee? thank you. Medium How do you like your coffee? coffee? Just strong as hell. Kazer. We know coffee. Yeah, we know coffee. Yeah, we're qualified. We know coffee. coffee. Let's go make this man a coffee. That's fantastic. Nice. That's great. That's Thank wonderful. God. Finally, you want a someone. cup of coffee too? Uh, don't forget about my cup of coffee. Make it two cups of like... coffee. Nice and strong and black, please. I don't know who those guys are. Mmm. Smell that. We're on our way, boys. It's real nice, actually. Hey, hey Kaz. Hey. These cups are utterly ridiculous. Oh. Holy cow, can you believe these cuts? Ground beef. <laughs> Have you ever done this before? Uh, I've seen him do it before. You've seen who do it? Them. And then are we making another cup of coffee with this coffee? Yes. Okay. Well, Kaz, I think we've made it. Yeah, it's pretty dark. It's cool, I'll wait. Okay. It's cool. All right, now we have some strong coffees to give to the people that work here. I hope we did okay. Your dog took a shit. Finally got a job, made some coffee for the boss. Mid coffee, dog takes a shit on the floor. Did you actually see it happen? Yeah. Did you confirm? Yeah. You did? Yeah. You watched the shit come out of his yeah. butthole? Yeah, I did. Oh. oh. I think he was careful, careful. Where? Right, right there. Oh, don't step in it. Oh. Gross. Okay. Oh, right on the carpet. Ooh, it's warm. Uh, looks like it was pretty solid though. So, uh, he's been getting a decent amount of fiber recently. Been very regular. Fortunately, we are done. Is this a bad time? It was a good time. Yeah. There you go. So, he, so he gave me the poo, but he didn't really tell me where to put it. So I'm just gonna assume he wants to take it home. So I'll just put it in his office. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know what to do. Is the dog poop? Mm. You should just throw it out. In this one? Sure. Okay. Yeah, the poop put the poo in the garbage. Oh yeah, like that's how it goes. Yeah. Perfect. You got your coffee. Well, yes. Any? Mm. Can I get my coffee? Mm -hmm. Kaz, we need the other coffee in here. Here's another strong block for you. Oh, thank you. 
Mm. Ah, really bad. Is it really that bad? Oh, it's so bad. Wait, can I try it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, Cass, try this. That's so terrible. Well, this is really bad coffee. Oh, it's awful coffee. Yeah. It's gross. Well, Tippy, try it. Do you Tippy, need to you try gotta it? try oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Here, bend over. Yeah. <laughs> so how did we do? <laughs> You did great. You did great. Good That's job. Great coffee. You're hired. That's incredible yeah. coffee. Man, you did I'll it. tell you what. All right, now I'll watch it. Thank you for your time. I have some product ideas I want to pitch to you guys. Knit Vipers. Crocheted sunglasses by sexy grandmas. Pit Viper ball suspenders. Got saggy balls, you clip suspenders to your balls, and they attach to the back of your sunglasses. Spit Vipers. Pit diapers. Sexy diapers for big loads of any size or type front or back, dealer's choice. Split vipers. They pull apart in the middle, you put one half in each pocket. Pit viper contact lenses, so you can have the words pit and viper on your eyeballs. Brad pit vipers. Spliff vipers. They've got a spot to keep your joint. Okay, thank you, 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 thank you. Okay, it's like 3 p.m. Seems like half the office has gone home. Um, we're gonna do a little photo shoot. They have a whole studio here for us. Kaz, you ready to model? Yeah, let's do it. Pick whatever you want. I think everything here belongs to us. They have a really sweet photo studio here, uh, but no one seems to be utilizing it. It's actually just a bunch of junk everywhere. So Kaz and I took it upon ourselves, take that initiative, and uh, yeah, we had a little photo shoot of our own. And I think Kaz might make the 23 catalog, to be honest. Yes, yes, work it, work it. Yes, this is gonna make the calendar. Jesus, dude. He farted. <laughs> so I think we got a banger here. Submit it, see if it gets in the 2023 catalog. I think it's pretty darn good. Hey, guys. Yeah. We're uh, looking for some goggles. We we're trying to do a photo shoot. Have you seen anything around here? No. Yeah, drink that bud. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. Mm. Let me see some gulpage. Mm. I'm gulping as hard as I can. Uh, is this a counter? Yeah, it is. This looks like money. Yeah, this is money. the money factory. It is. We're here to help. Um, start making more money. Please tell us how. Um, go to over into buy pay vipers for the full price on the street. Now get okay, the wow, tangible yeah. tasks. Yeah, now get the f out of my face. All right, so uh, somehow we've received the keys to the company vehicle. Uh, we're gonna hit the streets, go sell some pit vipers, make some money for this company for the factory. Let's go. Oh my God, it smells horrific in here. Somebody died? Jesus. <laughs> God, I hope no one's behind me. Get in, we gotta go sell pitties. All right, let's go find some people. Careful, there's bugs everywhere. Hey man, how's it going? How are you doing? Can I interest you in a new pair of Pit Viper sunglasses? We're selling them for 20 bucks. You don't need any? Not right now. All right, man, have yourself a good day. Oh, I farted. Oh, I farted. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't tell if it smells better or worse. <laughs> Oh my god, it's <laughs> open the window. Hey man, excuse me. Hello? Would you uh, be interested in new... Okay. He knew exactly who we were. Where do the kids hang out these days? Oh, this guy's eyes look very exposed. Hey man, how's it going? 
I'm uh, selling pit vipers for twenty dollars if you're interested. <laughs> I'm supposed to make a bunch of money for the company, or they're gonna fire me. Uh, yeah, I guess I take a pair. Yeah, man, these are the new ones, the liftoffs. They seem pretty legit. Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> it's we we work for them. I do need some new sunglasses because my last pair got pretty scratched up. They weren't pit vipers, but dude, these are sick. They lift right off. <laughs> sick. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah. That only took like fifteen minutes. Yeah, well, job well done. Let's go back to the office. We are out of here because I'm out of stock. <laughs> Yo, should we just go to a drive through and spend it? <laughs> yeah, hi there. Um, can I get a uh, caramel frappe? Yeah, what size? Let's go 32. Thank you. 50 cents. There's 5, 10, 11, and 12. Oh, sweet. Hey, take this for a tip. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Actually, take another one. Here you go. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Do you like the shortbread cookies that we put on top? Uh, yeah. Well, we're down to 11 bucks, but I think he's still going to be stuck. Hey, that's 11 more dollars than they had. Holy There's crap. That. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great day. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's head back to the money factory with our money and a uh, little drinky poo here. Yeah, we finally talked to someone who gave us a tangible task to help the company. The accountant, of course, sold the pair of Pit Vipers for 20 bucks. And uh, I think we made their Q4 with that sale. All right, um, great success. Yeah. Sold some Pit Vipers. Oh, you got some money. Got, got money. Nope, $10. $10. Nice. Well, <laughs> funny story. Originally had 20. Yeah. But we got pretty thirsty on the way back, so I got an eleven dollar frappe. That's right, we'll take out your paycheck. Absolutely. Yeah. These are good things. Uh, you managed to get a whole twenty percent of a uh, MSRP, so great job. Mm -hmm. Job well done. <laughs> Well guys, that was a pretty solid day working at Pit Viper, working the dream job. Mm -hmm. Everybody was actually pretty nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I learned a lot, a couple of rough what patches. In, uh, you guys are still here? Go back to Canada, we've had enough. Oh oh shit, Dave, oh yo, Dave, take the Pit Dave, Vipers. Run. The Pit Vipers. Ah, go, go. This just in, there's an Olympic gold medalist, allegedly, in the next segment called Cramming with Chris. But in between there, we found somebody who says he's an employee. Get over here, sir. I don't know, all the people that were working here, they were kind of like, never seen this guy. Did you just come off the streets or do you actually work here? You better think quick because uh, one of the co-owners is over your right shoulder. No big deal, no pressure. Hello, thanks for having me on the telethon. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, do you know who that man is right there? He may have hired you. He's taking phone calls, pledges right now. He did in fact hire me here. And what is it you do here? Uh, I'm the HR director. You are not the HR director. Get out of town. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I read the handbook. I got to say it was put together nicely. And uh, I follow the rules to the letter. I've been here. This is my third day on the premises. I like what you put together. These other people, they can pound sand. Great job. They signed it, so it's their ass now, you know? Damn right. If you sign it, you better get on board. And I've heard some things flying around. There is the excitement of the telethon, as you know. Are you aware? That, is that allowed? Did you hear that? Belches are fully allowed here. Fully allowed here. Come over here real quick. Let's see what's going on. You on the phone? Yeah, can you hold on? Can you hold on? Yes, I, I am. I'm on the phone. Okay, uh, real, real quick, is he in front of you? To, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Chris, that's the last thing we want to do is upset you. I, 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 yes, sir, yes, sir. Can you imagine getting a phone call with one of the co-founders, co-creators of Pip Viper, and you get to become a pledge? All right, let's see what this cat's doing over here. Get in here. Let's see if he's following HR protocol. Booty, bottom, butt, 
butt bottom booty. Mm. Spencer's actually one of the uh, no, one of the he, he, he has the most Sorry. demerits against him. Actually, the most demerits against yeah. him. I can I can believe that because I've heard some things. I mean, uh, they've come out of his mouth. He, the good thing though, his saving grace is he's quick to apologize. You know, heart of gold, heart of gold. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. If I had known you were the HR guy when you walked in, I don't know if I would invite you back here. But you really, really changed my mind about HR people in general. You've done a great job here. It's a hell of a team, hell of a team. Thanks a lot. You know, Chuck and Chris really laid the, uh, the groundwork for this to all happen. So we're just letting it play out. And, uh, you know, grateful to be here. So yep. it all trickles down from the top. Leadership, leadership. OK, Bye. he's slamming phones. Right Bye. Now. Hurry by sunglasses. All right, real quick, real quick. You can still get the slipstream only until the hour ends. 69% off. I, we said 69 like 5,000 times. Apparently, it's fully acceptable. I don't. It's just a number. Kind of loses its meaning at this point. Exactly, exactly. Well, you are a fascinating character, and I can tell why you got into the HR biz. You were born yeah. for it, sir. Well, born for it here, the I guess. Mm -hmm. And thank oh. you for being an example to all oh, the other <laughs> employees who didn't want to come out here and show their faces on the telethon. You stepped up to the plate. You're a man of the people. High five. I'm good procrastinating. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it good while Speed I'm on the premises. Dial, trust me, I'm a good guy. You can trust me. You can trust me. I, I, oh. I don't have a record. I, 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 I one time got in trouble, but it, it's expunged. I feel very trusted. Okay. Secretary, excellent. Excellent. Well, let's get ready for Speed this next dial. segment coming up. They're gonna keep taking the phone calls. They're coming in. We're selling, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling. 31% off the entire website. This is the Pit Viper. 69 hour telethon presented by Pit Viper. God, man, they're killing it on the phones out there. All right, coming up, Chris. Apparently he's an Olympic medalist. His next segment, hope you enjoy. We're live, guys. Yeah, if you could, yeah, just take a seat. Yeah, Cam, yeah, just wherever. Yeah, Cam will be out in just a second. Hello, Pit Viper viewership. We are here with uh, <clears throat> gold medal Olympian, Christopher Lillis. You go by Christopher or just Chris? Um, Topher. Topher. Yeah. Topher Lillis here, Olympic gold medalist on the US ski team. Um, here for the Pit Viper 69 hour for profit telethon. <laughs> so, Chris, my name's Cam. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. What can you tell us about yourself? that you might not tell other people? Well, I'll tell you a lot about myself I don't like about other people. Um, I like long walks on the beach. I like to stretch and uh, sit in warm saunas with steam. Um, pretty much anything that'll make me sweaterier and more athletic looking. Oh, mm -hmm. glistening. Yeah, mm, very good. So, um, you are an Olympic skier. Aerials, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Flippy doos. Yep, Flippy Mc... Flipperson. So the idea behind aerial skiing makes it different from a lot of skiing is that it's like flips and twists, but you try really hard to have no style whatsoever. Straight, no style, no grabs, nothing. Gotcha. Yeah. I too am a washed up high school athlete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Which, which, which sport? Um, diving. Oh. So, uh, Chris, you have your gold medal on you here today? I do not. No. You don't? No, I, I, I got up this morning. I was like, what do I need for this telethon? I've got my Olympic collared shirt. I've got my Olympic medal ring, um, but I, I do not have my Olympic medal. Are, are the medals, are they solid gold? Um, no, they're solid gold paint. Solid gold paint. Solid gold paint. How many like carats? Yeah. What? How many carats? Well, I think that's diamonds. Oh. Yeah. It's the worth... best friend. What? Yeah, but gold medals are, are very lonely, lonely. Huh. Yeah, you don't get anything with that. Is that gold too? Um, it's gold paint as well, yeah. 
Oh, jeez, I've been fooled for years. Yeah, anything golden, I mean, hmm. could just be the penny. And, and how much does the gold medal weigh? I would say it weighs roughly nine and three quarter pound. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Does it, is it very um, strenuous on your neck when you wear it? Well, at first it was, but then after a while, you know, you start getting your neck into it. And... Huck neck yeah, training. Exactly. Okay. You know, so like all things, practice. Hmm. And so where is the metal now? It's at my parents' house. Okay. Yeah. And how much do one of those fuckers cost? 38000 I mean, how much I, is it I worth? don't know. I don't know. You I don't know? I that up. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And what's your parents' exact address? Well, exactly. It's the New York. Very good. Yeah. Is it warm? Is it just me or is it warm in here? No, I've been hot since I woke up. You are, you're radiating yeah. heat. We're yes. very close together. I, can, I, I feel it. Do you it. smell that? It smells. It's the Olympic musk. Oh, yeah. It smells like Hit by pure Olympic gold musk. paint. Mm -hmm. We could probably, I mean, I think we could probably. For sake of conversation, yeah. we could probably get a little closer. Well, I'm very comfortable with you so far. That's good to hear. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. feel that. Yeah. So, Chris. Yes. What's it like representing the United States of America on the world stage? Well, it's extremely fulfilling. It's my life dream, something I've, you know, gone for since I was a little kid. Since high school? Yeah, since high school. Since even before then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, back when I was in high school, diving, um, diving uh, played uh, uh, wrestling, too. Lots of male-to-male -male contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of sweat. Mm -hmm. Eye contact, physical contact. Yeah, I can feel that. So... Run us through like a little bit of your like practice routine. Like, what do you do to get psyched up for the Olympics? To well, you know, I, I kind of like like to equate that high school athletic you know field that you're talking about with the Olympic athletics. So it's very you know important that you try not to stretch too much. Yeah. Um, you want to stay calm. Try not to get too much cardiovascular things going. Lots of caffeine. Lots of caffeine, lots of you know substances to yeah. wire you know better life through science i always said sure and uh, i think if you take some of those key principles that you learn in high school into into your professional athletics career you're going to come out with an olympic gold medal i've always kind of equated high school athletics and olympic athletics to be on the same plane almost field. the i mean a level plane here's one thing most olympic athletes do go to high school really <laughs> i would I yeah. never would have guessed that yeah so when they go to high school you know yeah, very similar to other high school athletes where, you know, competing against each other and then only difference would be me being, you know, Oh, right, yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah, it makes you taller. I'm having a hard time not staring at your mustache. I get that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there might be something in it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Can you get it from me? Maybe just like one of these. Yeah. Better? Yeah. Not much better, but it's better. take what I can get. We're very close. We could be closer. We could be closer. Chris, I want to ask you, what is it like to be a Pit Viper key player? Because I've been filling out the application for years and they keep denying me and I just, I, walk me through a day in the life. Well, I think it's really just trying to live up to expectations. I mean, when you sign on to be a Pit Viper key player, uh, you sign on to a certain kind of lifestyle that to be, to be granted is, is not always healthy or, you know, something that should be done. So I'm just glad that the uh, $69.99 that they're paying me per year plus free glasses for life is, yeah. uh, you know, is worth it. And that's enough to fund your extreme cigarette and wine habit? Well, wine, well, training, we get the bottle training, back up here? training regimen. It's, uh, it's Fernet. That's the wine. You know what they say, wine not. 
<laughs> so, Chris, where are your travels taking you to next? Well, um, next I'll be heading off to Finland. Ruka, Finland. It's actually just 100 nautical miles. They use weird words like that up there, away from the North Pole. Finnish. Yeah. Speaking of Finnish, how's your dating life? I gotta ask, is it true that when you show up to the Olympics, that they give you an extensive amount of condoms in your little athlete goodie bag? That is true. Um, it's actually not just condoms. It is information as well. Um, Same you know, sex athletes, practices. Exactly, mm. exactly. So what we like to do is we like to, unfortunately they were all in Chinese. Are the beds really made out of cardboard? Oh, I wish, man, that was a Brazil thing. <laughs> it was actually a Brazil, or like, yeah, the real thing. They did make the sex-free beds, couldn't do it. Ours, we could have sex in. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Lillis, Olympic gold medalist. Could Pit have Piper sex. Pit key player. Can have sex. Could have sex. Could. Could have sex. Has not yet, but could. <laughs> Yeah, has the ability to have sex. One last question for you here, Chris. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? He doesn't want to answer that. You don't have to. Anyways, Chris, thank you so much for your time. Very appreciative. Thanks for having me. Anytime. My fingers, look at this, you guys. The support has been incredible, and we're gonna go ahead and see where we're at right now. Isn't this fun? We're trying to get, is that a billion dollars or a million dollars? I think it's a billion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a I got a thousand dollar pledge over here. A thousand dollars! A thousand dollars! Okay, okay, let's see where we're at. Oh, this is so exciting, because we're just at the start to get here. Here we go. We are at a thousand dollars. Look at that right there. Ah! Temperature is rising. Let's head on over to the phones. What's going on? Hang up with T-Mobile. Can I? I'm gonna. Don't need all right. To be uh, to fine. All right. I'm gonna call. T We've gotten so many pledges. Ten thousand dollars isn't gonna cut it. Wait, no, I don't want to have to pay you. No, no, no. Any no, amount no. is great. I know I got man. Money is coming in! The 69 hour Pit Viper! For profit! For profit! We want your dollar, dollar bills! All this entertainment! You got a pledge for Florida? I got a pledge for Florida. I got a pledge here from Florida. Simon? Simon? Simon from Florida here would like to pledge $500. Simon, God bless you. Thank you so much for being a contributor. What's Simon going to get? He's not only going to get some incredible Pit Viper sunglasses. Can we get him a tote bag? You know, Simon said that he, he would love a tote bag. Simon says. <laughs> Simon, Simon says. Simon says he gets a tote bag. A little bit of wordplay. All right, Simon. Gave we'll me the money. I'll give it to you. Thank you very much. Yeah. What is going on right now? I know I got Sorry, it I one nine hundred, but I didn't know. It was yeah. All right, all right, okay. Listen, take it easy with our people. Our people here, they're doing the best they can. All right, they're getting wild on the phones. Listen, we got some more exciting entertainment coming up for you. Coming up next is Yule Log. Is that correct? One of my personal favorites. Again, get your friends onto the YouTube site. Pit Viper. Yep. Get on to pitviper.com. We want to see this thing go up, 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 so we can get money and you can get Pit Viper sunglasses. Profit. Profit.
profit, profit, profit. All right, everyone. Keep up the good work, everybody over there. Thousand dollar pledge. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Relaxing with Tommy. The Devil's Three Way with David Hasselhoff. But he's going to talk about Baywatch for four hours before anyone puts anything inside anyone. And half the time, he's going to be speaking in German. Talking about freedom. He's been nine, David Hasselhoff. turning into a raisin. You remember the California Raisins? They got their own TV show before they all got hooked on H. Yeah, that's right. Never meet your heroes because they're all going to offer you heroin. California Raisins, heroin. Gumpy, pokey, heroin. Santa Claus from Rodolph the Red Nose Raider, heroin. Anything made of clay, heroin, heroin, heroin. Barney, the purple dinosaur. Cocaine. Why do you think he was so happy all the time? 
uppers. <laughs> oh, Holly weird. Holly weird. I'm a viper. I wish I could talk to my dad. I never let go. I wish I could talk to my dad, but I can't because he's in prison for embezzlement from the prison. He used to be a guard, then he stole some money, and they just went badge off, outfit on. Now you're in jail. You're an inmate. Fuck, Mary kill. Ronald McDonald, the Burger King, and Colonel Sanders. Trick question, I fuck them all. I was on the phone with Bobby, Bobby, and Bobby. De Niro, Redford, Jindal, the Three Kings, you know. Anyway, we were chopping it up talking about a new crypto called Bobcoin. To the moon, Bobby! We all put in a mill piece, 
four mil into into Bob Coin. Shit tanked immediately. Shit tanked before it was even minted. Bad coin. Shit was snapped before we even minted it. I don't even know how you make cryptocurrency. I hit enter on my computer and all my money was gone. The next thing I know, Bob De Niro's in the south of France, dancing with the ladies. I think he took our money. I know he took our money. You talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? with Dami. That was powerful. Just a man floating in a pool, enjoying life. I tell you what, I am extremely excited about the exec fade. This right here is gonna be 69% off for one hour only. Buy as many as you can. Donate, pledge, do it. This makes me wanna leave my wife, change my life, and start all over again. I might leave right now, that's how, no, yes. The, I don't, my kids can raise themselves. The phones are still going off. We have DJ Suet coming up in this next segment. What a powerful DJ. He's coming to you in the streets, bzz, bzz, hitting the ones and twos. Is that what the kids say? Mixing it, sending out the Pit Viper wide, worldwide. Look at the Shakeway crew over here. They're having good times on the phones. We got anybody on there? Uh, Shannon, is that, are you still, no, she, she hung up. Hey, Shannon hung up. Maria has just pledged a hundred dollars. Maria! Muchas gracias, Maria. One hundred dollars outstanding. I'm going out to test the Salt Lake City nightlife right now. I'm feeling good. It's a little chilly out there, but John Boy's going to be fine. We have DJ Suwa coming up, and after that, we have somebody reading real customer reviews. How about them apples, huh? You're going to want to stay tuned. And remember, this is no joke. The exec fade double wide is 69% off only right now. One hour. The lens is fantastic. I feel like straight sex. Oh, I'm not going home. I'm changing my life. Thank you, Chief Cactus Squatter. This is Pit Viper key player Suat, live on the streets of Athens for key players in the wild. Let's give away some flip ups, shall we? in the field with Pit Viper. 
yeah, yeah. without going in a women's underwear shop now, would it? Today. Yeah, I'm 50. You're 50. Yeah. You don't look. You only look about 30. Congratulations. Uh, London. Are you? Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Skanky finger up to the camera. Go, go, go like this. That's what I love about lingerie shops. They've always got that energy. <laughs> of Athens. in Greek. What is that in Greek? Okay. Thank you.
from London. Where have they gone? <laughs> Pit Viper doesn't wait. Demand authority and respect, boy. <laughs> Guys, uh, we're here from London with my DJ decks, with my Pit Vipers. Do you like Pit Vipers? Would you like these? You can have them. You can have them. All of the fans on the internet want you to have the Pit Vipers. It's a gift. Okay, well, perhaps you two can say with me, pen one five, like this. Pen one five. Pen one five. Can you? Pen one five. Unfortunately. Oh, God. Never Athens, with all of the history that goes with it. And here we are, outside the Church of Virgin Mary. Drop a chunky one then. should say Yasu. Again, geez, I'm partially balding, reporting live for Pen15 at the Pit Viper Telethon. a proper participator. Scream! Scream! Wow! 
Right then. Let's see whose grandma I can kiss for a pair of pit vipers. Am I right? Very good. Thank you. <laughs> He's holding up traffic. <laughs> whose grandma wants a kiss? So here we are, Monastraki Square. You guys, you guys. Oh, 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 oh. Civil defense has issued the following message. This is an attack warning. Repeat. We love Athens. An attack warning. Attack warning. Thank you. Thank you. Against this country has been detected. Yes, yes, I know it's a public place. Thank you. Action should be taken. This is an emergency action notification. All broadcast stations shall broadcast. live on the internet, up here, on these phones. Oh, hi, hello from Greece, Athens. We are in Pandrosu Street, Monastiraki, <laughs> on the, <laughs> it's the Central Market, Clea Market. And we love it here, don't we? It's nice and hot. It's nice and hot, it's still summer. It's yes. all year summer in all Greece. All year summer, that's why I'm moving here. I love you, I love you. Oh, you love me, okay, great, fantastic. So you are fantastic. Thank you, we're here with Pit Viper who make these sunglasses, Woo! like this. Um, and we're celebrating Pen 1-5, okay? okay? So if you dance with me and we say, like this. <laughs> pen 1-5, Pen 1-5, Pen 1-5, Pen 1-5. That's, that's the one right there. And then basically you want me to just give you these glasses. Nice. They're your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody clap, clap! Oh, it's a wonderful day here in Athens, right? Thank you. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye. And if you flip them up, you flip them up. Yes, like this. Like this. That's good, that's good. Look at the camera. Cheers. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not an absolute blood clot. I wouldn't have given away my only pair of flip ups now, would I? <laughs> Let's get stuck into some action. Got a kid with a throat cut. 
when it gets too dark. Flip them up. Brother, scream. <laughs> Ladies, scream. She's got a sore throat. She's got a sore throat. <laughs> Security. Party with me. Say hello to London. That's all from me. Should have wiped more thoroughly. Reporting live for Pen 15 from the streets of Athens. Real comments from real customers with Jeffrey Scott, the web guy. You delivered my package to my neighbors. Please retrieve and re-deliver to proper address today. I just don't understand if they look as good as the other ones seem to have color in them. This hat is very offensive. My son does not need to be exposed to things like this. Please take this hat down.
Help, these hats are awful. My son is grounded for looking at the website. It leads to problems in marriages and tears families apart. I place an order. I need cancel. There is another page selling fakes, and I fell into it. I'm sorry. Order number. I have no camera, but arm is broken. I know happy about this. I would like replacement, no refund. I lost my nose pierced. Can you send another one? This has been another edition of Real Comments with Real Customers by Jeffrey Scott, the web guy. Real comments from real customers. What a hoot, huh? The stuff people write in. Okay, I want to reiterate, these may be my personal favorites, and I'm going to push them hard. The exec fade double wide, 69% off for an hour. The lens, everything. It's incredible. We have a very, very exciting thing coming up right now. We have another employee. Come on in here. I've heard nothing but good things. Tell them your name. Rachel Day. Rachel, all the time I've been here, I keep hearing your name. And you know what they say? She's prompt. She's efficient. She's wonderful. How does that make you feel? Um, pretty, pretty good for my ego. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and what's it like to work at Pit Viper HQ? Very exciting. Uh, always different. Uh, I think we have jobs open, so please apply. Anybody watching this? Uh, oh my goodness. But let's be honest. I've heard a little bit about the application process and the interview is not necessarily a traditional interview. Is this true? Yeah. So a fun fact about my final interview is that it was actually a trash cleanup uh, interview. So the whole interview was conducted while we were picking up trash. Stop it. Yes. That's amazing. Were you the best trash picker upper or were you were you in an outfit? What, how did you sell yourself? Yeah. I mean, obviously, best trash picker upper actually gave a very corporate formal presentation during said trash pickup. So I feel I feel like that really showed the duality of my experience. Multitasking extraordinaire. That's incredible. And also, so I've noticed people do bring their animals to Fit Viper. Is it true you can bring your kitty cat in? Yeah, kitty cats, um, you know, dog, llama, whatever you have, we, we welcome all animals here. Speaking of which, I heard tomorrow there might be a petting zoo with all types of animals that are exotic. You know, I don't want to spoil too much, um, but I, I can't say that that's not true. That is so exciting. I heard there's going to be a mini horse. There's going to be, is it a wallaby? Kangaroo. A kangaroo? A kangaroo. Oh, well, good day, mate. <laughs> you know what? Rachel, keep up the good work. What do you got here? You got a World Series championship Diamondbacks? Yeah, this is, uh, this is my dad's uh, World Series uh, Diamondbacks 2001 World Champions. Uh, so sorry, Dad, that I stole this. But see, look, it's, it's on TV. So. What's your dad's name? Richard. Richard, you did a hell of a job. Big dick. Raising her up, raising her up right. Am I right? Absolutely. Uh, All right. That's what I'm talking about. We have more Yule Log time coming up right now. It's going to be amazing. Keep doing incredible work. And I'm telling you, there's whispers, rumors that you're going places, young lady. I sure hope so. <laughs> Keep it up, huh? All right. Until then, buy these exec fades. We need more pledges. Get on it right now. I think they're the greatest. Get them. Get them. I'm buying 16 pairs myself. But I'm a big baller. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, big dick. You did a good job. We'll see you soon. Relaxing with Tommy.
I see you've all turned against me. <laughs> Woo. Each one of you has betrayed me today. I will, but I won't tell on you. Relaxing. I won't tell. With Tommy. I'm gonna turn around and you pick yourselves up. Lord Knight of House Coors, bend the knee to me and I will give you a swift death. You know nothing, you bastard. Fastball, I should have been a professional. Fastball, I should have been a professional. I don't need anyone else in this pool. It's already a party, a party we have won. And I don't care if it's my birthday and none of my kids called. Fuck those kids. Anything can be wine if you leave it in your refrigerator long enough. My grandpa faked his death. Yep. Told us he got hit by a car. We should have known when he called us to tell us that, that he was lying. He's the one who made the call, but we didn't care. It was Halloween. We thought he was a ghoul. I don't even need a floaty. I am the floaty. Ah, the float man. Ah, the float man. Ah, the float man. Fit my bird. Go, go, go. Baby. Pay me the money. Pay me the money. Wire it to my offshore accounts. God, this pool tastes like beer. It's beginning to look a lot like I fucked my life up. <laughs> Jolly old Saint Nicholas. Why do I have gout? Why do my feet hurt so bad and they cost too much pizza? grocery store and give the lady in the checkout line a coupon for Uncle Ben's rice. I don't like to get political, but can you believe those jokers in Washington? <laughs> What's the longest you ever hold your breath for? Are you going to be quiet because you have a camera? Mine's infinity. Before I was born. <laughs> Held my breath for infinity. Because we don't know time. Before you're born, we don't know how time works. But you can't hold your breath for infinity. No fucking way. No fucking way. Relaxing with Tommy.
420. That's my credit score. <laughs> Six, six, six. Heard of it? Is that too edgy for you, Pit Viper? Six, six, six. It's just numbers. It's just numbers. Four, four, four. Nine, one, one. Three, eleven. Whoa. Ember is the color of your energy. Whoa. Red storm. Whoa. What if snakes are just zombie dicks? Huh? You ever think about that? Every snake is just a severed penis. Or something. Or someone. I think about that all the time. Every day of my life I think about it. The worms are their little babies. Put that in your pipe and drink it. Sing with Dami. They call it preparation H, but you only ever use it after you get the hemorrhoid. Should be called aftershock age. Or ew age. Or what the fuck is going on with my asshole age? Or why does it hurt to shit so bad age? Or why am I so itchy in the middle of the night age? Or ew, my hands smell real bad. What did I do while I was asleep age? <laughs> you know, in Spanish, J's sound like H's. Think about it. Next time you go to judge a book price cover, it might be Hamanji instead of Jamanji. I saw Top Gun Maverick 49 times the first month it was out. It crippled me financially. But I just couldn't stop going to the danger zone. Something about that movie. A man trying to be a father to a son that's not biologically his was a story I could relate to. Well, viewing number 45, a woman brought an infant into the theater. And I fucking lost it. I went to the danger zone. I, I became a person I wasn't proud of, okay? I caught that hating feeling. And that hatred was towards that baby. I didn't do anything myself, but I called security and they tased the baby. That's not on me. I would never tase a baby. I just said, get him out. But the guy working security had a quick trigger finger and he tased his ass. 
He's fine. Baby's fine. Baby's fine. Baby's fine. Baby's fine. Have you never been tased before? You got pure body, no get no voltage. You are no volt. Fastball. Good man, bro. They say there's more than one way to skin a cat. By my count, there's 237. But if you find a 238, I'll split my pit viper money with you. <laughs> How do you split $5 two ways, you cheap fucks? Relaxing with Tommy. with Tommy. Wow, relaxing with Tommy. That was amazing. Coming up, we have red flag expenses with Krista. You're going to want to stay tuned to see how people have misused company cards. Is that exciting or what? But even more exciting than that is Chuck and Chris bet me 100 US dollars that I could not belch on command. Well, they bet the wrong fella. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Are you ready, friends in the studio? Yeah! Here we go. take my hundred dollars. Thank you very much, Chuck and Christopher. Thank you. Thank you. And I could teach anyone in the building if you're interested. Don't walk through here right now. It does not smell good, but it is as simple as swallowing air. See all the air that's everywhere? You go like this and you catch it in your mouth and you go. And you can sing songs. You can say Pip Viper, Telethon. Let's see if we can do 69. Let's do it in a belch. Here we go. This is it. My doctor says not to do it, but I do it for the people. The telethon's going amazing. We're making so much money. In case you did not notice, there's a case of pit vipers over there and it's encased inside of an arcade game. Yes, when I was a young lad, I used to get a soda pop. We didn't have pit vipers, wish we had them. And I'd go to a place called Tilt and my mommy and daddy would give me $5 and I'd play all the video games in the world. I wish there had been something like that and I could have put my quarters in and got pit vipers. Guess what? Last chance, time's running out, 69% off, the exact fade double wides. You're gonna wanna get them now. It stinks really bad up here, but I'm warm and cozy and I made $100 from the comfy, 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 comfy cough lines of pit viper HQ because I can in fact belch on cue. See? It's as simple as that. I hope you enjoy listening to our friend talk about expenses that went awry. Went awry? Went awry? Aye, 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 aye. All right, keep watching and tune in. I hope you haven't left or are more disgusted by what I just did. I had a good time. Hope you did too. Boop, boop. <laughs> see you there. Come on in. I've been meaning to talk to you. If you have ever been called into the accountant's office at a business organization like this, 
you may be in trouble. My name is Krista and I'm the accountant here at Pit Viper and I handle all the money. I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of things I've noticed that might be considered red flags. What is a red flag? How the fuck would I know? If you saw my dating history, you would also wonder. A red flag could be considered like a, an unusual or suspicious expense that makes me, the accountant, raise my eyebrow and say, what the fuck is this? Let's review a couple of hypothetical company card expenses that would raise a red flag. First one, number 187. Did you make a personal purchase on the company card? Oops, well tough shit, you owe that money back to the company and I will be taking it out of your next paycheck. I don't wanna be involved in your personal life, this is a red flag. Next up, airline tickets. Just because it's a business trip doesn't mean it's business class or first class. The company does not owe you a first class ticket. Number 168, tattoos. Yeah, no, just no. If you wanna get a tattoo at 1.32 a.m. in Florida on your inner thigh, that's up to you. But tattoos are never an approved company expense. Dinner expenses. Now, as a professional accountant, I went to years of schooling. I love numbers. I'm great with spreadsheets. I'm very smart. And I definitely will look up something called the Diamond Cabaret and they're not known for their steaks. Now let's talk hotel expenses, nightly stays on the company. How about a stay at the Anniversary Inn and a purchase at the Blue Boutique? I know what you did, and these are not approved company expenses. This is a red flag. Number 125, food. Now I understand that we as humans are creature of habit, and with that, we tend to eat at the same place days in a row, probably the same meal. I get it, I do that. But to eat at the same restaurant four days in a row and then the next day make a large purchase at the CVS, probably for Pepto-Bismol, is concerning. I'm not disappointed, I'm just watching out for your health. Please eat a salad sometime. And also know that Max in HR is just the next door over. By the way, I hope you're enjoying my Pepto-Bismol pink presentation. Wait a minute, what's that? Yeah, your liver has definitely raised a red flag. Now, putting hundreds or thousands of dollars on a company card, any accountant would know right away that is a red flag and not acceptable. While it might be okay to partake like this in your personal life, that's fine, no judgment. Number 86, you try to take out cash. I can't believe I have to say this again. You guys really don't know how company cards work, but you cannot take out cash on a company card. That is never approved. This is a red flag. As an accountant, I will need to know the legitimate business reason as to why you need cash in Vegas. Number 75, all the things Krista, your awesome, amazing accountant, didn't get invited to. I see everything. I see all the card transactions. You guys go out and do so many fun things. And do I get an invite? Never. I see them a month later when they come through on the statement. I'm not saying I take bribes, but maybe invite your accountant sometime. Have you considered the perks of inviting your accountant? I could pay. The reason this is a red flag is because I, the accountant, didn't get invited. Nice. Now that we've discussed the hypothetical expenses, let's review the financial priorities here at Pit Viper. For any other company, these expenses would be insane, but for Pit Viper, they are completely normal. But first, look at my charts. I really enjoy putting them together. They actually really don't mean anything, but I love looking at them and dreaming about numbers while I sleep at night. Financial priority number 68, corn dogs. 69,000 of them to be exact. These are a vital company purchase. Our business operations literally shut down when we run out of corn dogs. Moving down the list, our next financial priority, renting private jets and not flying them anywhere. This is a vital business expense. Number 53, force an employee to fly to Vegas and write back. This is a vital business expense. It made sense to someone Maybe that was that person's boss and they were just mad at them and decided to pull a little prank. Oh, that the company paid for. Number 47, 
We purchase toilets to shit wherever we want. Poor nugs, you know? It's vital business expense. Number 39, keeping the office clean. Looks like maybe we need to spend a little more money here because the office always smells like corn dog farts. But seriously, employees of Pit Viper, I am tired of your shit. Shit in the fridge, you have shit in the sink, dog shit, clean up your shit already, God. Next up, we've got health insurance. These are actual three Pit Viper employees all injured in the same year. This is a vital business expense. Scoot ski, it's a jet ski, it's a scooter, it's something we spent money on. Nobody ever lets me know, I don't ask any questions, but this is a legitimate business expense here at Pit Viper. What else do we do here at Pit Viper? We buy bicycles and light them on fire. This doesn't make sense, but it is also a vital business expense. Many bicycles were harmed in the making of this video. Here at Pit Viper, we feel it is our duty as a sunglass company to purchase many vehicles and give them away. Have you won one yet? You could someday. I guarantee that I'll be the one making the purchase. So I'll pretty much be buying you a car. Another duty of a modern sunglass company is to purchase vehicles and crash them. It really is a lost art and Pit Viper is bringing it back. This is a vital business expense. You think I was done talking about cars? We buy cars just so people can take them for free. We originally bought this car to give it away and it was stolen, but we got it back. We were able to recover it. However, it got stolen for a second time. They did a good job that time because it's never found again. And lastly, something that is very near and dear to all of our hearts, Pit Viper gives a fuck. We've donated to so many foundations and organizations that are close to us that we believe in, like the Trevor Project or the Folded Flag Foundation, whether it's a monetary donation, pairs of Pit Viper sunglasses given away, or trees planted. We give a fuck. In all seriousness, do we even make money here? As the accountant at Pit Viper, I am starting to wonder. It's like we're a bunch of college kids who just got their first paycheck and we piss it all away the next day, whether that's cars purchased, Bikes to light on fire, definitely some booze, and probably maybe some Pepto-Bismol. Please consider making a purchase during the Pit Viper 69-hour for-profit telethon so that we may continue to buy and break and burn and crash these things in the future. In conclusion, let's go over what we learned. As the accountant here at Pit Viper, I see everything. I know every transaction that you spend. I'm not sure why you don't think I see everything, but I am all seeing. I know what you did. Maybe I haven't approached you about it. Maybe I will. I see the things no one wishes would be seen. If only people knew. Well, that's it. Get the fuck out. Thanks so much for coming. That was tremendous. You can see that everybody is spending responsibly here. And that and that's just how it is. She did a tremendous job. I enjoyed that. That segment was outstanding. The pledges keep coming in. We are getting ready for an evening of entertainment. We have an incredible show coming up next. What's that show again? What's coming up, team? Turkey time! Turkey time! Gobble, 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 gee! And it's fitting because Turkey Day is coming here very soon this week this is a week of sales celebration family and good times why don't you gobble 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 your way to the keyboard and blah 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 buy some pit vipers for you a friend tap 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 69% off about 10 minutes these are gone forever the exec fade double wides but guess what the entire site is 31% off. You can find something you want. You can sign up right now, click, 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 get a free tote bag, bumper sticker, enter to win an ATC. Who wouldn't want an ATC? You'd be the toast of the town. You'd be the coolest kid on the block. Actually, you already are, and we love you. And we're so happy you're here. But remember, you only have a few 
two more minutes to get the exact fades. Coming up, we're gonna have another set of sunglasses that's gonna be 69% off. So stay tuned for turkey time. Gobble, 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 gee. Pit Viper, 69 hour telethon. It's happening, people. There's only one company on the planet that was crazy enough to do it. And we're taking your pledges, we're taking your phone calls, and we're taking all the profits. Yeah! Hey, come here. Bye. Oh. Okay. Bye bye. <clears throat> okay, let's get the the lighting set up here. Make sure we're looking good. Oh. Hummingbird. All righty, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. My name's Dr. Turkey Man. I'm heading out to try and find some cats. As you can see, I just left my house, got my cup of coffee, and I'm just gonna wander around my neighborhood hoping to find some cats. There's a simple game I like to play where you get a point for every cat you see, you get two points every time you touch a cat, and you get three points if you're able to pick the cat up. Now, the points are cumulative, meaning you can score up to six points per cat. And I've seen quite a few around my neighborhood. Not sure if they'll be friendly or frightful, but that's what we're coming out here to find out. So I've got you on the stream for about about an hour today. This camera cannot record for one hour straight, so there will be one cut in the middle. And there's not going to be any funny business, don't worry. That's about it though. That's my intro for playing the cat game. And I'm going to readjust my camera here, give you a bit of a point of view of wandering around. So one sec here. So this is Dr. Turkey Man's live view. This is what I am seeing as I walk through my neighborhood looking for cats. Whenever I take a sip of coffee, the cup will move like this. Oh. This coffee is making me feel fucked. Now, I've seen a few cats on my block <clears throat> in the past. I've never seen any friendly ones. But the point of the game is to kind of just wander around aimlessly and hope, hope they find you. Oh, I see a cat. We've got one. First cat of the day. Kitty. Come here, buddy. Come here, kitty. Kitty. Come here, buddy. Oh, this one seems frightful. Come here. I'm going to set my coffee down right there. Uh-oh. We don't want these guys hanging out in the street. Kitty, come here. That cat's very scared. Running under cars. <clears throat> but I do have one point for the day. I hope you are patient because this game moves very slowly. Come here, buddy. Come here. Put my coffee.
copy right there. You probably can't see, but the cat is crouching under this truck. Okay, well, you gotta know when to call it quits. <clears throat> but hey, you can score one point before you're even off your block. That ain't bad. <clears throat> and I would like to point out... One second here. Got quite the handful. <clears throat> Something I'd like to point out is the fact that you get a point for seeing a cat. And I feel like there may be some criticism as to whether or not that's worth it because anybody can just see a cat walking around the neighborhood. They're running around. But here's what I have to say about that. There's incentive to look for the cat. So rather than just strolling down the block, you're actually putting some effort into trying to spot them. Therefore, I feel like you're more likely to see the cats. And I feel like I see a lot more cats than your average person while I'm out walking around because I want the points. So I'm looking for the cats. Now this normally, this normally wouldn't be fair in the game, I don't think. But this is my sixth consecutive hour playing this game this week. My girlfriend mentioned seeing a friendly cat on this block yesterday when I should have been out playing the game. But instead I was at home editing video. So I feel like I'm kind of cheating a little bit by knowing where there was a friendly cat. But that only counts if I find that cat and then I get to touch it. Oh, that's a good cup of coffee. Just gonna switch hands here, stay in the spot, make sure the camera's still filming. We're still rolling. We've got another 52 minutes of looking for cats, so if you're just joining the, the live stream here, we're playing a little cat game where I wander around. I just left my house about eight minutes ago, and I just wander around looking for cats. And you get points for picking them up, you get points for seeing them, you get points for touching them. I, I believe I'm at one point at the moment. I saw a cat just a moment ago, but I was not able to touch it or pick it up. So that's what we got going on today on the telethon. I really hope I can pick one up. Because I feel like people who have never played the cat hunt game before, the, sorry, the cat game, it's called the cat game, for simplicity's sake. No, I want to go this way. And I want to switch my hand. Oh, there's a man with dogs over there. That's not good. You'll see, uh oh, I'm in the middle of the street, fumbling around with a camera and my coffee. You'll see a large coffee stain on my shirt. That's from playing the cat game the other day. I feel like I was about to say something. <clears throat> Before I switch directions. Oh yeah, I feel like if you've never played the cat game, if you're not really a cat person, 
you hear the this game, you hear this idea, and you say, there's no way this guy is going to pick up a cat. But you would be surprised how many friendly cats are out there. You almost always get one, but I've had an unsuccessful week trying to pick up cats. It's a real bummer because I love cats. And if you've been watching since the beginning, I, I, I bade farewell to our cat from my house. I bowed, I bowed farewell to my cat in my house this morning as I left. Now I'm just out in my neighborhood looking for other cats. <clears throat> All right, we got a busy street, we got a bus. Cats probably don't like buses roaring by. But maybe the bus will flush out some cats, send them running, and then Trev walks by and rakes in the points. Sorry, there's gonna be a lot of adjusting because holding this camera the way that I am really hurts my hand and my wrist. So I'll be complaining about that a whole lot over the course of the next hour. I got a little tickle in my throat, so I'm gonna be making a lot of funny, funny obnoxious noises like that. Kitties. It's funny, as I've been playing this game a lot, there's a sign in that window that says a psycho kitty lives here. No cat though, didn't see a cat. As I've been playing this game a lot in the past week, I've been trying to strategize. This is the fourth neighborhood I've spent over an hour trying to find cats in. I spent f over four hours the other day wandering around playing this game, was unable to pick up a cat. Brutal. Always able to get a cat, but not today. Let's go through here. No, we're going this way. But yes, I've been trying to strategize and thinking about what makes the most sense, what time you should go out, what neighborhood you should go to, where there will be the most cats. And I think I've determined that none of it matters and it's just kind of, you gotta just walk around and maybe you get lucky. So that's what I'm hoping for today. But I feel like morning and like dusk, dusk and dawn or like slightly after and before are probably the best time for cats to be out. I don't think they wanna be out midday. But the time I was most successful was right in the middle of the day. And perhaps another rule I should make is if you get within talking distance of a person, you have to ask them if they've seen any cats. Ooh, there's a cat in the window. Take at that point. Take at that point. Hi, kitty. Pretty kitty. Maybe another rule I'll make is if I see a cat indoors, <clears throat> I have to go knock on the person's door and ask them if they'll let their cat outside. All right, we're gonna turn the corner here. We're gonna get off this street. We're gonna get a little deeper into the neighborhood. And here we go. Oh yeah, a little shade, baby. I'm gonna switch my hands up here. Maybe I'll give you that point of view look again where you can see my coffee out in front of me. So these electrical boxes are your best friend on a cat hunt. Your best friend when you're playing the cat game. Because you can put your coffee down and readjust your grip on the camera. Which is important when your wrists and fingers hurt so bad. Oh, 
huh. I wonder if I should go through there. Yeah, normally I wouldn't walk through an area like this because it doesn't really seem like it's where cats would be, but we'll try it out. And I see a person, so if I pass them, I'll ask them if they've seen any cats. <clears throat> oh, they have a dog. Hey, there's the kitty. It's running for me. Oh, and there's a the dog in the other direction. This isn't good. Oh, there it goes. Okay, I've got to get that cat. Oh, it sounds like it just hopped over a fence. Hi. Hey. Damn, I totally think I would have had that cat if those dogs hadn't been walking by. I hope you can see that one on the camera because I'm using a fisheye, which probably doesn't lend itself well to cats. But there, were, there was a cat in front of me running the other direction. There were dogs coming from the other direction. And the cat ran into one of these alleys and jumped over a fence in this one's yard. So take another point, but I will not rest until I get a cat. <clears throat> All right, a little bit of a zigzag here. Oh, maybe we'll zigzag back through here and that cat will be out here. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going for it. For any of you, for anyone who's joining us, we're about 15 minutes into the stream. My name's Dr. Turkey Man and I'm playing the cat game, which is where you walk around aimlessly looking for cats. You get one point if you see a cat two points for touching the cat, three points for picking the cat up. The points are cumulative, meaning you can score up to six points per cat. Now, this morning, if you've been with us the whole time, which has been about 15 minutes, you'll know that I've seen about three cats. I think I've seen three. The points will be keeping track in the bottom of the screen there and I left from the front door of my house. So I just saw one in this alley, but someone was walking their dogs and it kinda, oh, there's a cat, let's go get this one. It's way down at the end of the block, so hopefully it's still there when I get there. It had a, a relaxed gait to it, so hopefully it's friendly. <clears throat> if you stepped away or if you're just joining us, I'm playing the cat game and I just saw a cat at the end of the block. It should be up here around the corner to the left. Keep your fingers crossed there's no garbage truck or dogs going by. The objective of the game is to pick cats up, so... Okay, it should be right up here around the left corner. Kitty! Oh, there's one. Shit, there's two. What do I do? I'll try and get this guy into the spot. Hey, buddy! Are you friendly? Come here, kitty. Set my coffee down right there. Come here, buddy. This guy looks skittish. Meow. Come on out. Come here, buddy. Hey. 
Hey, kitty. Come here. Okay. That cat clearly doesn't want to play. But that's not the cat that I saw from the end of the street. That cat was going this way. Check under the... Oh, there's a the cat under a car. That's my guy. Come here, buddy. Come here. I'm going to set my coffee down right there. Buddy. There's another one in the bushes. That one's scared too. Oh, there's the cars crossing. Oh, there go my chances. <coughs> oh. <coughs> I hope my coffee's gonna be okay over there. Kitty. Come here, buddy. Oh, this guy looks soft. Come here. Person's out in the yard with a dog. Oh, that's not good. Okay, suppose we'll move along then. Little black cats out over there. Tell you what. I don't think any of those cats were going to approach me. They all seemed pretty skittish. But I'll tell you what, the amount of times a dog or a city bus has come out and scared a cat off while I was about to pick it up really makes me angry. I don't like dogs. Anyhow. Real lucrative area for seeing cats. There seemed to be a small, small colony of them or whatever, a nest. Not a very good area for picking cats up. So we're gonna, Jesus Christ. We're gonna head eastbound. That dog is out of control. You know what, people? A little PSA here from a, someone who absolutely hates dogs. Keep your dogs on a leash. I'm just kidding, I don't hate dogs. I was going to try and improv, come up with a funny joke about dogs and pretend to be really mad about it. But the truth is, I just didn't have it in me, so I gave up. Sorry about that. I feel like I just heard a cat meow. Huh. Kitty! We're gonna get one for you guys, don't worry. Ooh. Thought I saw someone walking cats, but they're just little tiny dogs. That'd probably be some easy points though, someone's walking their cats on leashes, and I walk up and I say, hey, let me touch these guys. See a photo of a cat in a window. Ooh, trash. I wonder if cats like trash. 
All right, I gotta utilize another one of these electrical boxes to readjust my grip here. <clears throat> We've got about 35 minutes left on the stream. That is plenty of time to get a cat. So if you are on the edge of your seat behind your computer there, rest assured, it's never too late to get a cat. And if you're just joining the stream, what I mean by getting a cat is we're out here playing the cat game. <clears throat> Dr. Turkey Man, that's my name. I'm wandering around my neighborhood looking for cats. You get points for seeing them, touching them, picking them up. So far today I've only been able to see them. I've not been able to get my hands on any cats. This game is best played. Ooh, there's a big fluffy cat. That's the one that the dog scared away over there. Okay, we're gonna, kitty. Come here, buddy. I'm gonna leave my coffee right here and then I'm gonna go in on foot. Come here, kitty. There it goes. Well, I'll bring my coffee with it. I'll try to get a little closer. <clears throat> Man, if you've been watching the whole time, there are a lot of cats out today. I picked a good time. I didn't know there were so many cats in my neighborhood. However, geez, the damn dogs in this neighborhood. Tell you what, folks. Some out of date Halloween decor. Okay, that cat ran off into this corner. Kitty. Ooh, some dogs in a yard. Oh, I'm going to go this way. You gotta love dogs, right? <clears throat> Just a little Technical, technical tip here. The camera is going to stop recording in two minutes, and then I will fire it right back up. That indicates the halfway mark of this live stream. And when I flip that switch on again, I'll give any newcomers the rundown of what's going on here. All right, this is a pretty busy street, so we're going to want to get away from it. of cats back there today. Crossing over to the shady side. Folks, I'll give you a little quick rundown what's going on here. Just a minute. <clears throat> All 
All right, six seconds. I'm going to have to get the stream fired back up again. All right, welcome back, everyone. For anyone who's just joining us, my name is Dr. Turkey Man, MD. And today, I'm playing the cat game where I wander around a neighborhood looking for cats. This is a point-based game. If you see a cat, you get one point. You'll see, based on my score in the bottom corner of the screen, that I have scored a few points. It's only been sightings. I've only seen cats today. If you touch a cat, you get two points. If you pick a cat up, you get three points. Now, the points are cumulative. The last time I published a video of playing this game on the internet, a lot of people pointed out the loophole in my scoring. <clears throat> they said, so what, you get six points per cat? I've decided, yes, in fact, you do. And that's because the cat game's just for fun. You're just trying to get cats, so the more points you get, the better. There's a bit of incentive involved. <clears throat> but the real point is, we're just out here trying to play with some cats. We're trying to find the friendly cats in the neighborhood. We've been at it for about half an hour. <clears throat> I've seen quite a few cats. They've all been skittish. They've all ran away, which is a big blow to my confidence and my ego because I pride myself as someone who's very good with cats and can almost always lure them in. <clears throat> However, I've never played in this neighborhood and perhaps, geez, these dogs. Perhaps there are more feral cats in this neighborhood. Oh my God, grow up. Perhaps there's more feral cats and they're just a little, a little more untrustworthy of people. Untrusting of people. Sorry, my language isn't coming through so good today because I'm uh, uh, maybe only halfway through my cup of coffee. So that's the gist of it. We're trying to find cats. I've got you for about another 30 minutes here. This is live video. So I left my house about half an hour ago. I said goodbye to the cat at my house. If you've been with us since the beginning, I was almost able to touch him on video before leaving the house, which would not count towards my points. I'm an honest player. <clears throat> and if you're also new to the stream, if you've just joined, I've been complaining periodically about my wrist and my fingers because of how I have to carry this camera. And I often am setting my drink down and readjusting my grip, which is what I'm going to do right now. <clears throat> See, I do that. I'm going to put the strap around my neck, give you a little point of view. Oh, there's a dead bird. <clears throat> Some fighter jets above, that's good for finding cats. <clears throat> Also, if you're joining the stream, I've got a little junk in my throat, so I'm making quite a few noises. And I do not apologize about that, because I think it's kind of funny. Ooh, there's a cat in the yard. Kitty! Ooh, there's a sign in the yard that says, Caution, Cats at Play. I see a water bowl and a food dish, perhaps? Maybe that cat will come out of the yard in a little bit to play. But there's only so much you can do when you see a cat from a distance in a yard. And one of the things you can do is just take your point and leave. I'm currently being followed by a man walking a dog. So, just my luck, if I find a friendly cat, that dog's probably gonna blast through and ruin my fun. 
Bet the guy's nice though. It's such a bummer when you see so many cats but you don't get to touch any of them. up on a bit of a busy street so maybe I'll <clears throat> go towards it and then I'll double back stick to the neighborhood stick to these slow moving residential streets I've rarely seen any cats out near busy streets that is a tip from the master however I feel bad calling myself the master based on my performance today. I'm seeing cats, I'm not able to pick them up. Ooh, there's a cop car over there. Ooh, there's a kitty. Kitty. Come here, buddy. You wanna get touched? Kitty, come on. Meow, meow. This cat seems friendly, but it's in a yard and there's a police officer behind me. So I don't want to walk into the yard. Kitty. Well, maybe it'll get up in a sec. that cat has been startled by this barking dog and it's gets startled right into my waiting hands <clears throat> kitty I'm gonna set my coffee down right there come here buddy Oh, here we go. See? Meow. Come here. If I touch you, I get two points. Come here, kitty. Yay. Come on. There we go. All right, now, come here. Come on, buddy. Meow, meow. Friendly kitty. Yeah, good boy. Poor girl. Good kitty. Oh, kitty, it's okay. Here's where it gets fun. This is when you try and pick the cat up. Come here. Good kitty. Come here. Come back here. Make sure we're still recording. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh. Kitty. Come here. I'll try to lure the trust.
Damn. All right, it's going back to lay down. I don't think I've ever had that happen before, where a friendly cat comes up, it's meowing at you, you get to pet it, and then you usually just are able to pick it up, but I kind of, I botched the pickup job. And then I scared the cat away and it wandered off into the yard. But, that's why you play the cat game. It's exciting, you get to touch cats, and, because you almost always get cats. Hold on, let me readjust my grip here. I feel like I'm shooting right into the sun. Yeah, I I feel like if you've been watching since the beginning, we are about 40 minutes into the stream and that's how long it took to get a cat. If you stick with it and you've got patience and you like cats, the cat game is for you and you will almost always get to play with a nice cat. So I've still got about 20 minutes left. Maybe I'll go over if the, if the cats keep coming. Maybe this will be an hour and a half live stream. I don't know. We'll see what uh, the, IT, the IT team does. Maybe they cut me off in an hour. Maybe they'll let me spill into someone else's time if I'm getting a lot of cats. Anyhow, I've lost track of my points. The screen below should be keeping track. But that was a three-point cat because I saw it and then I was able to touch it. I was not able to pick it up. I got close, but I botched it. And if any of you at home are just joining the stream, we're playing the cat game. My name is Dr. Turkey Man. We're streaming live. I'm wandering around my neighborhood trying to pick up cats. That's the ultimate goal. However, seeing cats, you get a point for seeing cats, you get a, two points for touching cats, you get three points for picking cats up, and the points are cumulative, meaning you can earn up to six per cat. So that last cat, if you were with us, that was three points. I spotted it, I snapped at it and said, come here buddy, and mimicked meowing noises, and then it eventually wandered up and I was able to pet it and scratch it. Very friendly kitty. That's what we're talking about. If I only get that one cat this whole hour, I can go home happy. However, the more the merrier. If I can just start racking cats up, maybe we'll try one of these alleys. Ooh, there's a bird. Um, do it, yeah, let's, let's just go with the alley. We can zigzag back up that way in a minute. My coffee's very good. I put cordyceps in it this morning, which is a powdered mushroom that supposedly gives you energy and it's good for you. And I don't know how I'm feeling energy-wise, but I'm feeling pretty stoked about touching that last cat. And as I wrapped up there, a man was leaving the yard behind me with a dog, looking at me suspiciously because I was towing into his neighbor's yard trying to touch a cat. So I had to get out of there. That's where we're at now. I don't know if I should have came in this alley. It seems pretty unwelcoming to cats. A lot of cacti. Anyhow, if you're just joining the stream, I also forgot to mention how much I've been complaining about carrying this camera. It's making my wrist and fingers hurt. And because of that, I've been having to put my coffee down a lot to adjust my grip. So I'm gonna do that in just a moment. Oh God. <laughs> 
So we'll get you a kind of point of view style. This is what, this is live stream. This is what I'm seeing in the moment, in this exact moment. I'm walking around with my coffee outstretched, getting barked at. The dogs are barking. All right, when we get up here, we're going to hammer left. We haven't been that way yet. And then maybe... Utilizing things like this to adjust your grip on the camera is encouraged. But I'd just like to say that anyone can play the cat game. It's most fun when you get to pet cats and pick them up. But it can also be fun and rewarding in a different way when you don't. Because there's always the excitement of seeing a cat, which you see far more often than you'd think. And if I may plug a video I made in the past, if you go to Pit Viper's YouTube channel and you go back to roughly December of 2020, I made a video, I believe the title is How to Steal Other People's Pets, and it's the inaugural cat game on camera. And I did much better that time, however that was not a live stream, that was a whole day pretty much chopped up and edited so it was kind of like a best of a, play, a day playing the cat game whereas today it's one live hour from the moment i left my door this morning wandering around the neighborhood looking for cats perhaps i'll jackknife up to the left here yes yes i will the shade of this tree feels wonderful. There could be a cat anywhere in this very moment. And when I think that, I say, that's crazy. We're going to switch my grip again here. Make sure the camera's still recording. Is this audio going to be good? Is this video going to be good? I don't know, but the whole live stream idea is new to me, so that is kind of an exciting element. I hope you've been enjoying the telethon. I don't even know what else has been going on on the telethon, because I've been out looking for cats for weeks now. Kitty, 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 kitty. There's the alley I went down. That was a bad choice. That's right, I did walk on this street a moment ago. Forgot about that. But, you know, cats are out cruising the streets. You go around the block, you come back, there might be a new cat. I'm chewing on something from my coffee. Must be some of those powders I put in there. Yummy. We've got about 10 more minutes to the stream. However, I'll probably just record all the way to when I get home. Because I'm not going to be home in 10 minutes and I might see some more cats on the way there. I hit a hot spot on the way over here. If you've been with us the whole stream, I hit a hot spot. I saw maybe six cats total. They all seemed to be stray or feral. None of them trusted me and they all ran off. There's a big shaggy one. Thought I heard a cat meowing again. This game really perks your senses up, I'll tell you what. Okay, so 
Over there is where I got a cat earlier. Touched, did not pick up. Three point cat. How'd I get three points? Well, one for seeing it, two for touching it. If you're joining the stream, this is the foundation of my scoring system for the cat game that I'm playing at the moment. My name is Dr. Turkey Man, MD, and I'm wandering around my neighborhood live looking for cats. This has never been done before. I was just mentioning a video I made for Pit Viper a couple years ago where I did this for a day and kind of chopped it up and made an edit. And boy, did I rack up some points that day. However, today we're playing live, so it's much slower going. You're seeing it <coughs> unfold in real time. <coughs> oh, geez, I'm really choking on my coffee. I should stop putting so many powders and things in there because they don't dissolve and then you choke on them. What am I going to do when I get home? Maybe I'll make another cup of coffee. I make coffee a very specific way. Okay, we still got about nine minutes left. I make coffee a very specific way and it takes <coughs> about 20 minutes. And sometimes I make it twice and there goes, you know, almost an hour of my day preparing coffee. But I have to make it that way because, ooh, a big flock of birds just took off. Every cat in the neighborhood heard that one. Come on, cat. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. So what I'm thinking is we're going to zigzag a little more in some new areas and then when the end of this Eight minutes hits us. Whoa! Hope the microphone picked that up. Jeez, it is crazy out here. I came out here looking for cats. I didn't think I was gonna get a fucking aerial show. Holy heck. Anyhow, I think I was saying it's hard to keep your focus here when you're looking for cats, you're filming yourself, you're trying to drink coffee. You're trying to think of entertaining stuff to talk about while you're on a full hour live stream wandering around a neighborhood by yourself. I've seen very few people. Normally I feel a little self-conscious filming myself and talking to a camera, but there's nothing to feel bad about. Nobody's out here. It's great outside. What a good way to start your day. So I was talking about my coffee. I think I was gonna mention my route. I was gonna kind of zigzag through some new territory. And the stream was only gonna be an hour, but perhaps, seeing as there's a hotbed of cats between me and my house, which is where I'm going, we'll just, we'll just keep streaming. We'll go through that hotbed again. Maybe we'll see some new cats. Maybe we'll get some cats. And I'd like to point out this is a fucking dead zone over here, other than those birds. No cats, no people. Bird of prey, though. I'd like to point out, I do not use treats or food to lure the cats in. That should be obvious this round especially, because I've seen so many cats, but they've all ran away from me. And it's only that one I got. If you've been watching the whole time, I was able to pet one cat, very friendly. I tried to pick it up and I kind of, I think I, I approached it a little aggressively. I scared the cat. Even though it was a friendly cat, you know, I grabbed it and really just tried to get it up because I wanted the points. I got greedy. I'm going to cut under this giant tree here. Seems kind of fun. It's like a cool tunnel you'd play in as a kid. But I'm an adult and I'm playing in it. All right, we're gonna switch arms here. I'm gonna utilize this tree to set my coffee down. Okay. 
Okay, I don't like that. Okay. Got you back. Got you back in, in sight. Cruising up a busy street here. We're zigzagging back into a more low key area. Have not seen a cat since I was able to touch that one. Funny how this game works, huh? You never know what's gonna happen. I set out for my house almost an hour ago, about 55 minutes ago. I see a cat before I get to the end of the block. I go into this kind of condo complex area. I see another cat, I see another cat. Cats are crawling. This place was crawling with cats. But I wasn't able to get any of them. And then I cross this busy street I see maybe another one or two cats, one of which was friendly, I was able to touch it. Got some points, also got a good interaction with a nice cat. Okay, let's, yeah, right and then left. But then, you touch a cat, haven't seen one since. What's going on? These cats have a damn curfew or something? <clears throat> I'd also like to point out, I'm gonna have to switch hands again, I'm really sorry. I'll put my coffee down right here. Also check in. I've got about three minutes left on the stream, but I'm not home yet, so maybe I'll just keep it going. If anyone is just joining us, you're catching the tail end of a live stream with Dr. Turkey Man, MD, myself. Oh, Jesus, I thought that was a cat. But it was a dog barking at me. Man, those dogs, I tell you what, they really take the fun out of the cat game. They scare the cats off, they scare me. Okay, I saw a cat in this apartment complex earlier. Got about two minutes before I need to press record again because this camera can only record for 30 minute intervals. Donut. Oh, I was saying before those dogs wrecked my time, my name is Dr. Turkey Man, we're streaming live. I'm wandering around my neighborhood looking for cats. The goal is to gain points, but also just to have a good time touching cats. You get one point for seeing cats. You get two points if you're able to touch the cats. You get three points if you're able to pick the cats up. I've been somewhat unlucky. I've seen quite a few, but they've all been a little skittish and they've run off. However, I was able to touch a cat about 10 minutes ago. If you missed that, I'm very sorry. We've got another couple minutes here and then I'll be continuing the stream until I get to my house in the event that I see some cats between here and there. But I haven't seen any cats since I was able to pick that one up, which is kind of a bummer because it's really exciting to see cats. So we're gonna go up to Blackledge here. We're gonna take a right. Perhaps we will see a cat between then and now. Man, you really got to be on high alert here. I just saw some bags of trash outside of someone's door and I thought, is that a cat? I said, uh-uh, it's a bag of trash. I saw a cat in here that looked great earlier. Look, it was so soft. I was dying to touch it. But I was not able to. Okay, we have 30 seconds here until I need to restart the stream. I mean my camera, so I'm just gonna crouch, take a look around. Perhaps a cat will come out. If not, then I'll hit record again and on, a, on our way we'll be back towards home.
Okay, for those of you who have joined recently and you're watching this video and you're wondering, what the fuck am I watching? This is just some moron wandering around on a windy day, drinking coffee and unable to keep a single thread of thought going and finish a sentence. No, wrong. Maybe close, but it's actually a live stream with myself, Dr. Turkey Man, and I'm wandering around my neighborhood looking for cats. I get one point if I see a cat, I get two points if I'm able to touch a cat, and I get three points if I'm able to pick the cats up. And the points are cumulative, meaning you could get up to six points per cat. And I'm getting, I'm approaching my house. We've been streaming for about an hour. You can see my score down on the bottom of the screen, which is okay for a day, for an hour, a little over an hour playing the cat game from my front door. My coffee's almost gone. You know, I saw quite a few cats. I was able to touch one. Finding a friendly cat doesn't happen every day, so the fact that I was able to get one is pretty fun. I tried to pick it up and I failed, which is a bummer because I feel like if you're able to gain the cat's trust and you're able to pet it, you're almost always able to pick it up. Earlier today, I probably would have said, if you can pet a cat, you can pick it up. But I learned today that is not the case. I made a rush move. I tried to grab the cat. I thought I had it. And I kind of scared it and ran off. So, was not able to pick a cat up. Was able to touch a cat. That's something to take home with you. But, haven't seen a cat since that one. We're getting close to my house. I kind of. When I saw the cat, I zigzagged around the neighborhood a bit. Maybe I'll poke my head in here. Giant pile of shit. Gotta love dogs. This seems like a place you could see a cat. It's like in someone's apartment complex. Hell, I'd live here. This place seems great. Kitties. The one cat I was able to touch was in someone's driveway. I was kind of afraid to approach. The cat was lying down. And oftentimes if cats are lying down, they don't really seem to care that you want to touch them. This cat, to be fair, was also laying in the sun. Looked very comfortable, but I took a couple steps into the yard. Beyond my comfort zone, there's also a police officer parked across the street behind me, and I thought, uh-uh, that guy's got his eye on me, and See any kitties down here? No cats. Anyhow, I was saying the cop was there. I felt nervous about walking down someone's driveway who I don't know and trying to touch their cat. But then I took a couple steps in, the cat got up, wandered over it, let me touch it, and I scored a couple points. Had a fun time with that cat. So no cats in this little area. Let me readjust my grip here. Oh, I'm gonna need a little help, hold on. Need a place to set my drink. I guess I can just set it on the ground out here, but not, let me show you this hunk of shit over here. It's gigantic. For scale, it's about the same size as my cup of coffee. That's so pleasant. That's why, another reason I don't like dogs. So again, if you're just joining us here, I'm nearing my home. Oh God, I spilled coffee. That's why I have this giant coffee stain on my shirt. Because I'm wandering around carelessly sloshing my drink trying to look for cats. So my name is Dr. Turkey Man. I'm streaming on behalf of the Pit Viper Black Friday Telethon. Live stream, over an hour, I was wandering around my neighborhood looking for cats, trying to score points. I've been complaining about a pain in my wrists because of the way I've been having to hold this camera. I've told you about the cordyceps powder I put in my coffee and how long it takes to make, how I was kind of choking on it. And there was a tickle in my throat earlier, that went away. I'm on my block, I'm on my street, I'm nearing my house. 
recording, just hoping a friendly cat's gonna shoot out of the woodwork here and I'll be able to, ooh. I keep thinking I hear meows, but that doesn't, I don't think cats just meow. But maybe they know I'm looking for them. I did see a cat over here right when I left my house. Maybe it's feeling a little more courageous now. And it will let me pick it up. A lot of trash blown around. The street that I live on seems to be a bit of a vortex for trash, and every other block in my neighborhood looks nice. And somehow our street, the wind just like brings all the trash into our neighborhood. It's also, I mean street, sorry. There's couches, there's always like rotting furniture on the block. Our driveway in our backyard, which is fenced in, Trash is just showing up. There's a giant Cheetos bag blowing around our driveway right now because the the wind is bringing it all in. <clears throat> Anyhow, we're getting close to my house. I have little to no hope at this point of finding another cat because I've almost never seen any on our street. Actually, that's not true. I see them from my bedroom window all the time. You just gotta get a little closer and try and get my hands on them. A couple friendly people out this morning, exchanging some waves with people. Normally when I play the cat game, I talk to people. I see people all over the place. And I ask them if they've seen any cats. It didn't happen today. I didn't really get close enough to anybody. Come on, man. How sick would that be if I got one more right before I got home. I'm going to switch my grip here again. This is how I get coffee stain all over my Pit Viper shirt. My Pit Viper. <clears throat> Dangerously close to my house. This yard up here, I see cats coming in and out pretty regularly from my bedroom window. Different color ones too, it's not like there's one cat coming in and out. I've seen a black cat, I've seen a kind of stripey cat, and man, I've just never even gotten to get close to them. But maybe fate will bring us together today. I'm not seeing them. Maybe one will be in my yard. There's a giant gray hog of a cat inside of my house, but he is domesticated and I touch him every single day. Okay, this is the final moments here. I have seen cats up here. Kitty, nothing. On that note, I suppose, it's time to sign off and say bye. Hope you enjoyed the live stream today. A little over an hour looking for cats in the neighborhood. We did score one on the kind of the apex of my walk today. I saw quite a few to start. That's about it. I hope you enjoy the telethon, everybody. Stay powerful, my friends. Okay, bye bye now. Signing off. <laughs> Thank you.
everybody. Let's give a round of applause to the band. And uh, <clears throat> welcome back, folks. And welcome to the first night's edition of the Evening News. My name is Frick Carnage, and as always, I am joined by Muff Winwood. Thank you very much. Muff, what are we talking about tonight for the Evening News? We got a great lineup in front of us tonight, Mr. <laughs> Carnage. Oh, tell me about it. We're going to start with a little how about no. How about no? Oh, and we've got our reporter live in the field, Mike Ropinus. Ah, yes, our newest reporter. Mm. We'll get into some politics Ooh. in the politics corner. Spooky. Real fun for everyone. And then we've got a real-life scientist here. Wow. Yeah. He's going to perform some experiments for us? Absolutely is. Incredible. Mike is a real-life scientist. Wow. Uh, right after that, we'll have a cooking segment. Ah, yes, yes. I love food. Nobody loves food more than our chef. And then we'll have, uh, well, we'll have a little bit of sports with Fred Williams. Yes. Local star. Of course. Wow. What a lineup tonight. Couldn't be more excited. What a day. Hey, let's give it up one time for the band, huh? Let's give it up for the band. Let's start this one off tonight. Israel Palestine. How about no? I'd rather get Israeled by you, our telethon viewers. <laughs> Kanye West. How about no? We're absolutely fucking not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Not even a six inch pole. We're serious. We're not talking about it. Next one, Ukraine. How about no? <laughs> Ukraine? No, me Jake. How's everybody doing tonight, huh? Canada joke here. Um, did you guys forget to write a Canada joke? Or nah, it's fine. Who cares about Canada anyway? Am I right? <laughs> Fuck Canada. Oh man. New Year's. How about no? So many parties going on. So yeah. many, Jake. Yeah. yeah. Have you heard of any parties? You know, I'm pretty great at parties. I drive. I can bring food. Whatever it is, you know. I've heard about the parties. Yeah? Around the office. Oh. I'm not deaf. <laughs> the, the nuclear situation in, in North Korea. How about no? The only thing I'm interested in nuking is a damn chicken pot pie. Isn't that right? <laughs> The stock market! How about no? The only stock I'm buying is chicken stock. Am I right, people? <laughs> Jake, are you coming to my soup party next Wednesday? No. I noticed you haven't replied to the Facebook event invite. Here we go. Snuck a look at your calendar. Looks like you're free that night. Mm. Come by for some soup? Still haven't met your girlfriend. Been almost a year now. Looks like you're having fun based on Instagram, which Funny I see those, considering she has a private account, hasn't accepted my friend request yet. Wouldn't bother me, but I noticed that she's let about everyone else at the office start following her. Kind of seems like a targeted thing. You follow my girlfriend. In fact, I noticed you follow all my ex-girlfriends too. Still like their photos. I also noticed you've been liking a lot of photos from a, another woman, a certain Jessica Johnson. <laughs> Sending her a lot of messages too, huh? 
Funny how I know that one, right? Well, Jessica Johnson is me. That's a fake account you've been talking to. Really saying a lot of personal stuff, too. Stuff you wouldn't even oh, say to your best friend, which is supposed to be me. And I get it. I wouldn't want to tell everyone that I lost my virginity to my cousin, either. But hey, all stuff we could talk about on Wednesday, soup night. Going to watch Love Actually. So why don't you uh, respond to the Facebook event invite? How about we uh, <coughs> lighten things up a little bit? <laughs> the band! The band! The band! The band! What a night. What a night. What, what an night. audience. Well, I suppose we should go to the next segment then. Let's get out of this one. Let's go live in the field. We're going to our reporter, our junior reporter, Mike Ropinus. Yes, Mike. He's down in Spanish Fork, Utah, where there's a fire hydrant that has been ripping the shirts off of all the firemen in town. Wow, that's an incredible story. I can't believe we have our newest reporter on this story about uh, just a bunch of beefcakes. That's incredible. Let's, mm. let's see what's going on. Can't wait Spanish. to see that. Again, it's Mick Ropinus. We grew up together. Uh, we're trying to get to that scene. Um, we've run out of gas, but uh, I'm going to pivot real quick. Weather, what's happening in Salt Lake today? Beautiful day. So much sun and mountains and traffic. And uh, yeah, we got Donnie coming back to the gas can. That's good. That's good, Donnie. Stupid, stupid boy. And um, yeah, so let's talk about the smog. Um, visibility about. Uh, one mile, it's, you know, it's, geez. it's, um, you know, we're, it's, a, it's a nice sunny one, about 45, a little bit breezy. Johnny, fill it up, fill up the tank. And uh, yeah, we're just, we're gonna do our best. We'll get there shortly. Um, again, a uh, nice sunny day, lots of visibility. I'm having a great time. I'm very comfortable. It's nice. Um, you know, we're talking about traffic now. Traffic seems pretty steady in the lower part of the city here. Um, we've got trucks, we've got sedans, uh, we've got um, Toyota minivans, Sedona. Uh, it's looking really good. Um, you know, it's going to be a great day. Great day to go check out um, the mountains, uh, walk around, walk, take your cat for a walk, maybe um, even um, do some sports. Um, it's a great, great time of year to be, uh, to be alive. And um, is that thing filled up yet? Jesus, Donnie. Um, we're, to, you know, we're still, we're, we're um, yeah, and uh, the traffic appears to have slowed down a little bit, uh, which is nice, and um, filled up, good to go, and uh, back to you, we'll be there shortly. Gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed, but it didn't seem like he had anything to report at all. We'll have to check back in, go see what's going on with the firemen yeah. pretty soon. Yeah, maybe we pop back in on him in a little bit. Um, right now, folks, really quick, before we get into the next segment, let's talk about the Kumquat Polarized Single Wide. Right now, 69% off on the World Wide Web. Go to pitviper.com, get yourself a pair of the Kumquat Polarized uh, Single Wide Sunglasses from Pit Viper. Because if you don't, I'm going to Kumquat. We have some breaking news. I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to report for breaking news. Um, but oh, oh, we can. We do have another segment. We have another segment. Yes, we have another segment. We can hop Ladies right and gentlemen, into. The politics corner. Let's get wild. Quarter, ladies and Politics. gentlemen. 
Tell you what we're going to talk about tonight is the most polarizing subject in the entire world. This has been dividing the nation, dividing the entire world. Jake, what do you think the most polarizing subject in the whole world is? I think the most polarizing subject I can think of would be the upcoming president. Absolutely election. not. It's polarized sunglasses, ladies and gentlemen. Ow. And do we have a presentation for you this evening? Camera two, please. Thank you so much. Jake. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about polarized sunglasses? I would love to. Um, as you can see here, when, when you wear a pair of uh, this, <laughs> this is this is your cell, this is your eyes without uh, polarized uh, polarizing polarizing is that even filter filter polarizing filter, and this is them with them. It's a little more uh, clear, kind of, you know. Spencer, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about what's going on here? Well, what you'll see here is harmful light at the bottom of a lens and safe light at the top. So, of course, a polarized lens is going to allow you to have safer light higher. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, uh, a, as you can see here, um, this graphic up here, it, um, it speaks for itself, so I don't even need to get into details on that one. Am I right or what? Let's, uh, let's keep it I gotta moving. be honest, I don't think you know much about polarized sunglasses, Jake. I, I don't know anything about polarized sunglasses. I gotta be honest, I don't think anyone does, and I don't think anyone cares. I don't... I'm gonna talk about politics instead. <laughs> Did you see who just got back into the election? No! No, 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 no! Next up! Well, but it, we're not. What about the Twitter well, thing? But it, come on. For the love of the telephone. They're going to think it's next interesting. Next topic. We're not doing politics. The polarized was a good bit. Let's move it on. Ugh. Please. Shh. No. No. Do you remember? You saw that in rehearsal? No. Let's lighten things up a little bit. Let's lighten things up a little bit. Folks, uh, we're gonna go back live in the field here to our junior reporter, Mike. Mike Ropiness. Uh, we've got an update that the sexy National Guard has actually been called in to get a handle on the situation. It's only been escalating down there in Spanish Fork. Yes, it seems that uh, we have some sexy buff men, uh, and let's see what's going on down in Spanish Fork. Now, Mike, I understand that maybe the uh, car is, has some gas in it, maybe you've made it a little closer, hopefully to Spanish Fork. Can't wait to see these firemen. Let's see it. Again, it's Mick Ropinus reporting live in the field. We got the, uh, the van gassed up, ready to go, and unfortunately, we had a little oopsie booby, ouchie wowie. Um, Unfortunately, it was in the radio van. Um, we, we fucked up the van, sorry guys. Uh, news team van was out, so you know, sometimes you gotta make do with what you got. And here we are, and um, still a bunch of sexy, hunky firefighters. Shirts getting blown off. It's super wet over there. It appears that the National Guard has now been called in. There's, they're also sexy. Even more sexy National Guard men have been flown in. Hot pods everywhere. Lots of dudes. They're roughhousing? Donnie, is AAA coming? AAA is on the way. I've just got word. We're going to get there as soon as we can. we got a bunch of hot, hunky, horny guys uh, doing their best to take care of this hydrant situation. I'm, um, <laughs> I'm getting a little sweaty. But, um, you know, in the meantime, let's just take, you know, we got some new development. Um, Townhelm's coming in. How many? All shirts off. Still, yep, the, the uh, National Guards come in. They're fully activating, fully hard. I'm getting, uh, I'm not, uh, and um, we just gotta, I gotta get there. I gotta get there, Donnie, is where is Triple A? They're coming, they're coming. Let's go, Donnie, come on. Shit, fuck, I forgot to sign off. Again, every, guys, we're doing everything we can to get to the scene. It's getting really steamy down there. So many hot, horny, hunky guys. Uh, this is Mick Ropinus for Pen15, signing off. Donnie, we gotta go! I... 
Why did we hire him? Who decided to hire him? Bill's kid. It was, yes, it was but I had a choice. It, was, it doesn't even sound like a story to cover it's a bunch of good. He's not even good. there. He stole the radio van and he's hunting down buff, hunky dudes in Spanish Fork. I don't. Okay. Okay. Folks, we're going to get to that scene in Spanish Fork, the situation. Um, it will still be uh, not under control by the time we get there. I can't wait. Let's move on to our next segment. Right? We said we had a couple special guests tonight, right? Yes, we did. Yes, we did, Mark. Moving on to the science corner. Oh! Oh, That's scientific. That's fantastic. We just met Mike, but he's a scientist, and we can't wait to see what he's brought to present to us here. Mike, how about you take it away? What do you got for us today? Hi. Uh, sorry. I, uh, my name's actually Dr. Mitchell Phil, PhD, but oh. it's okay if someone goes messed up. I uh, flew in from Bloomington, Indiana today, so it's nice to be here. I'm going to try to bring it back to, uh, back to center a little bit, more facts. We haven't really talked about health yet, so I wanted to do a couple experiments to show how healthy you can be as, as, a, as a, a human out, out there. So I like fruit. I hope you like fruit as well. So I brought an apple for us to test uh, this, this. There's a lot of GMOs in the world, and what I'm trying to do is show people that nature is the best. So what you got to do, um, hold on. You've got an apple that grew from a tree, naturally, organically, and Spirit Airlines lost my baggage, so I, I don't have my normal tools, but I'm going to improvise today. So you, you could use just a garden variety pen here, a, a pen. Teaching and, us how to check for GMOs? Oh yeah, but you got to do that like like a core check. You can't you can't just like bite into it. It doesn't it doesn't work in that direction. So okay. I'm going to show you how to get to the core. Okay. Yeah, so you yeah. take a pen, you just you know open it up because you just need a cylindrical object that can kind of do a, a like a core bore, so to so to speak. All right, I'm so, not bored. <laughs> neither am I, right? Science. Well, who doesn't love science? Well, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go in through the uh, the top of the apple. And you just give it give it a nice little poke. Huh. Yep. Okay. Make sure it goes down into the to to center center, not to be confused with the centrifuge. You know, <laughs> no. and then. And then we're gonna, Science. we got this yeah. side of the top. It smells nice. And we're gonna go into uh, the side here just to check on, um, on, on this, on this, this, and then this oh. pokes through, make sure you can kind of see it. Sort of. Um, this, it's, this is, this is something. Uh, oops. Oh. Okay. What sort of data are you getting and from then, that? Uh, Mike? Smell check is great, but there's also smell? the one, yeah, so I've got some, some herbs. What? That I, what that I brought with me. Like, like, hey, so like, you're gonna take these hey, wait, and you're gonna put uh, them under the top. PhD, uh, no, Mitchell. I'm working. I don't. No, no. So you're gonna take this. Yeah, yeah, that's no, fine. No, no. And then gonna no, cut no, you no, off no, here, no, Mitchell. Gonna cut you off. Do you have any other experiments that you can show the crowd? I think that one's not landing with our audience. Yeah. Well, we can spice things up a bit. Sure. Why sure. don't you? Let's let's do that. What's the volcano all let's, about, yeah. Mitchell? Thank so, you. do you remember in high school you do a paper mache? We're gonna do a paper mache volcano with citric acid and baking soda to show the Earth's natural energy of explosion. So okay. what we're gonna? Oh, wonderful. Great. This is actually a little boring, but I did bring some uh, styrofoam. So what we can do okay. here right. is we can put some styrofoam on. On the top, we really want to see a big explosion. So well, I also brought some gasoline. That's how you make napalm. Yeah, that's that's how you make napalm. No, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna now stand, stand back. back. He's making yeah, a bomb. Hey, hey, hey! No, no absolutely not with the gasoline. The gasoline's not happening inside of the studio. Thank you so much for the science experiment. Do you have anything else? I was hoping something. You could teach the audience something. 
lighthearted, maybe. Well, uh, talk about lighthearted. I took a one-way plane ride here because I used this same uh, thing of gasoline to light my house on fire. Um, oh. Don't tell the insurance company, but if you really want to commit insurance fraud, you just want to take Mr. the Mr. Phillips, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank thank that's going to be the end of the science part. Cut the fucking camera. All right. can't just we gotta vet people lesson learned folks if you're picking up hitchhikers make sure you're not in a prison zone let's lighten let's things up, up a little bit let's let's let's, let's keep it moving let's keep this process going absolutely <laughs> the van the van the van, the van. The van. from the band. Let's hear from the band. Let's, you know what? Fuck it. Take a, who are you guys? We work here. You work here? Well, tonight, right? You guys get paid, right? You said we're, you get paid, paid? Did you? Maybe. Entertainers. Entertainers. <laughs> you can't. Can't live with them. Uh, <laughs> Creative types, am I right? <laughs> yeah, seriously, it's like herding cats, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's get back live in the field. We've got our junior reporter. They've got gasoline in the van. They gotta have gas and it's gotta be repaired at this point. Surely nothing could get in the way of them. And we're getting a report through Twitter here. Oh. A truck full of slippery oil has tipped over at the situation, and now it appears as though the sexy National Guard and the firemen are kind of roughhousing each other. Seems there's some sort of tussle time going on between the two groups, huh? Doesn't that sound nice and fun and family appropriate? I can't wait to see. Let's, Let's cut. see it. Let's see what's Let's going on. Cut to Mike. On. Yeah, Mike. Micro penis. Micro penis here live on the scene. A delivery truck full of baby oil has spilled. The National Hot Hunky Boys of the National the National Guard. All short all shirts, pants blown off. The, the fire brigade has pants still on, but they look like they're painted on. Okay, we gotta get there. I don't even know they're fucking you wolves in Utah. Go. Come on! It appears that we've lost the van. Fucking lost Donnie. We're just out trying to survive from the Utah Red Wolf. Fuck, there, there's eyes. There's, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Fuck, fuck. Now it appears that the National Guard has started playing volleyball against the firemen. Bunch of hot, horny guys, shirts off, chests that are sweating, covered in oil. No Donnie. The scene's 
looking real sexy. This is one of my best. Go, 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 go. It's honestly good. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Come on. I don't know if you, if you can hear behind me. There's three wolves now. This is Mick Ropinus signing off. Wolves. 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 Wolves now. Get, look, okay, all right, all right. He ran out of gas, mm. stole the radio van, mm. broke down, got mm. into a fender bender. He's all, I mean, he's rock solid right now, and then he's <clears throat> attacked by wolves? How do you get attacked by wolves in Salt Lake City? I just want to see the fireman. I just, I don't even care anymore. I just, I just want him to get there. I just want it to be over. I just want him to get there and for this, whatever, 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 whatever. And you know what? Let's keep it moving. Let's, uh, let's keep it lighthearted. Huh? Let's lighten things up let's a little bit. Let's lighten things up a little bit. Hot the band. The band. Hey. The band. <laughs> We got another wonderful guest for you, another wonderful segment. Let's go to cooking segment. We've got our chef here in town. This is Cram. Cram the Welcome chef. Cram. Come on out. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'd like to give a huge thank you to the band! <laughs> and our hosts, Fred Carnage and Muff Winwood, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you. the cooking segment this evening. Again, thank you for joining us. Tonight, we will be making one of my signature family dishes, a raw ceviche chicken what? seven layer dip. What? He said chicken? You raw heard me correct, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> raw chicken. All right, well, let's give it. <laughs> Before we start, I'd like to give you a little background about myself. Okay. Again, I'm Cram. More like creme de la creme, mm. am I right? You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, while I personally have never been to culinary school, I have indeed manned the grill at not one, but two family barbecues. <laughs> two. Before, before sternly being asked to never again man the grill due to my severe overcooking of the tri-tip. But... That's neither here nor there. Let's get into the dish. So, as any amateur chef will tell you, the key to a good meal is preparation. So as you can see here, I've got all my ingredients finely chopped, presented for you. We've got our unofficial sponsor of the night, Juanita's Chips, free bag for your doing pleasure. Very good, pork and spinach. A true treat. So to start, we're gonna place this finely cubed raw chicken into our bowl. I, I, don't, I don't see a burner. I don't I wanna see. use about, I don't know, pound, pound and a half. 
Uh, yes, chef. Question, chef. Yes, uh, sir. Is that a oven safe dish? Yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Yeah, okay. When you great. put that in the great. oven, it'll melt just a little bit and really enhance the flavor. I don't. Did he? I think he said. I, uh, chef? Yes. Do you want that to melt in the oven? Just a little bit. You, low temp, long cooking time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really brings out the flavors. Low and slow, they yeah, say. Yeah, 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 absolutely. absolutely. That's what I hear. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, chef, thank you. This is adding up, all right. Now, professional chefs will tell you that sharp knives and quality utensils are important for a, a quality meal, but it's a load of baloney. Plastic utensils work just fine. So we're gonna spread our chicken out here into a nice even layer on the bottom of the dish, the oven safe dish. That's, that's raw chicken. You hear that? Yep, oh, hear that? loud and clear. Here, you know what, let's get the folks back home this sound, you know? I pipe that in. Ooh. How's the audio, folks at home? You mm. getting that? You mm. getting that? Subscribe mm. if you're feeling this. Mm. A nice even layer. Mm. So the theme of tonight's dish, ladies and gentlemen, is texture. We're all about our texture in the culinary realm. Texture. <laughs> so once you've placed your chicken into the oven safe, safe dish, you want to squeeze a citrus blend. Okay. Again, we cut this into one inch cubes to maximize surface area because it is indeed the citrus that cooks the chicken ever so slightly. Uh oh. A nice little sear. Uh, oh, no, uh, Chef? Yes. Chef? Yes. Can you repeat that last part again? The citrus yeah. cooks the chicken. That's the part, yes, yeah, I thought that's what he said the first. Let mm -hmm. him, okay. So you wanna He's our guest. firmly okay. squeeze okay. your citrus blend into the oven safe dish. Tonight we've got some limes, a lemon, and an orange from 7-Eleven. Quality ingredients, quality pizza. <laughs> That's a quote from my good friend, Papa John. We, no, um, we, we, can't. we can't endorse that. No. We can't? Cut that one out. Yeah. Oh. You guys, live delay, beep. You have a beep back there, right? <laughs> Sean, Sean, you have a beep back there? You don't have a beep back there? What kind of? While they're dealing with the technical difficulties, I'm going to continue squeezing the citrus. Breaking news. We don't even have any breaking. breaking We're in the middle sound. of the cooking segment. God. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 chef. Chef. Sorry. Sorry. Um, keep going. Um, um, tell, tell, us, tell us what's next. You said there's seven layers. Yeah. Seven layers. Yeah, yeah. So, again, once we get all of our citrus in there. Looking like a bird garita right now. <laughs> We're gonna move to our beans. We're all about our beans here in the culinary world. And again, texture, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The texture of these particular refried beans is second to none. Yes, sir. So, oh. using your hands while cooking oh, no. is a primal experience that really gets you in tune with the dish. And it's important to get all the beans out from the very bottom of the can. You don't want to let any go to waste. And similar to the chicken, we're going to use our quality utensils to smear it into a nice, even layer. It's just not, I don't yeah. think very good. Uh, uh, Delicious Jeff? and nutritious. Yes. You are going to... I'm... All right. No, 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 no. You gotta watch out for these tin cans because uh, sometimes they'll cut your hands. It's really sharp after you use the can opener, but a little bit of blood adds just a little bit of flavor to the dish. You've gotten a tetanus shot recently, yeah? Well, I think when I was 16, yeah. Oh, man. Now that layer number two is complete, we're gonna move on to layer number three, the olives. Again, texture, oh. fingers, touching all the food. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's important. Did you wash your hands, chef? Of course I did. I don't. He's a professional. Has, has. Oh, Layer number four, the maters. Again, fingers in the can. Spread nice and evenly. Oh, God. No. The red color of the tomatoes hides the blood. The, oh. You said oh. the mater? Might be a mater. nice name for a pair of those famous pit viper sunglasses. Hey, what do we got on 69% off What's this hour on over right on now, the telephone? Huh? 
Sean. Hey, the kumquat. There it is. Thank you so much. Maybe next year, the maters. Carry on, chef. So at this point in the evening, once you've applied your fourth layer, you're going to apply a little salt and pepper to taste. Oh my god. Don't be shy. That's too much. Don't that's be shy. Too, that's far really, too much. Really. Let it rip. It'll soak in. I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not going is to he, eat. Is he going to eat this? I'm not eating this. And then to let the spices really deliver oh to the god, dish, you're going to crack bumpy. some lime oh bubbly. God. Again, the citrus, ladies and gentlemen, is what cooks the chicken. You keep saying that. Sorry, I have. You keep saying that. You keep saying that the citrus is what's going to cook the chicken. It gives it a light sear. It's chicken. Yes. Okay. All right. Don't worry. You're going to love it. Um. Layer number five. A little bit of cheese sprinkled evenly across the top. Once we put this in the oven, it's going to melt and trickle down into the remaining is layers. Is openly bleeding on the dish? A lot of blood. There's, oh, at this point. <laughs> Layer number oh six, God. the guacamole. <laughs> Don't be shy with this stuff. It's a crowd favorite. Oh. Even layer, nice spread. Really listen to the sound of the guacamole. And to top it all off, a gentle layer of some finely shredded iceberg lettuce. Blood everywhere. There's blood everywhere. Nice to see it finished. Yeah. Very good. Thanks again to Juanita's, our unofficial sponsor. No, no. I'm gonna open this up. My hands are a little slippery. I think it might be the blood. No, 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 no. You just reach into the bag, make sure you grab a bunch. No, no, if you no. want, again, we're talking texture here, people. No. You can crumple some of these oh, on God. top of the seven layer raw chicken ceviche dip. Chef, the oven? The oven, when does the oven come in? That comes later. When? Uh, 20 to 30 minutes, after the flavors have really settled in. Give it a fine crumple. Again, even layer. I just love that sound. Here, why don't you, why don't you pipe it? I don't want to pipe it anywhere near his hands. Fine. So before we pop this in the oven, we're just going to give it a little taste. We're going to sift down a little Chef, bit. I don't no, 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 no no, no, Krista, no, no, no. I'm gonna give it a little taste. No, please don't do Just that. Please do one. not do that. Please, please do not. Do, no, 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 no. no. Oh, God. Oh, mm. God. That's, that's what you want to taste before you put it in the oven. That's it. What? No. What's it taste like? That's really good. I think it needs a little bit more citrus, though. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm at a loss for words. I don't know what to do now. You guys hungry? You want to buy it? No! No, Are sir. Sure? Ate before. Sorry. Catered um, event? No, I, I, um, uh, vegan. What can I say? Oh, um, can't. That's really good. Really beautiful no. presentation. Oh. Oh. Maybe start to wrap this segment up a little yeah. bit here. Yeah. Uh, so, uh. Chef, is there, a, um, is there an end to this process? Final parting words. It's almost Thanksgiving. And this dish, traditionally, in my family, is made the night before Thanksgiving as sort of a digestif, as they say in France, it's not a I think. Again, I didn't go to culinary school. But what it does is it really gets the lower intestine working, moving, so that you can cram as much turkey and canned cranberry jelly as possible. Thank you, chef. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me.
You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. If you could kindly... Folks, we got just a couple more segments left here on the evening news. Over, assuming we don't get canceled. I hate to say it, we're giving old Mike Ropiness one last chance in the field. You know what? You know what? Look, look, look. All right, Muff, I'm going to be honest. Tonight's show, a little rocky, okay? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just going to be real. It's a little rocky, but hey, let's put faith in Mike right now. There's a little light at the end of the tunnel right here. Come on. I believe it. I believe in him. I, I, think, I think he's got this. I really firmly believe that fourth time's the charm, and he'll be in Spanish four. I, I think he'll be with the hunky buff beefcake oiled up men or whatever he's doing down there. Um, I don't. Let's get to that slippery situation down in Spanish Fork, Utah. Uh, 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 firefighters. Mick Ropinus signing off. So horny. Hey, we, folks, we're going to go to the next segment here. Okay. News must go on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. News must go on. The man! The man! You got another one for us? Losing your marbles? Oh, oh, no, no. We uh, put that in here again? No, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I didn't, see, I didn't lose the marbles. See, see, I didn't lose the marbles. The marbles, in fact, are here, right here. And I'm gonna show you some set. No, no, my marbles, no, no, no. Every see, time. Again. Hold on, hold on. I We're gonna this. keep giving him marbles? I got this, I got this. Look, We're gonna look. keep writing this I into the I news? Okay. No, 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 no. We're trying to tell no, the news. No, and you keep I'm writing this it. scene yeah. in? All right, no, it's okay. It's you gotta okay. be kidding me. It's okay, it's okay, I'll find This is a mess. I'll find them, I'll get them. I will get this them. can't happen again. Thank you, I will find my marbles. Thank you, I'm good boy, neglect. <gasps> I don't lose my marbles. I'm a good little boy. Don't help him. I collect the marbles, okay? That's all I do, and I, then look, I won't lose them. Don't help him. He can pick him up on his own. Folks, folks, we got, folks, we got one last segment here tonight, and and we're gonna get right to it, folks. We got the sports segment. Fred Williams, Fred Williams is here, ladies and gentlemen. His dad, he wrote the book on pitching, and Fred here, he wrote the book on pitching too. Fred, how about you come on down? The band. Fred, it's it's great to see you. Nice to finally have some order in the in the show here. Hey, how are you, Muff? <laughs> Sir, this is in Colorado. Ha, ah, sorry. Fred, what are you here to teach us about? Well, um, I'm gonna teach you about pitching. So, uh, introduce is Fred Williams here. Uh, my my uh, stepdad wrote the book on the science of hitting. Ted Williams knows a thing or two about hitting. Sure does. And I hate him. So I am going to teach you about the science of pitching. This gives you a whole bunch of tricks and tips on how to trick pitchers. And that really pisses me off, Dad. This sort of hitting, huh? 
Yep. Um, so I'm going to teach you, you know, how to, how to pitch. So uh, first off, intimidation. Right here, we have the flip-off pit vipers. You can look your opponent straight in the eye. Fred, if I were to buy a pair of those, where would I buy them, and what discount would I get right now? Pitviper.com, and they are 31% off. Wow. 69% of the original price. Fantastic deal, if I got to say something. Yep. Well, uh, next off, intimidation. Um, you know, performance enhancing drugs here. So I brought my favorite uh, legal drug here. It's pre-workout. You mix these with some of those Yuzu gummies and get in Colorado. Man, you can really hit a flow state, I tell you what. How many scoops are you on right now? Uh, in between six and nine, maybe like seven and a half or so. Wow. So That's way beyond the legal limit. You're going to want to get in here. Yep. Dump it right in. Mm. Yep. That's bright green. Yeah, it's super healthy. It's the best PHG out there. Um, and then... How long do you need to shake that for? I'm not sure. That looks pretty good now. Wow, it's turned blue. Yeah, I just blew myself. <laughs> oh, thank you. The band. <laughs> All right, next up, intimidation. I like to pack a fat lip, so I brought my favorite gum here. Just gonna rip a, a couple of these back. You're gonna want a big wad. Uh-huh. Hmm. They know you mean business. The fragrances coming from you are alarming. Is that part of the intimidation as well? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You know, mentos are pretty, pretty uh, spicy. So, I only got a fat lip in. I'm intimidated. Camera, are you intimidated? Wow. What am I doing back here? You don't know. I have no idea. Well, let's part pitching. What? Here we go. Let me uh, get into the good stuff, the finger blasting. Oh. <laughs> So, what do you want to see? I'd like to see one of your famous fastballs. You were a, a junior varsity player. That's right. I really excelled at JV. Yeah. Yep. What was your fastest speed? Um, mm, you know, on the clock, I was 69 miles an hour. Wow. Fastball, not very good. You think you can get one up to 69 right here? Oh, yeah, definitely. So, you want the cutter, fastball, four, four knuckleball? Knuckleball, please. All right. Well, here we go. So, Folks, we got the camera on the pitcher here. Got the camera on the, on the pitcher. So I got split finger, four seamer, two seamer. I'm going to go knuckleball here. And we want to look him straight in the eye. Baseball I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. demonstration okay. inside okay. of a news channel indoors. Oh, get, get a little woozy. Fred, oh, man. get right. out of here. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. He's Jake. okay. Fred. Can you get off? Can you, we need to finish the news. Okay. Could you get up? Could you get up? Can you get out of here? Oh, oh. Here, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Oh, I'm feeling a little oof. Hold on. Okay. 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 Folks. Oh, oh, oh. oh. What's happening? That's going to have to be it for the evening news tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Okay. I got it. Buff Winwood signing off okay. for the Pen15 okay. News Channel. We're okay. We're good. We're okay. The band. I'm okay. I'm okay. The band. We're good. We're okay.
That feels really nice. How about a hand for the band? I gotta be real honest, that was an incredible new show, tough act to follow. My name is Jonathan Wayne Freeman. This is our incredible band here. We are in prime time. This is the heart of the telethon. We're gonna be taking calls. We're gonna be taking pledges. We have a couple acts coming in. Actually, it's only one act, but anything could happen. There's a lot of surprises, but there's something I need to ask from our audience before we get started. Would you do something for the Pit Viper family? There's a gentleman, you may have heard of him. His name's Rock Johnson, big time celebrity, famous, famous person. Would you go on to his last Instagram post and tell him to come on over to pitviper.com? We'd love to get him in studio. We'd love to see him here, get some pit vipers on his head. We're not gonna fly him first class, absolutely not, but we will get him a nice seat on a Delta. What is it, what's it called, something plus? Anybody? It's a nice upgrade, it's not first class, but it is, it is nice, outstanding. Thank you, band, you're very tight. Before we get into our guest, Alec, who's a phenom, kind of known around Salt Lake City as the, uh, the GOAT, greatest of all time of his generation. You may have heard of him. Let's go ahead and say hello to the band real quick. What's your name, sir? Pierre. Pierre, and where are you from, Pierre? I haven't figured it out yet. I love that. We're all just searching. Am I right? Am I right? And can we get a little something from you real quick? Just a little something. Magician, that was outstanding. Can we get it a clap? Yes. Call in, call in, call in. This is for profit. We need your money. And who's up here on the bass? Is that a bass guitar? No, that's a that's bass, bass guitar. Bass guitar. <laughs> I'm I'm Greg. Greg, Greg, you seem like an amazing soul. Tell me the secret to the universe right now. Follow your heart. Oh, your heart, you're damn right. Can, you're like a regular Les Claypool. Can you slap that bass for us? <laughs> hey, brother, that was amazing. And we got a, what is that? Is that a guitar? This is a regular guitar. Could you play us a little ditty? Yeah, sure. Wait, are you the guy from HR? I swear... 
What the hell, man? What the shit kind of... Why are you guys hanging with this guy? I mean, I didn't know. I like I interviewed you earlier, and all of a sudden I see you. But I think it's cool that you do this at night. That's, That's my day job. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And what's your name, sir? My name's Cobb. Cobb, pleasure to meet you. Care to shred some licks for us? Yeah, this is a little one I made up. That's an original work. Wow, you got something there. You got something there. Swinging it all the way around to the man tickling the ivories. What's his name? Hey, yes, my name is Tim. Oh, Tim, Tim. 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 Timmy, you are wonderful. And are you from the States? My name is Tim. Let's hear it diddly, Tim. That was amazing. Thank you so much for our band keeping us going. We are going to bring in one of the most fascinating characters I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. His name is Alec. Would you come on in, Alec? Get in here. Don't be shy. I'm going to bring you right here. Have a seat. Right here. Come here. Come here. There we go. Have a seat. Now, Alec... I met you, you came into my life a few months ago. I was out on the streets and I saw you and you were riding something. What is that that you like to ride? Uh, it's a unicycle. Can you explain to the people that don't know what that is? Uh, it's, it's like a bike, but uh, it's only one wheel. You need to balance real well. Unicycle, yeah. that sounds yeah. fun. One, Yeah. one. And you're yeah. able to ride on one wheel. Yeah. It's that like, yeah. is amazing. I saw you in the streets, but you do something else when you're on the unicycle. And what's that? Uh, I play the violin. The violin? What do you think about that? Got some competition. Now, I don't want to cause a ruckus, but uh, do you have a little beef with somebody in this band over here? That's right. Is his name Cobb? It is Cobb. I'm looking at him right now. And what's your personal history with Cobb? We've known each other our whole lives. We grew up playing music together. And then he did me real dirty one day. And he's obviously clearly extremely successful. He's in a successful band with the HR guy and Pierre. And they're living the life, living the dream, making cashola. And you're out on the streets on the unicycle, turning tricks for money. That's right. He took my spot in that band over there. It's true. And there's something else you can do on that unicycle. What's that? I can juggle a little bit, too. Hell yeah, you can juggle a little bit. So, Alec, I want to ask you a serious question. Yeah. When you're out there and you're on that unicycle, do you feel like it's what God put you on this earth to do? Not initially, but you got to make the best with life, you know? And life gives you lemons. Ride a unicycle. <laughs> That's what everybody says. I've heard that before. Now, I don't want to put you on the spot, Alec. But did you bring your unicycle? You're in luck. I'm in luck. All right. Could you grab it for us and maybe uh, show us a little something, something? This is a treat coming up after Alec rides his unicycle. If there's... Here he comes. We're going to follow him. Watch the court. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh. Wait, what, that, what, that's it. That was amazing. That was amazing. Uh, no, that's great. That's great. That was beautiful. Did you want to ride a little bit further? Do you think you could ride and play while you ride? I'm going to give it a shot. Give it a shot, I mean, my friend. Cobb, simmer down, dude. The past is the past, all right? Let it, it just, go. It just, he doesn't want to. Just does, don't want to leave it behind. You, you know? don't want to leave it Yeah, something really dark happened, all right? It's 2022. It's a family fun event, and I just want to leave stuff from kindergarten behind us. Okay, copy that. Well, don't get jealous. I ain't seeing you riding a unicycle playing your stupid lead guitar. It's, it's a fine guitar, and it's, you know, it's, I can't fit a unicycle. Hey, Cobb, I, I, Cobb, I don't think that was your riff, dude. All right? Can't, Plagiarism's can't a real a unicycle thing. unicycle on the stage. Okay, this guy's claiming he can ride the cycle. Let's see a guy who can do it for real. Show him what you got, Alec!
absolutely incredible. Alec, you are a one in a million human being and I wanna do something because this is Pit Viper, it's a family, it's about love. Yes, we're here for profits, but we're also here for healing. Come over here, Alec. Come over here. I want you to take this microphone. I want you to work out this bullshit from the past with your old pal Cobb and make it right. Reconciliation. Cobb, I know I said a lot of mean things about you and you've said a lot of mean things about me, but there's nothing that brings people together better than the sharing of music. What do you think, Cobb? I think that's a great idea, Alec, and I'm real sorry for everything. I'm sorry too, Cobb. Do you want to play one together? Let's play let's, one for old dimes. Let's trade some, let's trade some fours together. Let's, let's, let's do let's, it. Let's, let's, let's do, do it. it. Play it in, boys. what it's about. It's beautiful. Alec, I'm going to give you a gift certificate to one of my favorite places where you and Cobb can get some couscous, okay? okay. You guys can break bread together and really start some real healing, okay? All right. Bring it in here for the real thing. All right. All right, pal. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. No problem. That's what we do here. We change hearts. We change lives. Let's go ahead and take a moment and focus on what is on sale. Who cares about their relationship? It is what it is. We can't help with that. But we can help with getting you 69% off Pit Viper sunglasses. The Boom Slang Polarized Single Wide is 69% off only this hour during the prime time. I want to come over here real quick because there's a couple young ladies that have been working real hard. Now, I know they're a bit camera shy, but let's see what we can get. What's your name, ma'am? Hello, um, I am London. London, have you ever been? N no, actually. Have your parents been? Yeah, that's yeah, that's where they made me. That makes sense. So, I mean, I've never, yeah, I've never been. Excellent. Well, you're doing a great job. You've been working hard all night, and I just want to say, Pit Viper appreciates you. Thanks. And what's your name, you liar? <coughs> okay, we're gonna step back. That's effective every single time. Every single time. All right, we're going to head straight to the calls. Our first set of calls for the night. Listen, we are looking for pledges, contributions for profit. Do you guys get that? Have you ever played any telethons for a cause? Fuck no. <laughs> ah, fuck no is right, HR. <laughs> we can say the F word because the HR guy said it first. All right, let's go to our first caller. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Who's, who's, who's this? Who's this? Uh, this is uh, the Pit Fiber Web Guy, Jeff. 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 You work. You here. work here. Yeah. Okay, I'm having a hard time with this. Uh, let me see here. I'm gonna take my headphones off. Are you there, buddy? I can't hear you that way. All right, we're, All right, experiencing, we're experiencing technical technical difficulties. difficulties. Not a problem. All right, so you work here, is what you were saying? Jeff. I do work here. And are you looking to purchase for friends, family, an ex-lover? Um, I've already got all my gifts covered for the family. Um, I'm here because, you know, I'm not sure 31% off is good enough. Oh, wow. That's a bold statement. 31% is a fine percentage off. Um, are you interested at all in the boom? I can't read. Boom slang. So, well, the thing is... I see, I see that we've got 69 people right now uh, watching this, um, and I want to help 15 of those people. You want to I want to wanna... give them the first 15 people to use the code WEBGUY50, get an additional 
fifty percent off their entire order. This That's is on top of the thirty-one percent. This is unheard of. It can you say that code one more time? I thought you were a scumbag. Turns out you're a salt of the earth. Hell of a guy. Give that code out again. All lowercase web guy fifty. And the first fifteen people to use that code get an additional 50% off their order. An additional 50 or 15? 50, are you saying? 50. Holy yes, jamoli. This is unheard of. This is unheard of. This is unheard of. For the next how many minutes? Yeah. No, for the next 15 people. The next first 15. 15 to use the code webguy50 and they get 50 additional percent off their order. This is absolutely incredible. I gotta tell you something. HR, get this guy an attaboy because he's doing oh, this out of the, the his own heart. Do you know the HR fella up there in the band? Oh shit, I'm seeing people are commenting that I'm supposed to get fired. This is not good. You're not gonna get fired, son. You're gonna get promoted. I feel it in my bones. This oh, guy's no. getting fired. HR man's going down because he's moonlighting at night, doing God oh. knows what, coming in here, being a hypocrite, yelling at all the fine people here. I've heard about you. All right, sorry. Jeff, listen, you're oh, a heart, no. you got a heart of gold. You're not going to get fired. The code's real, 50% off for the first 15 people in addition to 31%. I'm not good at math, but is that 81% off? They're basically free at that point. So you are, absolute, on it. you are absolutely incredible. We're going to move on to another caller. Thank you so much for the pledge. Whoever the first 15 people are that get on this are lucky. Ban, if you want to run over to the internet and get some sunglasses, you go right ahead because I know your HR friend hasn't given you jack squat. Am I right? You're asking. right. Yeah, they paid for every one of those pairs, pledges, every single but person in the band. That's right. All right, let's move on to the next caller, please. All right, who do we have on the line? I'm going to use my sexy voice for this one. Who's calling in? Who do we Hello? have? Hello? Hi, how are you? Hello? Hello, how are you? Is, is anyone going to pick up the phone over there? I picked up the phone, my friend, and I'm talking to you. What is your name? Right on, this is Big D. Big D's in the house. I'm looking late at the bank. Big D, where are you calling from? How much are you pledging today for profit? Calling from Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati! I'm not pledging at all. I'm, I'm over here working at the bank. Oh, you're at the bank and right it, now. It's been a long, hard night over here. Excellent, excellent. So you're in the baking world, eh? Well, yeah, yeah it's a sperm bank. Oh, did you guys catch that? This gentleman works at a sperm bank. And what do you do at the sperm bank, champ? Oh, I'm, I'm the, the head mixer. The head mixer. Okay. Well, and you love pit vipers, do you now? Well, yeah. You know, I'm, I I rock the baby baby vibes, of course. Oh, <laughs> touche, touche, my friend. But but I've heard you guys now. You're making goggles, a little more protection. Absolutely. Pit Viper does make goggles. They're thirty one percent off on the site right now. This is a special running all week. So um, but do, do you make big goggles? Or are they like these? The, the baby vibes are kind of small. I mean, they protect me from you know some of the spooge. I completely but, understand. Uh, no, no, the big goggles will protect you from everything. They're safety rated, and I believe that uh, if your employer is cool with you wearing them, they'll really help you out uh, from that splooge splash. Yeah, you know, like my, when when I was born, my you know name Dixon, right, it was mm -hmm. tough. And growing up, like the last name Yermuth, it it. It just came big D, and then all of a sudden at the bank, you know, guys are making fun of me, and I, I rocked the, the, ba the baby vibes, and they just uh, really they showed me some respect finally oh. for once in my life. Well, if you're meant demanding respect and authority, you've called the right place. How many pairs are you going to buy? I need you to commit right now, big D, from the sperm bank, how many orders of goggles? Well, there's seven days in a week. Yes. And I work six. Okay. So probably need one for each day of work. And then like 
the laundry day, right? When I wash all the spooge off. So that's a, that's probably a seven, seven pack. A seven pack. I think that's seven a, pack. a great start, my friend. And how about for the people you work with? You want to add an additional seven? Well, let me see. Let me count them here real quick. Seven, 16, 42 divided by three because those guys don't work. 72, 69 pairs. 69 pairs it is. That's a huge pledge. That's a huge pledge. 69. Thank you so much. I'm going to be honest. I think you're a good guy. You're on the up and up, but your call creeped me out a little bit. But you're still going to get a tote bag and a bumper sticker. And that's a hell of a deal for a guy that works at the sperm bank. Am I right? Okay. Tote bag and a bumper sticker. Yes, sir. And we appreciate you, and I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. I don't know where you go. It seems like he's gonna stay there for a while so but we need folks like him that's awesome good for oh, him some guys some guys spanking it pretty hard i gotta go okay sir all right wow you never know what's gonna happen here that was intense am i right am i right nice. anybody up there uh test tube baby you got anybody that was uh, me no no okay all right had a friend when i was a kid test tube baby weird kid yeah all right let's go ahead and go on to another phone call we got anyone else let's see they're calling in. All right. Hello? Yes, hello. 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 Hey. Hey, how are you? Great. How are you? This is this is James in Flames calling from Spread Eagle, Wisconsin. Man, I haven't met anybody from Spread Eagle in a long time. How's the weather out there? Weather's a little chilly. Everybody's shriveled up real nice. Uh and you know we're just prepping for winter. And what brings you? <clears throat> excuse me. What brings you uh, to us tonight at pitviper.com? Obviously, you're here for the telephone. You got a telethon. Well, I got a big family. It's all about pledging. Uh, Patty and I handed out uh, some little blue pills at uh, at church, and so the whole family's got the pledge boner. We're going to be buying lots of pears. Everybody's real excited. <laughs> You, but we, dude, every caller tonight is just a character. I got to tell you what, how many pairs do you think you're going to pledge, sir? Oh, man. Considering the wife side of the family, going to consider right around 70, 69, probably. 69, most likely. Can I tell you something, sir? You are incredible, and I want to tell you something. Those pledges, that money, those profits, they're going to pay for that band up there, right? And they got places to go, things to do. See our two callers over there? They need money. Everyone needs money. And that money is going to make you cool and make us profits. Trying to just spread the pledge boner throughout America. That's what mm-hmm. we do here. Uh, spread eagle. Boner, boner, boner. 69, 69. I came here as a professional, and everybody that calls in, every customer seems to have a poo-poo, pee-pee joke. And it's really, frankly, getting old. Why do I even put the tie on? Why do I do all this work, all the prep? Okay, I'm going to sink down to the gutter. Ready? There's a boner. Did you do put blue pills and there was boners? And then you're going to do 69 and go poo poo pee pee in the caca? Is that what you want to hear? I, so I don't... Hear. HR, seriously, man. I didn't... I read the handbook and I came out here with the best of intentions. I don't know, night one. I, I don't know if I can do this. A guy got almost killed with a baseball earlier. I saw a guy, saw him get dragged out, and now I'm here dealing with the customer base. God love you. We appreciate the profits, but let's be honest. I got to worry about my mental health sometimes. Okay, I'm a professional. I'm going to get back in the pocket. We're going to take another phone call, and hopefully this one's better. Again, we do appreciate you calling in, but please, can we stop saying 69 for five seconds? I see what you're up against. And you know what? I'm sorry. I was giving you a hard time. It's like working on a damn pirate ship. Bunch of rebels, outcasts, drifters. All right. Let's take another call. Hello. Is there anybody there? Is there anyone there? That's a decent human that wants to pledge. That's not going to talk about the cacas and the peepees. I'm still upset about the shitty hats. Did you see the vile things that were written on there? You were taught. Um, hello. 
Hello. Sorry, Hi. I'm a little. Uh, did I did I get in? Did I get in? Yes, you got in. My name's John. What's oh your name? Oh my god, is this where I get Taylor Swift tickets? It's not where you get Taylor Swift tickets. Are you a Swifty? Is that what they call her fans? Is wait, is this the wrong number? I think I have the wrong number. What? Who is this? Listen. I want to talk to you real quick. This is the right number. This is Taylor's manager, but I also sell pitviper.com tickets and you got a ticket to the show and now you can buy some sunglasses at a great discount for your family and you can go to your Taylor Swifty concert and look awesome and then maybe you can tell all the other Swift tonights and they will buy them and you can get them for 31% off the entire website 69% off right now you can get the boom choom boogaloom polarized double wides does that sound good sounds like a lot better deal than a Taylor Swift ticket it sure does have you ever heard of Pit Viper uh yeah I think I made out with a guy wearing them once <laughs> yeah, yeah. sounds about right story adds up all right, well, do me a favor. Talk to your mom and dad because Taylor Swift tickets are very expensive. Why don't you take that money and pledge right now on the telethon, do the right thing, go ahead and spend a lot of money and get a lot of Pit Vipers. Okay? So, like, if I got 10 pairs because there's 10 Taylor Swift albums, then I could wear one for every album. I like the way you think. I like the way you speak. And you are the classiest customer, excuse me, pledge we've had this evening. And I okay, my mom said it. My mom said I could. Your mom said she also said you could. She also said we that we could hang out more and that you could come over and play this weekend. No, no, no. Let's cut it off. Cut off the. Okay, get the get the sunglasses, but let's cut the call. I got priors. I shouldn't have said that. I didn't mean that. I don't. I don't. Like we're cool, right? We're cool. All right. Should we take one more and then listen to some music? And I just need to find where is the normal person that works here? Can we interview somebody that's going to be on the up and up? Do all of you have side hustles? What's going on here? Yes. Every single one of you. All right. We're going to take one more phone call right now. God help me. I wish I could say we're doing it for the children. I wish we could say we're doing it for a disease. I wish there was some cause, but no, it is for profits purely. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. All right. Can we get another phone call, please? Please, God, let it be somebody who wants to pledge lots of money. All right. How are the phone lines doing over there? Good? Ladies, we doing all right? How's the coffer? How's the coffer over there? How's your cough? Yeah, yeah, classy hat, the whole depot. This is what I'm working with. This is it. All right, we don't have any calls coming in right now, so I am going to head and point to somebody who needs to come up here and sit right next to me, and we got to break bread because i got a lot Hello. of questions. Whoa, Hello? Hello? Hi, who's this? Hi. Hello. Are you okay? Uh, I'm calling on behalf of my grandson. What a sweet old, excuse me, what a sweet, sweet grandmother you are. Oh, I'm not that old. Okay, your oh, voice just sounds. Nine and a half years old. Wow. And what kind of pit vipers does your little grandson want? I don't know. Whatever cockamamie excuse of sunglasses my my little nephew decided to boy. Okay, first off, these uh, sunglasses, as you refer to them, are actually called Pit Vipers. And if he gets them, he'll demand respect and authority. So please show a little bit of respect for the brand. Well, you know, it's my money, so I can laugh at it. Okay, well, if it's your money, I suggest that you spend all of it. Do you have a. I'm making chili right now. You're making chili. I bet uh, your chili is really excellent, but let's talk about... I can't decide if I should add corn or not. Oh, add corn. Always add corn. That's a good thing to do. So add the corn. Okay, add the corn. Yes, ma'am. I'm so cold. You're cold. Well, go on to the website and buy a Pit Viper jacket. That'll keep you warm. Is that warm? It's warm, warm, warm. This is Salt Lake City. These people live in a frigid Arctic zone, and they have to wear layers. I'm making chili. You're, you are making chili. We touched on that already. Let's get down to brass tacks. How many pairs of Pit Vipers are you going to buy for your grandson? Well, uh, 
uh, my grandson thought it'd be funny to call. So here I am. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. What do I click on next? Okay. Do this I, is called the world. The worldwide interweb. This sounds like I'm talking to my grandmother, and I have to explain everything. So I'm you, gonna go to Target to get a special sweater for him this year. Okay, don't go to Target. Go to PitViper.com. Thirty-one percent off, ma'am. God bless you, but we're gonna cut you off. Okay, and and get your okay. St- Goodbye. God bless. I love y'all. I love you more. She sounds like she's been chain smoking for sixty-five years. Good God. She had some make gr- that sixty-nine years <laughs> of camels, the the strongest cigarettes you'll find on the market. Oh man, she had some grit. Uh, that was nice. Band. After- All right. So long. So long. Good- goodbye. Bye. Good- goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Band. I'm gonna go make chili. Make your chili. Have a good day, ma'am. Play. F- I'm feeling better. That's what you call the healing power of music, and I feel better already. I just want to point something out to everybody that's watching. We sure would appreciate it if you told your friends, told your family about it, and I want to go ahead and tee something up. There's a rumor that a very famous key player is going to be in the house tomorrow. Do you know who it is, band? They're shaking. I don't know why you would know. Language again. <laughs> yeah. It is, in fact, I'm not going to say who it is, but I'm going to give you a little hint. Free skier. Does that mean anything to you? I know there's a lot. We play music. Famous free skier. Sean White. <laughs> That's true. He's free as a bird. Great, great question, man, from somewhere. Not here. Where did you say you were from again? You never... The real world? Uh-huh. Okay, excellent. You're a hell of a musician. All right, okay. This is our show, and it is going nowhere right now. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. All right? Sinking it's sinking in the mud. HR man, I'm coming over to talk to you. We're going to take a few more calls in a minute. <sighs> so how do you get into HR, man? <laughs> I made the job for myself. No, this is something you major in in college. It is? Is it not? I thought that's like a a degree that you get. Some people do. Okay, so what did you go to college? For a little bit. Yeah. And then did you graduate? I'm getting there. What were your qualifications to be the head of human resources for Pit Viper? Next question? (laughs) No, that is the question. Inquiry minds want to know. Well, you know, it's a long story, which I don't think we really have time to to delve into. We can delve into it. This is my show, and I want to delve into it. When you were a child, you were like, one day, I want to get into human resources. Yeah. And some kids want to be baseball players, skiers, musicians, but you said, I want to manage the shit out of human resources. Exactly, yes. God, you got to respect the guy that knows what he wants, goes after it, and nails it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a sexy job. I know. It's a, it was very, very alluring to me. So when you meet, you know, you're out there. Are you a married guy? Uh, yeah. You are? Yeah. You're all married up now. Yeah. So were you in HR when you first met your lady friend? Yeah. You were. Yeah. And would she, you take her out at night and show her the other side, which was rocker gym or whatever you are? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, you, which part do you think she liked more, the rocker or the HR guy? Neither. That's not true. Don't be so hard on yourself. Listen, we're just playing around. We're having a good time. You know, they give you a hard time here. I know they booed you earlier. But the truth is, you're the guy that keeps all this together. Well, let's not go that far, you know. I like to be here for the people. You're here for the people. You take care of them. And they're a rowdy group. 
They're a rowdy, rowdy group. There's no doubt about it. But let's get back to what this is about. This is a 69-hour telethon. 69 hours. We're going to be here. Tomorrow, I'm going to be back. The new show's going to be back. There's even a show after this, the late night show. It goes on and on and on and never stops. We're going to go back to the phones, and we're going to talk it out because there are people out there that want to pledge, that want to donate. Ladies, how are you? How's the coffer? Thumbs up. Good, good. You got a clean bill of health, young lady? Excellent. Good to hear. Good to hear. And how are you? You're good as well? All right. Let's go. The band, are you guys good? Anyone need to poo-poo, pee-pee? No? Okay. All right. Let's see if we can take a call right now. This is a telethon, and it goes on... Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you? Uh, hey, is this Pit Viper? You're damn right, it's Pit Viper. Welcome to the show. Hi, my name's uh, Blade, calling from Butt City, Idaho. Blade from Butt City, Idaho. I don't believe I've heard of Butt City. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Um, it's, I don't know, there's, we have a lot of roundabouts here. A lot of roundabouts here in Butt City. Okay, Blade. Is that a nickname or a God-given name? No, it's it's my only name. It's the only one I have. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And what can we help you with tonight? You're going to buy 10 pairs, 15 pairs, 20 pairs, 30 pairs? What are you looking for? Yeah, I'm trying to buy 40 pairs, but not of Pit Vipers. I'm looking for socks. You're looking for do you socks. Guys, do you guys sell socks? Do we sell socks? 100% we sell socks. 31% off on the socks? We got That's a thumbs up. Because November is going to be over soon, and I, I need them for, for stuff. Okay, you need the socks for stuff because November is going to be over. Can you be more specific with the stuff? I'm not prying. I'm just curious what you're using socks for to put on your feet. Correct, Blade? Are the socks soft? Like I, I do need to know that. Are the socks soft? Are the socks soft? Yeah, we're getting a yes, absolutely. That sound good for your needs? That sounds perfect for my needs. Oh, like I mean, like I said, November is going to be over soon, and I'm going to need some socks for for stuff. So okay, well, get yeah. a bunch of socks, and you know what? It's between you and and whatever's going on, what you do with the socks. But I suggest buying Pit Viper sunglasses as we are a sunglass company, but the socks are wonderful. So I've heard, I haven't had the pleasure of trying them yet. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Wow. Another fascinating character, Blade from Butt City. Butt City, everybody. Unreal. All right, let's see if we can get another caller. They're still busy over there, the ladies, all day long. We've been cycling in people, taking pledges, taking contributions. I got to tell you what, I'm going to have to do something special tonight to get my engine rev for tomorrow because I am about to crash through this desk, truly. Thank you. I feel good. I feel good. All right, can we get another phone call, please? Hi. Mm, hello. Who this? Hi, this is Holly, and I'm a holiday influencer. And this year, I wanted to create a holiday gift guide around local companies, you know, companies that really give back and care about the community. And I got to say, I've been tuning into this telethon for a while now, and I am really loving what I'm seeing. You had an educational science corner. You had a heartwarming reunion between a unicycling violinist and lead guitarist and this telethon is just proving my opinion that Pit Viper is the most wholesome company in all of Utah. I love to hear this, Holly. This is a call I've been looking for, and I thank you so much for recognizing that. I'm You're welcome. I mean, it's so amazing, like, the callers that you've had coming in from, you know, Spread Eagle and Butt City. I mean, I haven't even heard of these places, but they sound beautiful, and I want to go. I, I sense a little bit of sarcasm there. I, I really thought that that you really recognized how great the show was and the good work that we're doing. And now I feel like you're just sort of mocking me. You think it's real? No, it's not real. No, I, my band members are saying I'm, I just made myself part of the band. Is that okay? I can play the recorder, hot cross buns, third grade. I'm savant on it. If you need that, just throwing that out there.
Well, Holly, listen, you have the voice of an influencer. You sound like an influencer. But what I really need to know is, would you buy some Pit Vipers tonight? Oh, hell yeah. I'm really excited about these flip-off sunglasses. They look new, but I was actually wondering from you, you know, what are the best Pit Viper swag that I should include in my holiday gift guide this year? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay, first I'm off. I'm not kidding. Let for, me know. First what, off. What should I include? You should include one of each. You should buy everything. You should get baby vipes, which by the way, you can say baby vipes instead of pit vipers, baby pit vipers. I read that in the book. You can say baby vibes. You should get some 2000s. You should get, what did you say? You like the flip offs? Yes, get, I love I love the flip offs. I think they're totally stylish. I yes. think that my influencer population is going to go crazy for them. The likes you're going to get when you get Pit Viper products, whether it's a jacket, whether it's a socks, whether it's a sunglasses, are going to go through the roof. The fact is, they make you cooler. And who doesn't want to be cool? Am I right? Cool, so right. Coolest so dudes right. in the world. And Holly, how many followers do you have right now? Um, I'm really proud that I have just about 69,000. 69,000! That's insane! Thank you. Thank you. It's a big Holly! Awesome. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out. I, I don't technically work for the company, but I think you should put together a VHS tape of all your talents and all your skills because you do have a large following, and we'd love to maybe have you be part of the team. What do you think? Awesome. Holly, that was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for calling. I got to get to one more caller, and God bless you. You are a sweetheart, and keep influencing. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Pit Viper. Hell yeah. Amazing. Pit Viper America. Band, play us a ditty as we go into our last caller, please. That is a ditty. That is a little ditty. Guys, I need you now. I need you now. I'm dying here. It's like my fish show of the day. I need your energy to come into my soul, lift me up onto this desk, and give me the gift. I feel it. Just like that, I am back from the dead. Thank you so much. I am back, and we are going to take a caller right now. I was in a slump, and you brought me back to life. You do that. That is what music does. The Pit Viper house band, can we call them that? Or no? What are you guys going by? Miracle Workers? Dude, the power of music. I felt like a dead man 30 seconds ago. And now I want to live and breathe, climb a mountain. I'm not getting into HR. I don't know what I'm going to do. The possibilities are endless. Let's take a call. Hello? Is anyone there? Mom? Mom? Yeah, it's Tucker. Mom? Yeah, it's Tucker, hi. Tucker? Yeah. What's up, Tucker? How are you, buddy? I've been calling for hours. I'm going to get grounded soon. Oh, dude, I don't want you to get grounded. I'm so glad you're the first kid that's called this entire time. We're so stoked to have you on. I'm so pissed off. Wait, what? Why? I didn't end respect and authority over here. You did not earn respect and authority? No. Buddy, I got the solution oh, I do, for I do, I do, I do. Oh, you demand respect and authority. Yes. I'm giving it to you right now. I mean, you are on air with the hottest telethon, the first telethon that's been on in like 30 years. So this is, we're giving you your time right now, bud. Is there anything you want to say to the world? 
The guy on the unicycle is awesome. I agree. Alec is a phenomenon. <laughs> He's a prodigy. What do you want to well, do? I meditated the guy today with the guy on the raft. You meditated with a guy on a raft? Yeah, early on the telephone, the guy in the raft, the big guy. Oh, that's amazing. This youngster says that he was on a raft earlier with the big guy on the telethon, and they meditated on a raft. Tucker, you got quite a life for a youngster. How old are you? Ten. Ten years old. Welcome to double digits, buddy. You're in the money now. You make it to triple digits, that's going to be a hell of a feat. Welcome to the ten club, pal. First I was six, and then I was nine. <laughs> yes. First he, ah, ha, ha, ah, Tucker's a wise guy, too. First he was six, and then he was nine. Tucker, you're going to fit right in here, buddy. How many pairs of Pit Vipers are you going to buy tonight with your dad's credit card and not tell him? I stole the credit card. All right. Well, you know what? That's your dad's fault. He should hide it better. You sound like a really, really smart kid. In fact, you might be borderline genius. The future's bright for you, my friend. I stole it because he caught my screen time. <laughs> Is that right, Tucker? Well, I want you to go outside when you get these pit vipers. Spend a little less time on the internets and on the screens and uh, explore the world in your pit vipers as you demand respect and authority, little guy. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I appreciate the call, Tucker. You're a winner. Never forget that. You're a champion. You're going places, and we appreciate your pledge. You're going to get a free tote bag, and you can also enter to get the ATC. You can ride that. It's for adults only, but I won't say anything. Neither will the band. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank God we got Tucker. That was incredible. Listen, you guys, this show, it's going to be something. Tomorrow, it's going to be bigger and better than it was tonight and Wednesday night it's gonna blow the show that was on before me out of the water they had a guy they had a guy a chef they had they had a dude with a baseball they had a guy get hurt they had so much stuff going on all right but I got you all right and they didn't make the connection with you guys that I did so I want you to be on my side going forth. You forget about the early show. You forget about the late show. You just remember John, okay? All right? Big J, Big J. Big J, Big J. You guys are the best. You're in my corner. All right, you guys. We have so much entertainment coming up. I can't even say what's going on. It, you just have to tune in. Tomorrow's going to be the most exciting thing I have ever heard of. We're doing a 10 year birthday party for pit viper there's going to be animals there's going to be clowns there's going to be joy laughter and love but most importantly there's going to be people calling in purchasing sunglasses giving us their pledge and contribution because that's what a person does they buy things we live in a consumer culture and it's always not a good thing it can eat you up if you're chasing after the almighty dollar bill. But what's wrong with purchasing sunglasses at an awesome discount? Absolutely nothing. So buy as many Pit Vipers as you can tonight, and then the next night, and then the next night, and in the morning and all day long, because they're 31% off site-wide. And who doesn't love a great deal? God bless America. God bless Pit Viper. And I just want to say one more thing. This is the greatest moment of my life. Being here right now on this telethon. Things aren't going good at home, okay? Shit's on the rocks. I'm being real with you right now. My marriage is in the toilet. And this is all I got. I got nothing to go home to. Be Viper's all I have. It's all I have. I'm pouring out of my heart.
Welcome, folks, to The Late Show. We had slime time and the evening snooze, but ladies and gentlemen, work's been a long day of work. Daddy's home. Let's get loose. I, I got to tell you, folks, this is pretty amazing, right? I mean, we're, it's, a, it's a sunglasses company. We're running a telethon. I want to give a big round of applause to Jonathan Wayne Freeman. He's been doing some great work out here. I want to hear it out for him. The, the lovely band here, the carnivores. Those sounds make me want to put some meat in my mouth, folks. It's great out here. It's crazy. We've got the call, the call takers. You guys are crushing it, and uh, I'm just honored to be a part of it. You know, I, I, ever since I was a, a young boy, a young dainty boy in the swamps of Florida, dodging various narcotic needles, wrestling gators to make a living, I had a dream. Not a dream of power or riches. You know, I had a dream to be a late night talk show host. I'm not kidding, folks. And now this is just one more dream. Pit Viper is making a reality. But what is a late show anyways? You know, who gets to decide what late is? Do I have to call my mommy up, who I texted 15 minutes before the show, to ask her to please, please watch, please, just so I could have some validation? I don't have to ask her. I'm a grown man. I got hair loss, okay? This is my show. It's late because it's past my bedtime. But, you know, folks, we, we've, we've had a long day of fun and games. You know, we, we had my esteemed colleagues on the evening news were, you know, just on the edge there of touching that, that, that political minefield. And I don't think it's a great idea to talk politics on the social media channels of a sunglasses company. So instead, I want to talk about the most corrupt unelected officials, moms, who more boldly and just, you know, carelessly wields power like the katana I bought after six beers, like moms do. I mean, truly, like I said, it's the late show, right? It's past my bedtime. Who sets my bedtime? My mommy? You know who else set bedtimes? Every single fascist regime in the history of this world. Curfews are a tool to oppress the weak and the small by the big and the powerful. Am I saying that moms are fascist? I'm just asking questions, folks. It's the late show. All right, we're gonna have fun here. I'm not trying to get all, all doom and gloom, but you know. Candy, you know, let's talk about it. Candy, I want it. Mommy, I want my candy. I've got a hankering for a sweet tooth and I need that sweet, sweet brown stuff to get me going. Mommy says I can't have no candy because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fat widow baby. And, you know, my, this is God's honest truth, folks. My first appointment with my doctor as an infant, I was severely underweight. I was born C-section, never breastfed. So I was malnourished as a, as, a wee bo as a wee boy. Second appointment, first birthday, off the charts. That's true, folks. You can call Marilyn up now and ask her. I'm sure she's on the, on the live feed. She's in the chat rooms. Nobody talk to Marilyn in the chat rooms, please. But she can corroborate everything I'm saying. So if I need candy, mommy, please, why are you withholding the candy from me? Those are resources that, that you know, like I said, the lower classes, we need that to, to, to grow, to succeed. And so, you know, when the candy's on the top shelf, is that, is that not classism? Is that not, not withholding important resources? You know, if I, if I want fizzy drinks at 9 p.m. before it's my bedtime so I can have lots of energy to play with Legos, fuck you, mom. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink that Fruitopia, okay? And to prove 
that I'm going to drink that Fruitopia, I'd like to ask for a volunteer from the crowd, please. I see this wonderful young lady. She's coming up right now. Come on out through the side. We've got her. All right. I instructed all of the participants of this stream they would not have to speak if I called on them, and I shall keep that promise. We're going to do something we've never seen before on broadcast television, folks. We are going to engage in a little bit of uh, non-alcoholic shotgunning. Okay, this is zero calorie, zero ABV, and uh, it's all above board. But I am going to drink this two liter of Diet Cherry Pepsi. And you may ask, Travis, how is that going to happen? And I would answer immediately and painfully. Young lady, if you would be so kind as to open the Cherry Pepsi. Whoa, 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 whoa. Early release, early release. We got it. Let's give her a round of, a round of applause. What an open. All right. I know HR is here, but I'm going to have to ask you an uncomfortable favor. I'm not allowed to, to draw my, my tool on live stream. I'm going to need you to retrieve my, my mechanism for me. This pocket. Go ahead. Yep. You have my express consent. Yep. You got it. You got it? We're coworkers. It's good? We're coworkers. You got it. Oh, okay. My dad gave that to me. It's the first gift he gave me ever. Sorry. Okay. So you see there's a switch on the side? No, no, no. Other side. Other s there you go. See that switch? Okay. When you flip the switch and you see the red dot, it means it's blade Ooh. time. No, no. Okay. Different. Point this end up. Other end. Okay. Now when you slide that switch, flip that little knob. Boom. There we go. Young lady, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to up chug this bottle of soda. You're shaking like a leaf. That's not going to do. No, that's, I need that's your fine. deep breaths. I'm okay. We're going to get through this together. When I have the cola at the apex of its drinking posture, I need you to firmly but gently do not jaggle the soda out of my mouth so that I dump it all over my chest and body. I need you to puncture the bottom of the bottle to open a, 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 an air passageway so that we can have optimal thunder gunning function. Do you understand? I don't know. There was a lot of words. Okay. What's going to happen? I'm going to tilt this bad boy up. Whenever you see an air pocket up there, I want you to poke it and poke a hole in it. I, Okay. We're doing it live, folks. Wait a minute. We're going to set up right here. Do we have the camera set up there? I'm super dry now. This is going to be great, folks. Here we go. doodle I had, but we got there, folks. I, uh, uh, could I get a, uh, some kind of receptacle would be awesome. Uh, perfect. I don't need it now. If you hold it towards me, I'm going to throw up. So just leave it as an accessory. Thank you, ghoul man. I got the bucket. Woo! We got it, folks. All right. Thank you to my lovely assistant. Uh, that was I felt like I was drowning standing up. Wasn't that something, folks? All right. Let's hear the carnivores. 
I, I felt like my heart was going to stop. You guys were amazing. Fantastic. Oh, we got there. I should have used a French two liter. They're smaller in France. Oh, all right, folks. So if that wasn't proof enough that my mommy can't tell me when I can have my soda pop, I think I've made my point. Let's take a quick break. Now, you may be asking yourself, Travis, couldn't you just, you're a, you're a television broadcasting extraordinaire, obviously, you can just throw it a commercial. Joke's on you, dumbass, I can't. Good thing I have these handy dandy verbal commercials. We're good. And so I'm just gonna take a quick second to thank our sponsors over at Shitty Hats. Shitty Hats, hats that suck. Limited quantities, limited qualities. Created by a very own hardworking souls at Brit Viper. And a grand prize awaits the winner at the end. An all expenses paid trip to, drum roll please. <laughs> An all expenses paid trip to, work the next day. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got shitty hats running right now. As a matter of fact, as the official web boy of Pit Viper, if you're watching this broadcast on pitviper.com, if you scroll ever so slightly down, you can see the shitty hats for sale and cast your vote with your wallet. I mentioned the elections. That was a weird segue. Fuck the elections. Vote with your wallet. Vote on these hats. Find out who the winner's gonna be. What do they get? It doesn't matter. These hats are terrible. They're shitty, and you should buy them now. Everything on Pit Viper is 31% off. Say what? Uh, yeah, okay, we got it. And I'm fucking, I'm the best. Um, next up, folks, uh, we got some letters here I want to run through. I didn't clear this. I didn't, I just want to make this clear for the audience at home. I'm going to break the fourth wall just ever so slightly. I didn't clear any of this with anyone. But they trusted me before, and this crazy white boy is just going to do his thing. Uh, our first letter is, uh, oh God, where did my first letter go? Hang on. It seems as though the second letter has now become the first letter. It's from, uh, it's from Donnie in Spanish Fork. Uh, he says, free pair. Go fuck yourself, Donnie. We, uh, uh that didn't get like a rim shot. There we go. Uh, next up, we got uh, Julie from Bakersfield, California. Hello, Travis. I miss our talks. Won't you write again soon? Joe misses you too. He wished that he could have had lived in your pocket and stayed forever in your heart. I hope you'll come to visit for Thanksgiving. We've always got a seat at the table for you, always. Be sure, be sure to bring the green bean casserole. Joe Rock sends X's and O's. Thanks, Julie. See you in a few days. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Cody from Orlando, Florida. Wait a second. What's up, Travis, you bitch? You remember me, Cody? Ninth grade. You're as bald now as the day I met you, dumbass. I bet you still cry like a baby every time you get slapped by a tortilla. Prove me wrong, idiot. Folks, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We just got a letter from my childhood, one of my many childhood rogues gallery of bullies reaching out to see if I'm still a big baby back bitch about getting slapped by tortillas. Folks, I'm ready to prove me wrong. Could I get one more volunteer? Don't bring the, t don't, don't do it. No, 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 I want someone else. Come on up here. Yeah, no, 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 he doesn't, yeah, yeah, no, come here, yeah, 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 no, no, no. Leave it, leave it, come here, no, 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 leave it. And trust me, trust the host, come here, yeah. All right. We've got a we've, uh, baseball legend here, Dave Bottomley. <laughs> and uh, I just so happen to have my trusty suit jacket tortillas. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get Cody eat his little, his little bitch ass words. Uh, this is a late show, folks. I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna have a segment throughout the show. I can give whoever wants in the band a shot, our call takers a shot. Um, 
whoever uh, hits me with this tortilla hard enough that I don't say please daddy more afterwards gets a prize. I am not legally allowed to disclose the prize, but I promise there is one. It's not just a bit. So Dave, you got first crack. You get one swing. Make me cry. Can I go on the other side? Oh yeah, you want to cheat towards the camera. Duh. One, Good job, two, Travis. Let's step out here. One, two, three, four. Okay, one shot. Can I go back now? That's up to you. That's up to you, Oh! I'm fine. This shit's rocks. This shit rocks. Uh, all right. Next up, uh, we got. I watched so much Craig Ferguson in preparation for this. I should have wrote more script, but I didn't. Next up, we got my lovely guest, once in a lifetime opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the newest hire. Uh, at Pit Viper, come on down! So, how how are, how are you doing this evening? Oh, pretty pretty dandy. Pretty pretty. What was that? Dandy. Dandy. You know, I always wanted cue cards like this. This is I feel like a kid in a candy shop. Uh, uh, this one says name, so I'm going to ask you your name. Oh, uh, you know, Jeff. Your name's Jeff. Correct. But that's like a, that's a boy's name. Well, my name's Jeff. My name's Jeff. Yeah, okay. Um, and that's, you know, that doesn't bother you. I guess it shouldn't. Um, do you have some of your, what do you do at Pit Piper? Oh, I, I just service customers. So you're a customer service rep? No. So you're a customer service manager? No. What do you do? Service customers. So you're a representative? No. So you're a manager? No. Are you an assistant manager? Yeah. I don't care. Let's actually move on. That's that's good. Um, serving customers is important. That's awesome. Uh, how, how long have you been doing that? You're the newest hire, right? How long have you been doing that for? About six years. But, so, I was gonna say, I thought it was weird that you're the newest hire because I swear I've seen you around for like a year and a half. I've only been here for like two years. So how are you the newest hire, but you've been here for six years? It's just the way it is, you know. Yeah. Okay, I mean that's, do you have any favorite knots? Um, like. Like, like with rope. Um, no. I like to wear non lace shoes, so. Oh, that's, yeah, smart. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Just cancels that out completely. Yeah. Um, so I'm, wait. We moved into like a new office because we had like, which number of employee were you? 69. You were the 69th employee. We have like close to 100 employees, don't we? Possibly. But you're the newest hire. Correct. And you're the 69th. And you've worked here for six years. Yes. And you're not a customer service rep or manager or assistant manager. You're just you just service customers. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um. I got some cards here. Um. Says you're you're uh, you're uh, you're from Michigan. Kind of Maryland. Okay, that's not. That's not kind of. So, um, I only prepared questions about 
I only prepared questions about Michigan. So we're just going to run those about Maryland. Okay. And we like we'll just figure it out. Is okay. that is that yeah. Um Sounds good. Okay, so uh Do you ever make it to the Upper Peninsula of Maryland very often? Sure. I hear Grand Rapids, Maryland is a great town. Oh, yeah, the best. Did um did you were you uh did you survive the Bath School massacre? Is that a real thing? It's um the worst tragedy to ever happen in this it was in 1927 uh a, a guy bombed a school in michigan that's not good did that did, was that did that affect you at all N no you made it out of that unscathed well i was born in 97 so yeah no. yeah 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 okay um you know this is going off the rails so i'm just gonna um, how do you feel about dads? They're cool. You like yours? Yeah. Um, I'm actually, I, the producers told me that if I had a... This ghost told me to use this microphone. Okay. Uh... Do you believe in ghosts? Hang on. Why don't you try that one more time? Do you believe in ghosts? I believe in love. Um, they told me to uh, to if this interview started to go off the rails to uh, just give you some cue cards and we could just kind of like run it off the cue cards. Does that work? Yeah. Um, how's how's your day going? Um, your sideburns are cute. I don't know who wrote that. Um, oh, this is, okay, whoopsie. Um, so I, this card says, are my sideburns cute? And then it says here, this is the next one you read. You're looking tight and nimble, yet thick in the right places. I don't, I'm so sorry. I don't know who wrote these. Um, we're going to take a quick verbal commercial break. Uh, uno, uno mas tiempo, as they say in España. I am tragically sorry to the producers for not realizing how microphones work for a good two thirds of my segment. But we're we're figuring out. We're gonna build this house a telethon, brick by brick. That's, let's get the music break. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, carnivores. Uh, we we got it. We got a little. Uh, uh, I I got a message here from our, our sponsors, Pen Fifteen Network, Pen Viper, thirty one percent sale, everything on the website. Uh, the goggle is grand. A new goggle technology designed for snow sports and activities from the mad geniuses at Pit Viper. I have this bulletin from the desk of our CEO, Chris Garson. Hi, I'm Chris Garson, co-founder of Pit Viper Worldwide. It's great to have superior technology, but as a marketing genius, I knew our eyewear had to work good. That's a technical term, folks. And that you had to look good in them. With the help of chemists, polymer scientists, adhesive experts, and coding specialists, we engineered a system that would outperform most other kinds of eye protection. That system is called Pit Viper Sunglasses, and I'm going to keep skiing in them but you idiots really wanted goggles, so here you go. The Goggles Grand are a new model of goggle from Pit Viper with a broader lens to offer greater comfort, enhanced peripheral vision, I let a press point that might even convince my dad to finally buy a pair. Jesus Christ, Jeff, you have those loaners you stole from the rental shop for like eight seasons. The Goggles Grand, shop now at pitviper.com. 31% off the entire site, and who knows 
Keep your eyes peeled for other sales. It's a for-profit telethon, folks. Give me money now, please. Uh, back to our interview. Uh, Jeff, six-year newest employee, number 69. How are you enjoying the telethon, Jeff? Oh, it's it's just pretty great. Pretty great, huh? Yeah. Did you have, have you had any, in your short tenure of six years, have you had any dreams of yours fulfilled uh, by Pit Viper like I have for uh, running a late show poorly? Uh, yeah, sure. Would you care to yes and that just a eensy teensy bit? I mean, it's definitely not going to be as great as yours, but yeah, Pit Viper is awesome. It's great. Keeps my eyes protected. I really needed that, so thank you. Um, I. Why don't you go by your middle name? Well, my middle name is Oscar, so. <laughs> and is that, do your parents just like hate you? No, they love me quite much. Jeez, brag about it. And like, is that a, how did you, how did they come up with Jeff Oscar for a, a lady? Well, it's just a family name. Oh, like, it can't, they named you after, who, like, who is Jeff? My grandmother. Okay, I think um, I've really gone down that uh, rabbit hole as far as I'd like to. Um, Jeff, uh, how, I just have a card here that says sex, comma, how much? A lot. Is that, uh, are we talking to Utah a lot, or, or like just? Is that a Utah lot or a Maryland lot? Both. Heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about, dude. Fuck yeah. That's sick. Um, you know what, I think, um, uh, do you wanna, do you wanna, do you wanna, do you just wanna run the show for a quick second? Yeah. I'm honestly kinda tired. Cool, yeah. Um, so, what is your name? I don't think I caught that. Wow. They call me dog meat. <laughs> but you, but my, but my friends call me asshole. Uh, my name is Travis. Great dog meat asshole, Travis. That's dog meat asshole. That's my new jam band. That's great. What uh? What instrument do you play in that band? The skin flute. Are you talking about your asshole? Not mine. I think we got to uh, we've we've lost the through line of this show. Um, but Jeff Oscar, six year newest employee, the carnivores, the call staff here, John and Wayne Freeman, the entire Telethon staff. We've had a lovely day keeping you all company. And uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap things up here on The Late Show. And uh, coming up next, we've got King Goots to sing you to sleep at Pit Viper after dark. Ladies and gentlemen, what a stellar way to wrap up our first day. We'll see you all tomorrow.
Tip me, boy. Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen who loved each other dearly and would have been perfectly happy if they had only one son or daughter to play with. They never talked about it and always pretended that there was nothing in the world to wish for, but sometimes when they looked at other people's children, their faces grew sad and their courtiers and attendants knew the reason why. One day, the queen was sitting alone by the side of a waterfall which sprung from the, lo the rocks in a large park adjoining the castle. She was feeling more than usually miserable and had sent away her ladies so that no one might witness her grief. Suddenly, she heard a rustling, movement in the pool below the waterfall. And on glancing up, she saw a large crab, crab climbing onto a stone beside her. Great queen, said the crab, I am here to tell you, the desire of your heart will soon be granted, but first you must permit me to lead you to the palace of the fairies, which through, though hard, by has never been seen by mortal eyes because of the thick clouds that surround it. When, when there, you will know more, that is, if you trust yourself to me. The queen had never before heard an animal speak and was struck dumb with the surprise. However, she was so enchanted at the words of the crowd that she smiled sweetly and held out her hand. It was taken not by the crab, which had stood there only a moment before, but by a little old woman smartly dressed in white and crimson with green ribbons in her hair. And wonderful to say, not a drop of water fell from her clothes. The old woman ran lightly down a path along which the queen had been a hundred times before, but it seemed so different she could hardly believe it was the same. Instead of having to push her way through the nettles and brambles, roses and jasmine hung above her head, while under her feet the ground was sweet with violets. The orange trees were so tall and thick that even midday, the sun was never too hot. At the end of the path was a glimmer of something so dazzling, the queen had to shade her eyes and peep at it only between her fingers. What can it be, she asked, turning to her guide, who answered, Oh, that is the fairy's palace, and here are some of them coming to meet us. As she spoke, the gate swung back and six fairies approached, each bearing in her hand a flower made of precious stones, but so like a real one that it was only by touching you could they tell the difference. Madam, they said, we know not how to thank you for this mark of your confidence, but have the happiness to tell you that in a short time you will have a little daughter. The queen was so enchanted at this news that she nearly fainted with joy. But when she was able to speak, she poured out all of her gratitude to the fairies for their promised gift. And now, she said, I ought not to stay any longer, for my husband will think that I have ran away or that some evil beast has devoured me. In a little while, it happened just as the fairies had foretold and a baby girl was born in the palace. Of course, both king and queen were delighted, and the child was called Desiree, which means desired, for she had been desired for five years before her birth.
At first, the queen could think of nothing but her new plaything. But then she remembered the fairies who had sent it to her. Biting her ladies bring her the posy of jeweled flowers which had been given her at the palace. She took each flower in her hand and called it by name, and in turn each fairy appeared before her. But as unluck unlucky often happens, the one to whom she owned the, owed the most, the crab fairy, was forgotten. And by this, in the case of other babies, you have read about, much mischief was wrought. However, for the moment, all was gaiety in the palace, and everybody inside ran to the windows to watch the fairies' carriages, for no two were alike. One had a car of ebony drawn by white pigeons. Another was lying back in her ivory chariot, driving ten black crows while the rest had chosen rare woods or many colored seashells with scarlet and blue macaws, long-tailed peacocks, or green love birds for horses. These carriages were only on occasion of state, for when they, were, when they went to war, flying dragons, fiery serpents, lions, or leopards took the place of these beautiful birds. The fairies entered the queen's chamber, followed by little dwarfs who carried their presents and looked much prouder than their mistresses. One by one, their burdens were spread upon the ground, and no one had ever seen such lovely things. Everything that a baby could possibly wear or play with was there. And besides, they had other and more precious gifts to give her, which only children who have fairies for godmothers can ever hope to possess. They were all gathered round the heap of pink cushions on which the baby lay asleep, when a shadow seemed to fall between them and the sun while a cold wind blew through the room. Everybody looked up, and there was the crab fairy, who had grown as tall as the ceiling in her anger. So I am forgotten, she cried. In a voice so loud the queen trembled as she heard it. Who was it soothed you in your trouble? Who was it led you to the fairies? Who was it brought you back in safety to your home again? Yet I, I am overlooked. While these who have done nothing in comparison and pretend and thank, the queen, almost dumb with terror, in vain tried to think, explanation or apology, but there was none, and she could only confess her fault to implore forgiveness. The fairies also did their best to soften the wrath of their sister, and knowing that, like many plain people who are not fairies, she was very vain. They entreated her to drop her crab disguise and become once more charming person they were accustomed to see. For some time the enraged fairy would listen to nothing, but at length the flatteries began to take effect. The crab's shell fell from her. She shrank into usual size and lost her fierce expression. Well, she said, I, am, I will not cause the princess's death as I had meant to do. But at the same time, she will have to bear the punishment of her mother's fault. As many other children have done before her, the sentence I pass upon her is that is, if she is allowed to see one ray of daylight before her 15th birthday, she will rue it too bitterly, and it may perhaps cost her her life. And with these words, she vanished by the window through which she came. With the fairies comforted the weeping queen and took counsel how best the princess might be kept safe during her childhood. At the end of half an hour, they had made their minds what to do, and at the command of the fairies, a beautiful palace sprang up close to that the king and queen, but different from every palace in the world 
having no windows and only a door right under the earth. However, once within, the daylight was hardly missed. So brilliant were the multitudes of tapers that were, bur tapers that were burning on the wall. Now, up to this time, the princess's history has been like the history of many a princess that you may have read about. But when the period of her imprisonment was nearly over, her fortunes took another turn. For almost 15 years, the fairies had taken care of her and amused her and taught her so that when she came into the world, she might be no whit behind the daughters of other kings in all that makes princesses charming and accomplished. They all loved her dearly, but the fairy Tulip loved her most of all. And the princess's 15th birthday drew near the fairies began to tremble, lest something terrible should happen, some accident which not be foreseen. Do not let her out of your sight, said the tulip to the queen, and meanwhile let her port portrait be painted and carried into the neighboring courts, as in the custom, in order the kings may see how far her beauty exceeds that of every other princess, and that they may demand her in marriage for their sons. And so it was done, and as the fairy had prophesied, all the young princesses fell in love with the picture, but the last one to whom it was shown could think nothing else and refused to let it be, removed from his chamber where he spent whole days gazing at it. The king, his father, was much surprised at the change which had come over his son, who generally passed all of his time in hunting or hawking and his anxiety was increased by a conversation he overheard between two of his quarters that they feared the prince must be going out of his mind. So moody he had become. Without losing a moment, the king went to visit his son, and no sooner had he entered the room that the young man flung himself at his father's feet. You have Bethrowed me already to a bride I can never love, cried he. But if you will not consent to break off the match and ask for the hand of the princess desire, I shall die of misery, thankful to be alive no longer. These words much displeased the king who felt that in breaking off the marriage already arranged, he would almost certainly bring on his subjects a long and bloody war. So without answering, he turned away, hop hoping that few days might bring son to reason. But the prince's condition grew rapidly so much worse that the king, in despair, promised to send an embassy at once to Desiree's father. The news cured that the young man in an instant of all of his ills and he began to plan out every detail of dress and of horses and carriages which were necessary to make the train the envoy whose name was Besiege as a splendid of possible and splendid as possible he longed to form part of the embassy himself if only in the disguise of a page. But this the king would not allow, so the prince had to content himself with searching the kingdom for everything that was rare and beautiful to send the princess. Indeed, he arrived just as the embassy was starting with his portrait, which had been painted in secret by the court painter. The king and queen wished nothing better than their daughter marry into such a great and powerful family that they received the ambassador with every sign of welcome. They even wished him to see the princess desire, but this was prevented by the fairy Tulip, who feared some ill might come of it. And be sure you tell him, added she, that the marriage cannot be celebrated till she is 15 years old, or else some terrible misfortune will happen to the child. So when Beskagri, surrounded that his train, surrounded by his train, made a formal request that the princess 
desire may, might be given them in marriage to his master's son. The king replied that he was much honored and would gladly give his consent, but that no one could even see the princess till her 15th birthday. As the spell laid upon her inner cradle and spiteful fairy would not cease to work till that was passed, the ambassador was greatly surprised and disappointed but he knew too much about the fairies to venture to disobey them. Therefore, he had to content himself with presenting the prince's portrait to the queen, who lost no time in carrying it to the princess. As the girl took it in her hands, it suddenly spoke, and it had been taught to do, and uttered a compliment of the most delicate and charming sort which made the princess flush with pleasure. How would you like to have, your, have a husband like that? asked the queen, laughing. As if I knew anything about husbands, replied Desire, who had long ago guessed that the business of the ambassador. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this chapter for tonight into the night with King Goose. Make sure to tune in live at 9 a.m. tomorrow to Pit Viper Live Telethon. We will have more awesome deals for you. That starts at 9 a.m.